Good evening and welcome to our final day of racing in this Riyadh season. It's been a wonderful few months of competition, but sadly it is coming to an end, but we are going to go out on a high. And as ever, we have 12 races across the card tonight, so lots to look forward to. And joining me to lend his expert insight and analysis is Rory Delaghi. Rory, can you believe it's the last day of the season already? Yeah, it's been, uh, it's been quite the education and experience <laughs> for us here and uh, we're seeing it out um, on the last you were here for the first week of the Riyadh season weren't you and you're here to close it out as Absolutely. well so um, quite an honour yeah, it's going to be a good night of racing anyway here at the King Abdulaziz racetrack. 12 races, as I said, taking us up to 2 a.m. local time and we've picked out three horses for you to keep an eye on. It's all about the turf tonight with four strong races on the inner track. Mahalik is a real favourite here and bids to follow up this easy win last week in race three, a 0-90 handicap. He's well drawn in stall two and was a turf winner in the UK, so has plenty to recommend him. Rovaniemi bounced out to make most over course and distance last week and bids for a quick follow-up in race four. Luis Morales rides again and he'll be checking his wing mirrors for likely favourite Reem Al Riyadh, who could prove hard to resist. And Cliffs of Fury is seen here making most in an international jockey's challenge at the Saudi Derby meeting. He races again over course and distance in race six, a high-class open event. Will a wide draw scupper his chances of domination? Time will tell, Rory. Time will tell. I think he's got a tough task from stall 13 tonight. And there's one or two. I think this could be uh, a great night for Naif Almondil again. Um, on the, in the turf races, um, he's got three big chances on paper. And those three horses are drawn, I think, one, two and one. Uh, so you can't be you can't be better berthed here. So real chances of a treble there, but we'll see how he, uh, see how he gets on in Absolutely. real life. Absolutely, he'll be uh, feeling very confident indeed. Let's head to our commentator Alex Bussey, who is going to talk us through all the runners and riders on tonight's card. Rebecca, Rory, thank you very much indeed. A very good evening to you and uh, everyone listening in. It's going to be another good night to finish, isn't it? Here is our Saturday night schedule then. Uh, we get underway with this uh, handicap, 0 to 90 over 1200 meters. That'll be followed by an Arabian Open over 1400. Then to the turf we go for four races on the spin. A 0 to 90 handicap is race three over 1200. And we remain at that trip for a restricted win race. Horses have won uh, no more than three times before. A local bred open on the turf follows over 2100. And the same distance for an open race. Interesting heat. Uh, that 11.10. Local bred handicap, 0 to 70 over 1800 follows that. And then we have an open race, also over 1800. Over the page we go to that 12.30 race, a local time, 0 to 80 handicap, 1800 meters. And we remain there uh, for a maiden event, for Colts and Geldings. Penultimate event is a local bred maiden over 2400. And the final race of the Saudi season will be that Arabian Open over 2,400 metres. That is our Saturday evening schedule to look forwards to. And here are the runners and riders for our first. We begin with this handicap, 0-90 over 1,200. Number one is uh, Tropical Air, Al Saidi on board. Number two, Emblem Desert for Abdullah Al Hussein. Number three is Majur, Abdullah Al Lajmi will ride with four, Al Safa, Fahad Al Faradi. Number five is Snafia for Naif al Mudiani, and six, Indication Call, a winner at meeting 99. Number seven is the highly talented Saudi front. Luis Morales will steer with the eight, Mama Yaza, and that is the mount of Alanazi looking to go out uh, with a high this campaign. Over the page we go to number nine, consoling Abdullah Alofi. No 10 here, the 10 is out. 11 is Maruf. Al Shara will take the reins. Number 12, Happy Bay Town. Now, I can confirm that uh, she'll be ridden by Jimmy Carrion. 13 is Stanley Street. Thurb Altimyat with 14. Wadhat al Kia Ali al Mimoni. 15 is another gift, uh, not uh, shown to her best so far this season, with the 16 D Point Al Mutib on board. Number 17 is Hugger Tree for Khalid al Mimoni, uh, with the 18 Yaflan Mohammed al Gami. Now, with the 10, of course, being out, the 19, al Kayed uh, will get a chance here. And that is the Mount of Ayad al Tarisi. That is our field then for the first of the day, for which you can see uh, runners are in the parade ring. So let's head back uh, to go through those runners and riders with Rebecca and Rory. 
Lovely, thank you very much, Alex. Well, Jockey's coming into the parade ring, looking very relaxed and chatty, Rory. Yeah. Maybe they've got the kind of last day of school feeling that... Uh... Yes, it's like this kind of a breaking up vibe, yeah. isn't there? Yeah, I remember my last day at school. <laughs> um, and yes, it's, an un it's a very unusual feeling, and it must be very similar here. I'm sure. Right at the end of the season with a uh, long summer break ahead of you. Absolutely. Let's get through these horses then, because as usual, we have another big field uh, to talk about. Uh, in this one. Uh, this is uh, horse number one. Let's talk about first Tropical Air, who we saw uh, running here last week. Not much of a break. Uh, not much of a break. Um, he couldn't get to the front last week, but I thought he ran on quite well from the, uh, from the back of the field. One of a, one of a number um, who ran in the same contest over six furlongs on turf last week. Um, he won several times on artificial surfaces in the UK for uh, Charlie Johnson last summer. Um, six and seven furlongs. Um, his first three starts here were over a mile. He just, he couldn't get to the front on turf over the six furlongs last time out. But he's in an easier race here. Um, he's, he's rated six pounds superior to everything else in the race and more. And if he can get himself to the front from stall six, I think they'll, it, they'll find him very hard to catch. That's a bit of an if, because I don't think he's a natural at six furlongs, um, certainly not on turf. Um, so the key with him is, is whether he's able to get out and get close to the front. Um, he's shown himself to be pretty tough to pass when he gets on the lead in previous starts. Emblem Desert Horse number two has had some consistent results, pretty decent performer. Yeah, he's a, he's a course and distance winner um, in a non-winners of three back in November. Arguably shown better form of defeat at a mile since, but he's, he seems a little bit tripless. When he runs over six furlongs, he tends to do his best work late. When he runs over a mile, he doesn't seem to quite get home. Um, he ran well um, behind Mashur in the... Um, a JCSA contest last time out, that was the auction event. I'm um, sure um, had run fifth in the uh, Saudi Derby prior to that. So that's a good enough performance. Whether he's quite as happy um, in a quick six furlongs is a slight question mark, but he's got chances on his best one. Uh, Major, you already mentioned, uh, is horse number three. Uh, that's, that would be a slightly different horse. Major rather than, <laughs> ma rather than mash, Mashur. <laughs> Uh, beat Emma Desert last time. Major um, has been struggling a little bit for form. He was a, a he was a surprise winner um, against King Rise. We had a big reputation earlier in the season back in meeting 64, but neither of them have really gone on since that. And he was nine lengths behind Tropical Air uh, when ninth last time out. Uh, Al Safar was also here last Saturday. Yeah, he's a course and distance maiden winner um, back in meeting 65. Arguably his uh, best effort um, since when fifth. Um, to move to him and that's uh, not to 90 last time out. He was three quarters of length in front of Tropical Air that day. Um, not an awful lot to choose between them. Um, Al Safa probably had the worst of the draw there, but Tropical Air didn't get away well and you can mark both of them up for that performance. Uh, Snafia has had a bit more of a break, number five. Was a winner of a seven for a nominative of uh, two back in meeting 91. Um, wasn't disgraced in the Phillies mile um, or the 1,000 guineas in her, two, in her last two starts. Um, she drops back from a mile to six furlongs, but she was able to lead in the Phillies mile before capitulating in the straight. So she's got the speed to be handy, even from stall 15, and she's quite an interesting one here. Uh, indication call, lightly raced, but has got a chance. Yeah, he, um, he was an easy winner on his debut here. He beat a horse called um, Dara Zaney. Um, all his form in the UK has come at five and six furlongs. His debut here was in a, was in a one mile handicap. Um, over uh, an Ottawa affair. Um, Dara Zaini let the form down on Thursday. It was disappointing in Maiden Company, but indication calls should cope with the drop back and trip. Well, let's head down to the paddock, shall we, to uh, check in on Shamila. Uh, Shamila, our first race of the night. Have you got that uh, last day of school feeling that the jockeys seem to have? Not only me, Rebecca, but I feel like everybody has that last day of school feeling. The atmosphere is almost electric here in the parade ring. You can definitely feel it. Now, my first paddock selection of our last night of the season goes the way of horse number seven, Saudi Front, a stunning three-year-old colt by Warfront. He broke his maiden last time out at meeting 101 for Prince Saud bin Salman, rated 80, and he's just a really nice-looking horse. And um, he's off the back of a winner, so hopefully he can go one more before the end of the season. And um, I just cannot fault him. He looks absolutely stunning. Though, three horses in particular stood out to me. Horse number seven, Saudi Front. Horse number six, Indication Call for Thamar Dehani. We spoke to him after his winner yesterday, and um, you know that he doesn't send horses here unless they are 1,000% fit. He is off the back of a winner as well as horse number four, Al Safa, was also looking really good to my eye. But it will be Saudi Front for me for, in this first contest of the night.
Thank you very much. To you, Shamila, let's talk about Saudi, Saudi front then. Now, as Shamila said, coming here off the back of a win. Yeah, that, that was a uh, course and distance not to 85 weeks ago where he beat uh, Wadat al Kair by three quarters of a length. Um, he's got obvious claims here, unexposed, um, was impressive there. Steps up a little bit in terms of the company that he's keeping, but he's, um, he's a hard one to knock, really, um, given that profile, and you have to, you have to shortlist him. Uh, Mama Yaza we saw in action here last week and was placed. Yeah, it was a length and a quarter behind um, Marouf when third in a not to 90 turf handicap last week, coming from stall three. Um, we might as well touch on Marouf as well. Um, again, he was, he was the best of about five or six of these who run in that contest um, when he was a second to Muktaham. Um, but he came out of stall two. The first three that they were stalls one, two, and three. It was definitely a big advantage to be drawn low um, over six furlongs on the turf track. So. I'd, I'd maybe not, uh, I'd, I'd mark Mumayaza and Maruf down slightly on that and maybe try to mark one or two of those up in behind the likes of Al Safa and Tropical Air um, who didn't get the run of the race that day. Uh, let's talk about Consoling who did get the run of the race last time out. Yeah, was a winner over seven furlongs in a mile in the UK for Ollie Pears and landed an 1800 uh, metre Phillies Open on her debut. Um, this is a big drop and trip for a filly who clearly stays well. Um, and I thought that was a big negative to her chances. Um, she's also, she's carrying a penalty for that win last week as well. So her, her handicap mark was 71 going into that race last week. She won it well enough to suggest that, you know, her new mark is probably fair, but the trip is definitely a worry. We'll keep an eye on consoling in that case. Let's look at number 12, Happy Baytown. Definitely needs to improve from the last outing. Yeah, the, uh, in fairness, Happy Baytown made his debut here, or her debut here, rather, over 1,800 metres. Her form in the US, she's a winner and placed uh, once from three starts in the US. Her form there was over four and a half furlongs. She's a speed ball, so 1,800 metres was an absolutely crazy trip to try. She actually showed speed for the first five furlongs of that before fading right out of it. Um, she's got a lot more chance drop to six furlongs the day, but she may not be quite ready yet. I do like that, uh, that expression, speedballs, speed nice. Ball. Uh, Stanley Street was also here last week. Are these own, uh, owners and trainers just trying to pack in as much running before the end of the season? Uh, well, that's definitely true of a few. Um, he's a course and distance maiden winner and he was a respectable fourth last week from stall eight. Wouldn't be at all surprised to, to see him turn the form around with uh, one or two of those who were in front of him. Uh, Wadat Arkir does have good form recently, number 14. Yeah, he was behind a second to Saudi front um, in that not to 80 um, two starts back. And he matched that form uh, when second in a course in distance maiden last time out to Rebel Icon, who's a stable mate of Indication Call with a very similar profile. So he's very consistent. Um, his mark of 72 is fair, and he's, he is, he's the last one with a chance, uh, as far as I was concerned here. I put a line through the, uh, through the next four. Uh, uh, so we don't want to touch on the, the, the no, last the, 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 the real issue we have once we get down here is you see uh, Wadat al Kair has got a rating of, uh, an official rating of 72, carries 54 kilos. Everything underneath him is out of the handicap. Um, so basically you need to be rated 72 to get into this race. Another gift, in fairness, another gift is only slightly out of the handicap, but two starts here have been disappointing. But D Point, Hugged Tree and Yaflan are all well out of the handicap. Well, Indication Cull is a horse that is very much within the handicap and has a, has a chance, Rory? Yes, now this is a very easy win um, on debut for a rate indication call. Uh, the negative about this, of course, is that um, uh, Darzelli, or Darzelli, who was second, um, was very disappointing in a maiden race the other day when, um, when he had the winning of that on paper. Um, the positive here, I think, with indication call is, although he's seen this out very strongly, he, he showed plenty of speed to lead, and he does have... Um, he does have lots of speed uh, based on his UK form, so he drops back to six furlongs, but that shouldn't be a problem for him based on the fact that he was capable of winning over five furlongs um, for his previous yard. So certainly some interesting prospects in this uh, opening race. Uh, definitely a few horses here that have a chance. Shamila picked out maybe two or three in the paddock that have a chance based on, uh, based on paddock appearance. She liked the look of uh, Saudi front, indication call, who we've just seen, and Al Safar. And for you, Rory, are you with her on any of those? Well, I don't, I don't, I, those are all on my short list. Um, I essentially, uh, there weren't too many of the, on the first list. I, I, I wanted to be against Mumayaza and Maruf just on the basis that they may be slightly flattered by the runs uh, on turf last week. Um, cons I'm against consoling because of the trip, although I think she's a nice prospect. Um, but everything above that, so seven upwards, have all got some sort of chance. Um, and you can, you can mark all of them up. Um, 
for various reasons for recent runs. Apart from Emblem Desert, maybe I'll put a line through Emblem Desert as well uh, in terms of the shortlist. Um, and I've got, a, I've got a pick from those. My worry with Tropical Air is that he might not just have the, the raw speed to get to the front. And I think if he doesn't get to the front, he's, he's not quite the, uh, the force he can be. I think Al Safa is, is probably overpriced based on his run last week because he appears held by a couple of these because of that turf run. But I thought, um, I thought that was a very good effort. Um, he was a winner over course and distance on his debut. He's unexposed as well. I think he might repay each way support at a double figure price. And obviously it's a six furlong uh, race this opener. Where's the speed going to come from? Uh, well, Tropical Air is going to try to go forward because that's the way that Tropical Air wants to go. Um, Snafia led last time in a stronger race that was over further. Um, Maruf and Mumayaza both went fairly... They wouldn't, didn't go hell for leather last time out, but they were always handy. So there should be no lack of speed from, uh, from those. And there's always a chance that horses... Um, some of the outsiders are going to make a, um, a bid for glory in the early stages. So we'll see. Uh, we'll see who. I can't, I can't really predict who's going to lead. Happy Baytown as well, sorry, number 12. Um, uh, she's going to try to lead because, as I said, she's a four and a half furlong horse in the States, so she's all speed. Um, so this may actually set up quite nicely for a closer. Yeah, it should be, it should be an interesting contest to get us uh, underway here in Riyadh on, in our. Uh, final on a final day of racing this season of course uh, we then move on to Tyfe uh, in probably July so a bit of a break for these horses after this and uh, they've worked very very hard some of them you see week in week out at this track so some of them will definitely have earned the break but we have seen Rory uh, horses coming in off a massive break you've done really well here so you never really know you never really know no you basically all you can do is go is go by their general rule of thumb and you know that every now and again rules are there to be broken Absolutely, they are. Well, uh, the horses are down at the start and they'll be soon ready to load. So let's head to our commentator, Alex Fussy, who's standing by for this opening race. Rebecca, thank you very much indeed. Yes, ready to roll, aren't we? Not far away from our first uh, of the card, beginning with this 1,200-metre uh, handicap. Let's take a check on the international markets here for you before we get uh, sent away. I can tell you that indication call is just shading favouritism here three to one shot internationally just ahead of saudi front at seven to two a consoling is available at nine to two with maruf at seven to one watat al kir has seen a bit of support is down to 15 to two and also al safa at longer odds mentioned a couple of times by rory in the build-up is down to nine to one from 11. so indication call looks to go back to back after that win at meeting 99 and Saudi front, quite a classy individual, isn't he? He's got so some good form on show, and he was also a winner last time out at meeting 101. Loading up is underway. Tropical Air has gone in. Al Safa is forwards as well. Couple of um, connections doubly represented here. If you are following the 11 Maroof, it will be a white cap on that uh, whiter jacket with the green sleeves. They're just going through shot. Uh, for you for that particular runner a couple of runners in similar colors as well the 12 and the 19 happy baytown and al kayed uh, just a heads up with regards to the reserve uh, that runner will come from stall number four so we've got a couple in but at the moment uh, not many others have joined by going to the stalls starting team giving out some instructions here there's indication call now coming up. Stall 13 uh, will be the destination for him. The blindfold is on the 15. Another gift. Indication call has popped forwards. Emblem Desert, who's um, flattered a little bit, hasn't he, this campaign? He looked like he was uh, going somewhere in terms of class, but it's uh, all fallen apart a bit for him, and he's got warm uh, down at the start as well, I can tell you. There's D Point going up and in. Also going forwards is the 13 Stanley Street and the same ownership as the 17 Hugger Tree. Both in those Al Guraban stable silks. Uh, there is Hugger Tree coming forwards. Slightly different, aren't they? White disc for that runner. Saudi front is still out the back end. Also still waiting for Al Kayed, who's got that. A distinguishing blue cap 
another gift with that blindfold on is now being offered up as well consoling's just gone in she's a big player isn't she after that win at meeting 108 three to one still indication cool just to check on those uh, international markets before we jump away saudi front seven to two nine to two consoling and seventh bar last two or three runners now move in almost as one and we are just about set stand by for the opener on the final day of the season they're off runners are racing away in the first this naught to 90 handicap over 1200 meters consoling not the best of breaks it's going to drop out at the back end of the field al -Kayed also right to the rear a good start made here by Happy Baytown, full of pace, and gets on over to show up with Snaffy, also right up there and applying the early pressure. They go two lengths clear of Tropical Air, who's in third. Indication call next in the field. The yellow jacket with the black cap has got a nice slot there on the outside of Rivals. Races in company with Mumayaz. Right in between horses as well. Al Safa is trying to get rolling between rivals. Looking deeper out. Maruf is caught very wide. Up top, though, Snapia has now come on past. Snapia leads up with about 400 metres to go. Right in behind them. Still there pitching tropical air. Indication called to the outside. Down the wide outside, one or two start to close, including Major from off the pace. Tropical Air with 200 metres to go. Purging through now is Stanley Street, the white and black. Down to the inside is Snaffier as well. Tropical Air, this is gutsy here. Tropical Air still shows and we'll see them all off. Tropical Air has beaten into second Stanley Street. They were followed by Indication Call and Snaffier finished fourth. Victory for the one, Tropical Air, who did well. Considering he likes to go forwards, he was happy to just be slightly off the pace today. And he's pulled out and he's kept on finding inside of the final 200 metres. He's gone on to win in a time of 1.12.49 and denies number 13, Stanley Street. The third out him yet is eventually taken second, beaten three quarters of a length of the line. Another half length away was Indication Call, who's run uh, his race again in third position snaffia finished in fourth and saudi front was one of those uh, to close in from off the pace but it was very much all too late uh, for supporters of saudi front who came down at uh, the middle of the track order of finish then in our first race today is 1 13 6 and 5 
what a win for Tropical Air, Rory. The horse that you said wasn't a natural six furlong horse. Uh, not the race he needed to run either, by all accounts. No, he's, as I said, if he, if he got himself to the front, which was the question mark here, I thought he'd be very hard to pass. He couldn't get to the front early on, but the two who did go forward went too fast um, for their own good, and he was able to get to the front um, off the bend. And when challenged hard late in the day, you saw how game he is. Um, he's shown that uh, tendency before, and a uh, bit of a loss to British racing. Um, they're always wondering why things aren't going well in Britain. That's because they keep losing horses of this calibre. Um, to, uh, to Saudi Arabia and to various other parts of the world um, and they expect something else to come through and, and um, uh, fill the hole. But it doesn't always happen and Tropical Air as a horse has improved markedly from humble beginnings. Well beaten in his first few starts for Charlie Johnson last year. He then won, um, won three nurseries um, on artificial services last year and has carried his form forward here. His first few starts were, a ma were at a mile where he probably just found his stamina stretched Drop back to six furlongs on turf last time out and did his best work late. Um, better than the best results behind, um, behind three of these on that occasion. Um, back on the turf today with a, with a stiffer test. Um, he's, um, he's got right back on track. He's got a lovely attitude, you see. He's got a, he sticks his head out. He doesn't wander off a true line. Um, and he's got a very good attitude. He'll keep winning races. We can take it now from the start. Tropical air breaking from stall number six. Uh, didn't... Uh you said he wanted to get ahead from the yeah, start, he, but... Yeah, he's, he's going forward here, and he gets a prominent position, but you see that there's a, there's a natural speedster here in Happy Bay Town. This is a horse who's, you know, who's come from the US. He was gunned, would have been gunned in her work, and she was racing over four and a half furlongs in the States. So she was always going to be the likeliest leader here. And as we said, um, Snafia up in second. She led the way in the Phillies Mile, which is a, a very high-class contest last time out. So I thought she might go forward as well. But they do go fast. Uh, Tropical Air gets himself into third place here. Um, normally, you know, a front runner w might, might sort of drop the bridle at this stage, but um, they're a decent target because they're, they're struggling three furlongs out, really the front two, particularly Happy Bay Town. And so Tropical Air just pulled wide of them, got himself to the front, and although they're a challenger straight away, um, he just shows this wonderful attitude um, to, uh, to fight them off one by one. Um, no real hard luck story in the race. Saudi front ended up having to come very wide from stall 14. You can mark him up a little bit uh, for this, but I don't think there's an unlucky loser in the race. Stanley Street, who's second, had every chance but just couldn't get past um, the winner, who's very game. Indication call was dropping back from a mile, um, but was happy enough at this trip. Has run at least as well as when, um, when winning last time out. And this is a good race. The time of 1.12.49 is is faster than average um, and the winner you know I, I wouldn't be at all surprised to see him hit the magical hundred mark at some stage yeah you were saying that he was uh, running off a mark of 50 uh, back in the UK not so long ago so that's a marked improvement for tropical air to reach that mark of 90 um, let's have a word on indication call there was a lot of talk about him prior to the race uh, do you think he'll be dropped, uh, sorry, stepped up in trip after this No, I, I, it's possible. It clearly stays a mile. He showed that last time out, but he's, he's, uh, he doesn't like the speed. Um, he, show, he showed plenty of gears when winning over a mile last time out. Um, but he's, he's adaptable, so they'll, they might, you know, they'll try him. Again, I don't know whether they want to go to, to tie for the horse like this uh, or not, but he wasn't beaten because of the trip here. He's just beaten because it was a tougher race than last time out. Um, and he's run, I think he's probably improved on that form anyway, so um, no shame in finishing third here. So what next for Tropical Air then? Well, uh, he may go to Tyfe, um, but you know it's, it's up to connections whether they whether they want to do that or whether they think he will do um, better in better class races over sort of six seven furlongs here next season. Again, you know I think a lot of people want their horses to 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 show their form at a mile if possible because. There are just a lot more choices, a lot more big races around a mile. But seven furlongs is probably the ideal trip for Tropical Air. Ironically, um, he shows se seven furlongs was ideal in the UK. He's never raced over, over that trip here yet, and that's probably going to be perfect for him. Yeah, so he's one to keep an eye on. Would you put him in your notebook, Rory? Definitely, yeah. He's a, he's a horse. He doesn't just have a lot of ability. He's got a lovely attitude as well, and that's, that's really important. We're seeing the replay coming out of the stalls there. Um, he got, as we see, he got away well, but there's not just an awful lot of speed from the front two, Happy Bay Town and, um, and Snafia. Uh, and the key then for um, Abdullah Al Saidi was just to make sure that he wasn't, that he wasn't uh, passed by other horses um, 
as he was going forward. He, he needed to get a clear run at the front too, so he didn't want to have something right on his outside or something pushing him uh, from the inside. So that was the key, just keep pushing him along, getting that position, knowing that he would stay this trip better than the pair who'd, uh, who'd gone forward at that stage. Um, and from this point, you know, it's, it's all up to the horse to, um, to, to fight off his challengers, and he does it, as you can see, uh, really gamely. Absolutely happy Baytown going backwards at that stage, like you said, running out of gas at around about three furlongs. I can't believe, having watched that, that she was ever tried over 1,800 metres. I know, and even this trip is probably too far for her. That's the thing. It's, it's an interesting purchase. Um, she was a winner at Charlestown. She's got a good US pedigree by Run Happy out of America called Tizza Song. So, you know, on both sides of the pedigree, she's, she's got good blood. But um, she, was, she wasn't a superstar there. She probably ran her best race on debut at Keeneland. Um, the race she won at Charlestown was a fairly modest uh, maiden special weight. Um, and the key, the thing about her is, is trying to get her to stay six furlongs. She's shown speed for about four and a half on both of her starts to date. Thanks very much, Rory. Well, a good start to the card here in Riyadh on our final day of racing this season. So let's head to Alex Fussy, who's going to talk us through all the runners and riders for the next. Thanks very much indeed, Rebecca. Yes, let's have a look at the field for our second contest. Moving to Arabian horses this time, aren't we? An open race over 1,400 metres. Now, number one is Awamir, uh, looking for a third career success. Number two, Jasm Adbar. Boras Wanas is on board. Number three is Meblish, Mohammed Suleiman. And four is Al Hassas. That's Abdullah Al Credits. Number five, Hazal, Ryan Alabade. And six, King de Violet, Luis Morales. Number seven is Tuhamiat Al Kaladia. Asil Al Shahani riding with eight, Sasha. Looking for a second career success is the filly at the bottom of the first page. We will go on over to number nine, which is Jess Ann, uh, certainly to be a likely favourite here, Abdullah Lawfi. Ten, Fertile de Croat, Jimmy Carrion, with eleven, John de Violets. That's Ali Al Mimoni. No twelve, twelve is out, so the next is the thirteen, Rakud Al Ansari, Khalid Al Mimoni, with fourteen, Muted Al Kaladia. Uh, that is Al Saidi in the saddle. Number 15, Risky Foul. Uh, ran pretty well to finish third last time out. 16, Modhisha. Al Zarari rides. 17 is Al Hizabar. Uh, looking for a first win, Ayad Al Tarisi. Number 18 is Own. That is Nafal Anazi with 19, Bayrak Al Hizam. Thurb Al Timyat. And of course, we've got uh, a couple out, so a couple to come in. Uh, Jalmod number 21. And 22, Sakran al Kaladia uh, will uh, get a run here this evening. Uh, that is our field of uh, 20 uh, to look forward to. Uh, Jessan is the rather short-priced favourite here in the international betting. 7-4 to four market leader. Uh, Bayrak Al-Hizam second in at 11-4. to four. Rakud Al-Ansari is just behind them at 7-2. to two. And I can tell you we go fives and bigger the rest. All right, thank you very much, Alex. We'll catch up with you very shortly. We're looking at number one, uh, our Mir Rory last in a meeting 109, uh, finishing in eighth position. Yeah, I, I, I put a line through a lot of horses in this race. It's an open contest where you've got a really good clash between the top four or five. Um, the, the top ratings here are 106, 106, 105, 105, and the winner is going to be half. It's going to have to hit 100 plus to win. Um, so those who can't, I've just put a line through, Abu Mir's win at 82, um, hardly in his top form either, so I put a line through him. Where is the threshold, Rory, for horses you want to talk about? Well, anything north of 80, I would say. OK, Jasm, Jasm Athbar is 77, so misses out. Meblish, number three, with a rating of 106. Yeah, three-time winner in Qatar, uh, Meblish, and would have a big chance, top rated here, um, on uh, his Qatar form, but he was tailed off in a 2,000 metre open here two weeks ago and needs to leave that uh, a long, long way behind. Big questions to answer now from Meblish. Uh, we have Al Hass uh, no, we're going to skip Al Hassas with a uh, mark of 64. Let's move on to number seven, uh, Tuhamiyat Al Khaladia. Yeah, it's 13 runs since Tuhamiyat Al Khaladia um, got her head in front. Uh, that was in a one mile open in Taif, but she ran a really good length of three quarters second to Maitha Al Khaladia in the one mile um, JCSA Cup last time out. A repetition of that will make her hard to beat. The fact that she is a little bit hard to win with means that it gives others a half a chance as well, but she's, she's got the best recent piece of form. Uh, Jessan, as we heard there from Alex, is the short price favourite. Yeah, he, he's been in, been in good form, Jessan, 
Um, he wants to dominate in his races, and if he doesn't dominate, he can throw in the occasional stinker. He won on one mile, not 90 to 105 handicap, two starts back, beating a Preciosa Alashai by a length and a quarter. That's the, the, his stable companion. And was beaten in the King Abdulaziz Racetrack Championship last time out behind Najim Al Zaman. There's no harm in that. Well, let's head down to the paddock and join our resident Arabian racing expert, Shamila. Who's caught your eye, Shamila? Thank you very much, Rebecca. Well, I can definitely see why horse number nine, Jessan, is the international favourite for this race because um, he's coming up behind me here now and he is my paddock selection as well, the nine-year-old colt by Majdal Arab, um, rated 105, so the second highest rated horse in the race, Abdullah Alofi, will be on board as well. Um, he is looking really well in the parade ring. He's sporting blinkers and Abdullah Alofi is just getting the leg up to, onto him now um, by the trainer at Laurent. So, um, Hopefully he can get the job done and get his head in front. He was eighth last time at a meeting, 110, but he's looking um, very well here in the parade ring. Saying that, so is horse number 13, Rakud Alansari, who is my second selection um, in this race. Also looking really good. Carla Dolmamoni on board, who had his 50th winner only a few days ago. And um, my big prize horse that I would like to see in the um, in the first few finishes is horse number four, Al Hassas as well, um, a really nice Qatari bred Arabian, but it'll have to be horse number nine, Jessan, for me. Thank you very much, Shamila. She's made a good uh, good uh, case for Jessan, but I don't think that Jessan really needed any bigging up, Rory, the uh, favourite for this one. Uh, have you said all you want to say on Jessan? Should we move on? Yeah, he, yeah, he's, he's obviously got his chances, but you know, if, he, if he's taken on for the lead here, um, he could be vulnerable. Uh, John de Violette uh, is next, horse number 11. Yeah, has a rating of 84, but he was um, having ruled Meblish out. He actually finished behind Meblish um, on his debut here with finishing last of 20 and didn't do an awful lot better last time out. So he doesn't look like he's capable of running to his mark at the moment, John De Violet. Uh, 13, Rakud Al Ansari is uh, a consistent performer. Yeah, he is. He's, uh, he's uh, very likeable. He won four times uh, in open races between six furlongs and a mile in the Tive season um, and has carried that form over. He was uh, far from disgraced when splitting Shibul Gouda and uh, Aldefer Joda in the King Abdulaziz Cup over a mile um, last time out. That was behind Mubarizat al Khaladia. Mutahed al Khaladia is not high enough, uh, so let's move on to Mod Hisha, uh, number 16. Oh, see, I've, got, I've gone with the, you, you've gone with the 80, I've gone with the over 80, so I've, I also didn't, I didn't give Mod Hisha a, a massive chance, only one from 13 in his career. We're gonna see Jessan in action now. And as you can see, he's already in front at this stage um, and he's a very happy horse when he gets to the front. You'll see that um, the main danger to him comes in the same colours uh, down the centre of the track, a slightly darker grey, um, that being Preciosa Alashai. But he holds on uh, to win by a length and a quarter from the stable companion with the rest of them uh, pretty well beaten. This was a, um, a handicap, but a high class handicap, 90 to, to 105. Um, since, since that, he's actually finished eighth um, in the King of Dulazi's racetrack championship behind the G Balzaman which is a very solid piece of form. Um, and he was behind Bayrak Al-Hassam that day. Um, and it's uh, interesting that he's favoured in front of Bayrak Al-Hassam, or Al-Hassam rather, uh, this time around. Yeah, he looks impressive in any case. We were talking about 16 and uh, you were saying... In yeah, I've got, I, 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 I put the line through, Matisha. <laughs> um, it was a case of whether, whether it's 80 and upwards or whether it's above 80, and I went for above 80, so I see, I see why you've gone. Okay, so um, 81 is actually the threshold. It pretty much, yes, although there's nothing on 81, so um, we'll just, we'll, you can skip down to own. <laughs> Let's like. move on then, 18 is own. We'll go back to Madisha if we've got a bit of time left. But Owen um, is a winner over six furlongs and a mile. His best run in, in a fair while came with five and a quarter lengths third to Jessan in that handicap, that 90 to 105 handicap two weeks ago that we just saw. Um, again, he's held by, by Jessan on that piece of form, but you know, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't be a massive surprise to see him finish in front if others put pressure on, on the Jessan. I don't think he's capable of, um, of getting in front of Jessan and, and causing him problems. I think they're looking for other horses to, to act as spoiler. And what about Barak Al Hazam? Definitely has claims in this one. I agree. Um, he was seventh in Najib Al Zaman. Najib Al Zaman is the second best horse in the world, fundamentally, uh, in, my, in my eyes. He is only just inferior um, to uh, the greats. 
um, the great Al Khalidi, I wouldn't would even mention his name. <laughs> um, but he was he uh, bounced back to form to win that um, King Abdul Abdulaziz Cup last time out, and um, uh, there was sorry the King Abdulaziz Racetrack Championship, not the same race. Um, Berak Al Azam ran perfectly respectably there. Prior to that, he'd won the Prince Abdulaziz uh, bin Musad's Cup over a mile and meeting 102. Um, a repetition of that, or indeed a repetition of his, of his uh, last run, puts him bang in the picture here, and I'd give him as good a chance as anything. Okay, let's talk about Shibal Gouda, who you'd say probably has as good a chance as anything as well. Number uh, I would. I think she's. I think Shibal Gouda, or he rather, is out. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I might have. I might. Be, I might be mistaken there, but uh, I marked him down as a non-runner. So let's clarify that uh, before we go on. I don't want to uh, lead anyone astray. Um, but anyway, just to let you know, he, he was fifth in a in a turf maiden. Uh, sorry, that's I take that back. Matched the pick of his um, uh, of his winning form when fifth in the King Abdulaziz Cup over my last time out, and he would have a chance on that uh, if he's taking part. And just to clarify. Shibble Gouda is indeed a non-runner. My apologies for that. That was right. me leading people astray, not you, Rory. Uh, let's move on then. 21, Jalmod does get a run, but it's only rated 62. Only rated 62, and he's, um, he, he's out of his depth in this company. Um, Sakran al um, who, who doesn't get it. I don't think it does get in, does it? Um, we've only got the one non-runner. Uh, let's then, move on, so, or move back, to number 16. You said we'll speak about... If we know, have Sakran, time, Sakran, Sakran is, sorry, I, I, take, I, I take that back. Oh no, I don't know. I think that uh, Sakran Al Khalidia does get a run 22. Yeah, I'm trying to work out who's come out to uh, to to left. It. I've only got one non-runner. Oh no, sorry, Hafid Hafid Al Khalidia is a non-runner. So Sakran does get in the race. Sorry about this. Um, <laughs> I, I made a note on it as if it was getting in. And I was trying to work out if I if I got that wrong. 11 and a half length, fifth in a 2100 meter turf maiden on um, his uh, debut here two weeks ago. Will do better. That was that was a promising enough run, but this is a this is a tough ask. Um, very quickly on the back of that, is it time to do better in time? Okay, well, let's have a quick word, shall we, on 16. You said we would speak about her if we have time, and we do have a minute or so before we head down to the start. Maybe, uh, maybe it's a sign that Modisha is one to consider that we've got a little bit more time than we thought. I think so. I think she deserves a mention with that rating of 80. Uh, she was performing pretty consistently and then seemed in meeting 107 just to drop back a bit. Yeah, she's adaptable trip wise. She was well beaten. She's been well beaten over 2,000 metres in her last two starts. Um, but she's run respectably in opens and a JCSA challenge over, over um, uh, a mile prior to that. Um, she is effective at this trip. She's a course and distance maiden winner um, last season. So this is her trip probably. And, you know, she might, she might finish fifth or sixth, but I think she'll be doing well to do better than that. All right, then. Well, the horses are beginning to load, which means it's time to head down to the start and join Alex Fussy once again. Thanks very much indeed, Rebecca. Yes, loading up is well underway. We've got a handful already into the starting stalls. Just to confirm, for clarification, 21-22, Jalmod and Sakran al Kaladia, your two reserves that are getting in here are with numbers 12 and 20, the absentees. And Jessan continues to be uh, the seven to four favorite in the international betting. Uh, five to two now. Bayrak Alizam has come for support. Rakud Al Ansari at seven to two. To Hamiat Al Khalidia at nine to two. And it's tens and bigger the rest of the field. Not too many more left to be installed. There is King de Violette who's heading up to uh, stall position number six. If you're following these reserves, Jalmont's into stall 12. Sakran Al Khalidia will jump from stool 20. There is a Wamir popping into one, and we are now ready to race. All in. They're off. Racing here over 1400 in this Arabian Open. One of the slowest from the stools was Own, who's going a little backwards and then a little forwards. It's now being rushed up quite a a change of tack there from the jump. And Owen will be bang up there with Sakran al Khalidia through the first couple of hundred metres. Awamir on the inside is also in a handy position. And between rivals, Sasha is not too far away. A Jessan also, international favourite, is just in behind of the first five or six runners as they work their way into this left-handed turn. So Owen uh, just bang up there with Sakran al Khalidia. The latter are just holding sway around the corner. 
They're being followed up by Awamir Steel, who's got a nice slot there on the inside running rail. Uh, between rivals, Rakud Al Ansari is banged there and starting to get rolling as they take this turning point and we head to the business end. So on the turn in and around the outside of rivals, it'll be the 13, Rakud Al Ansari, who strikes for home. Between horses to Hamiat Al Kaladia. Red and black colours have travelled into this nicely. Still there to the running rail is owned with a chance. They pull clear of Jessan, who at best will offer a place, you would think, as they go down inside the final furlong of the contest. And up top here, it's Rakud Al Ansari, who just shows the way right down the outside. Closers are coming. Jessan owned rallying again. It's going to get pretty tight here. Own responding tremendously for pressure and has just done it. Own digs that one out. Didn't look likely, did it? Has somehow found a little bit extra to win and denied Jessan. Uh, the two of them coming over the top of Tuhamiat Al Kaladia late on. Victory for number 18, Own. 134.91. The winner has posted here on the clock. Has managed to get the better of Jessan by a head late on. Quite an odd final couple hundred meters because Own. Didn't get the best of breaks, then was forcing the pace, was taken on and passed by Tuhamiat Al Kaladia, and eventually has responded again inside the final 100 metres to get back up for the win in the hands of Al Anazi. Another win uh, for Nate here. Uh, Jessan is second, beaten ahead. Tuhamiat Al Kaladia, the seven, finishes in third place, and that runner just holds third on the inside of Rakud Al Ansari. So order of finish in our second race of the evening is 18, 9, 7 and 13. Naif al -Nazi is the winning jockey of our second race of the day. And I have to say that he is doing incredibly well on these Arabian horses in the past few months. He's been given some fantastic um, opportunities by al Khalidia stables. al Khalidia haven't had any runners this weekend. However, Naif has had two wins and they've both come on Arabian horses. So um, very well done to Naif al -Nazi. And of course, the trainer Fahad al Tair, who had a winner yesterday as well. Um, so they are all on the good form list so very well done to everyone involved this was a open arabian contest over 1400 meters with 95000 saudi real and had to jump out of stall number 18 and it was a very um, messy in the closing stages there um I, I genuinely thought Rakud Alansari was our winner through and through. And then the last four horses just came um, at pretty much out of nowhere. And Owen definitely owned that race for sure. A kiss on the nose for Owen by jockey Naif Alanazi.
and this was rated 93 so it was definitely up there in the ratings for sure and definitely a horse to watch come next season he is a five-year-old colt by haran out of carman um, a very nice looking individual indeed and that race didn't look like it took too much out of him um, but we will be speaking to Nafal Nazi once he finishes weighing in for the second race of the day and what a season he's been having so far as well um, ooh, <laughs> be careful Naif. Um so just to reiterate, horse number 18, Own has won our second race of the day there as Nave pops his helmet back on. Congratulations, Nave. That was a little bit messy race, like in the end. Uh, thank you, Shimela. Thanks, God. Uh, congratulations for the... Too much respect to this guy, Abu Sultan Mohammed bin Ashi Tayyar, because this guy family energy like me. Uh, thanks, God. Uh, congratulations for the owner, Father Tayyar. I'm so happy about winning this color. It's like uh, when me young I ride for this color, I respect him too much. Thanks God again, Shimi. And what was your plan for the race, jumping out of draw number 18? Uh, like we see, Shimi, this hard horse needs all the way to push him. Like we see, uh, anyone, when he sees me, this horse, 400, he think this horse stop. Uh, like you see, when I come and drift him to outside the IET, I hope, my hope come in again for this win. Thanks God, Shimi. And you're doing very well on the Arabian horses in the Riyadh season. Yeah, Arabian with Arabian. Yeah. <laughs> well done, Nate. Thank you, Shimi. Thank you. Well, you said, Rory, before this race that if Own could get ahead of Jessen, then it would be Own's race to win. Uh, and Own actually didn't get away too well, really. So did really very, very no, well. No, it was then cover. rushed up from stall 18. Um, then uh, seemed to lose his place a little bit early in the straight before rallying late. Um, to Hamid al Khalidi, I think she's rather thrown that away. She got to the front. The race set up nicely for her. Um, she just doesn't win races. It's now 14 consecutive losses for her, despite the fact that she's got high-class form. Uh, and really, she should be um, she should be winning more than she does. You'll see Owen um, in the uh, the blue colours and the the nose band out wide going forward with the um, uh, the reserve uh, Sakran Al Khalidia. Um, interestingly, um, the horse who finishes fifth in the end, um, it would have been the second favourite, Bayrak Al Hizam, in last place, came out from the stall right next to Owen, and uh, third Al Temiat decided. Well, I'm going to give them a 25 length start and see if that will make it a little bit more interesting for me. It did make it interesting. We just saw that, I, I believe that was Fertile de Croat who uh, lost his rider there, Jimmy Carrion, um, riding the number 10. So we'll wait for updates about that. Um, you see oh, right at the back of the field in that red nose band, uh, Bayrak Al Hazam starts making ground going really well, but he's, he's, you know, got a lot of moderate horses around him. He's given the leaders an awful lot of rope. Uh, and you'll see he makes a lot of, a lot of late grind. At this stage, Owen is being passed on the rail. Um, you see that um, uh, Tuhamiat al Khalidia in the centre of the, the front three gets to the front, but rather idles and doesn't go forward from that point. Rakud al Ansari is trying away in the green colours with the orange noseband. Owen switched off the rail and wide of those two, then rallies and gets his head in front. And after looking beaten, Jessan also starts running on. Um, and that's basically because the front two are really, are really dawdling and idling uh, late in the day and Owen gets back up. Thanks very much, Rory. Well, let's head back down to Shamila, who is in the winner's enclosure. Who have you got for us, Shamila? Thank you very much, Rebecca. I'm joined by Fahad Altair, who's had a second winner this weekend. Congratulations, Fahad. That was a difficult race in the closing stages. Yes, sure it was. Thank you so much. Uh, Owen, he, he doesn't make me sleep at night. <laughs> yes. You know, Arabian horses uh, has some tem some temperament, and they get moody sometimes. Through the season, he got some uh, an episode of moodiness, and uh, thanks God, uh, we uh, prevailed and came first at this race. Uh, got him with a professional jockey. With uh, he has a heavy hand on his hand, uh, so that helped a lot. It was a fantastic ride from Nafal and Azi throughout the race, wasn't it? Yes, he was picked specifically for this horse uh, in this race. And what's your plans with Owen going forward, or does it depend on his mood? <laughs> yes, sure, it depends on his mood. If he's a winner, he's, uh, he can get everything he wants, but uh, hopefully uh, till Riyadh season next time. And what are your plans for, for next season? Hopefully more winners from Owen as well? 
hopefully, hopefully we get some. Uh, this is my first Arabian horse at the stable. Uh, I'm not familiar with the, with the pedigrees of uh, Arabian horse. Maybe I'll get some help from professionals in this uh, in this uh, major, and uh, we'll see what will happen when. Do you see yourself training more Arabians in the future? Uh, hope so. Hope so. The prices are good, and uh, hope we can find another winner. Thank you so much, Fahad, um, and congratulations on your second win of the weekend. Thank you so much. Have a great day. That was Fahad Altair, our winning trainer of race number two. But Alex Fussy, our commentator, will be taking you through the runners and riders of race number three. Shamina, thank you very much indeed. Let's have a look at uh, the field for the third then. We're heading on to the turf now, aren't we? A handicap coming up here, 0-90 over 1,200. No reserves, just the full 14 of them go. And number one is Mahalik. We heard about him at the top of the show, Abdullah Alawfi. Number two is Income, looking for career win number five, Mohammed Al Yami. Number three, beautiful Ashling. That is uh, Al Nadiani on board for the Jerkin stable. Number four, Etisilat. Uh, Al Zahari rides, a winner back at meeting 93. Number five is Asa, top end of the international betting is that particular gelding, Abdullah Al Hussein. Number six is National Gallery, Rayan Altaraj, with seven, Monasib for Fahad Al Faradi. Number eight is Recall the Show, that's Fawas Wanas. We head over the page, and the next will be number nine, Alajil Thati. A jockey on that one is Youssef Al Hussein. Number 10 is Ryan's Party, Al Mimoni on board, that's Ali Al Mimoni. 11, Abipi Go Lucky, Asil Al Shahani. Number 12 is Beehive for Luis Morales, with 13, Mr. Mr. Uh, looking to improve his form from this season, it's been rather moderate so far. And the 14 horse rounding out the field is Siamtaz uh, Al Sharal riding uh, for the Sad Stable. 14 of them then. We're heading on to the turf this time, guys. Runners about to come into the parade ring. Thank you very much indeed, Alex. So we switch to the turf for this next one, Rory. Another big field for this. Not quite as big as we've seen recently, but smaller fields, of course, in the turf encounters. Uh, let's start with horse number one, Mahalik, then. Yeah, Mahalik's been, been a star through the, the Taif season and the Riyadh season. Um, he comes here off the back of an impressive win over six furlongs on dirt last time out. He's never raced on turf in, um, in Saudi Arabia, but he came from the stable of Carl Burke in the UK, and he was a winner over seven furlongs at Catterick um, in his time. There was of equal merit um, on, um, on turf and artificial surfaces. So I don't see any massive problem with Mahalik dropping back um, in trip. It's just a case of whether he's able to, um, to get that good position. He's a strong traveler, so I think from stall two, um, unless he gets something coming across him early in the race, I think he should run a big race again. His issue has always been sort of finishing a little bit weakly at the end of his races on dirt, but I think that's less of a problem on turf. Um, and uh, obviously he, he wasn't able to win um, on, um, on Tapita in the UK, but he was able to win on turf. So I think he's got a fair chance here for all. It's a really, really competitive race, as you can see from the ratings. You've made a very compelling case for Mahalik Rory, so we're certainly going to keep an eye on that one. And what about income? We saw income here last week. Yeah, income came back to form when, when uh, finishing uh, sixth in Sunset Flash in the King Abdulaziz Racetrack Championship for Phillies a week ago. Um, she was a five-furlong winner on turf in her time with, uh, with Richard Hughes, and that was at Newmarket back in, um, in June of 2022. Um, she's got good enough form to get involved here, and obviously she was in warmer company last time out in that race won by Sunset Flash, so hard to rule out. Stall one for income is the ideal place to be um, over this trip if she's able to get to use the, the speed to, uh, to utilise that good draw. Mahalik, Mahalik looks really well, doesn't he? He, always, he really takes the eye almost every time he runs. I wouldn't be at all surprised if he's pick of the paddock. He's, he's been paddock pick about four or five times already, giving us a little look there as well. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, let's move on, horse number three then. Uh, Beautiful Ashling. Um, she cost 240,000 uh, to join Current Connections. Uh, but that was after a two-year-old season in the UK when she won twice. Both those wins were five furlongs at Beverly. Um, she ran quite well at Royal Ascot as a two-year-old as well, finishing midfield in the Albany Stakes. Didn't quite see out the six furlongs on the stiff track at Ascot. Um, this should be okay for her, but she's been off the track now since I don't know, September 2022. So clearly she's had an issue or two, um, and it remains to be seen whether she is ready to go. But um, 
She costs plenty. I suspect she costs plenty as a potential broodmare as much as anything, to be honest. I think um, Prince Faisal will be, will be looking to build up his broodmare band, and that's essentially what she was bought for, but she's here to race. I think she's liable to need it, but she's quite prominent in the betting. Interesting to keep an eye on her, then, given that big break. Uh, number four is Eti Salat. Yeah, Eti Salat's a law unto himself. He was a 5 for long turf winner at Maidan for uh, Doug Watson, uh, so we know that the turf is no problem to him at all. Um, he beat um, Bravado two and a quarter lengths in a not to 85 uh, contest uh, over a course and distance in January, but he was only ninth to pig and, and a course and distance not to 90 on his most recent start. That was uh, part of the International Jockeys Challenge. It needs to bounce back from that, but that's a tizzle out for you. He, he runs how he feels like running, and he's more than capable of winning, um, and he does win plenty of races. And uh, number five, who we've just seen, that big imposing horse. There was uh, Asa or Asa, uh, we saw in action last week as well. Yeah, much his best recent run uh, when finishing a length third to Pig and uh, over course and distance two stars back. We'll see that run shortly. Monacy was just in front of him. Uh, you'll see Asa finishing well down the outside, Monacy finishing well close to the rail. Um, Pagan's been beaten since. I'm not sure. I mean, I know that was that was a race that got a lot of attention because it's part of the Saudi Cup weekend. I don't think it was any better than this race, and um, I'm not sure that Acer deserves to be. Uh, he's he's clear favourite on the international market. I'm not sure that he. Um, I'm not sure he deserves that spot because his overall form has been a bit in and out. And you might say the same for National Gallery. Yeah, he's just struggling a little bit um, for, um, for form at the moment, but I do think he's better than his run last time out, which came over course and distance. He, was, he had the worst of the draw that day when six the pig, and he showed a lot of speed around horses to get into a challenging position in the straight and then just couldn't maintain that run. He's drawn four today. That will suit him an awful lot better. He's a winner over six and a half furlongs on turf, and I think he's underrated here. OK, well, let's head down to the paddock and uh, check in with Shamila. Shamila, who is your paddock pick for race number three? Well, Rory's already said it. Um, horse number one, Mahalik, has to be my paddock selection for this race. He's just an, a stunning individual, and I think he's right. I think I have chosen Mahalik about four or five times as a paddock selection because he's just a really, really nice-looking horse. Goes on the grass here, out of stall number two, under Abdullah Lofi. And Abdullah Lofi won our last race of yesterday under Lou Ganini. So um, definitely a man on a roll, and so is the stables as well. The Almondale stables are flying this last weekend, so definitely you should keep your eyes on them. But Mahalik, it has to be my paddock selection for this race. He is a stunning individual. Now, saying that, horse number four, Tisselat, I absolutely love him as well. Great nine-year-old gelding. So at the older end of the scale here um, in this race, but um, he does so well on turf. He's really impressed me this season since moving from the UAE to Saudi. Um, and of course, I have to give a mention to one of my favorite fillies in training here, horse number 11, Habibi Go Lucky. But I think Mahalik has it all in this race. Well, Shamila making a very strong case indeed for horse number one, Mahalik. Uh, let's resume then, Rory. I think we got as far as National Gallery, horse number six. Yes, I, I said that I thought he was underrated here. He's a double-figure price, um, National Gallery, it, because obviously he looks held by some of these runners last time out. And um, prior to that, he'd been ninth a couple of times. I do think he was better than the bare result last time out. Maybe seven furlongs will be more his trip, but I can see him from stall four getting a nice tool round here and he'll be finishing off well. I think he can hit the frame. And we have Monasib, uh, number seven. Yeah, he was um, uh, in, in pretty tough waters last time out when sixth. Uh, but two starts ago, he was, he was second to Pagan in that Not a 90 International Jockeys Challenge. Um, and he's very closely matched with Acer on that run. Um, he, he finished well close to the rail. And uh, he's clearly well suited by the, uh, the track and trip. He's drawn stall 13, though, and I think that makes his life an awful lot harder than it was last time when he was able to sneak up the inside. Well, this is the horse that both you and Shamila have been bigging up. This is Mahalik. Yeah, as you can see, he is, he is a gorgeous looker. Now, he needs to prove he's as effective over six furlongs on turf as he is on the dirt here. Um, but while he's improved a lot in his time um, with the Nath Almond deal, I think he's just progressed physically. And you can see that he's really grown up um, since he was a young horse. He raced um, in the UK. Um, as a, a juvenile for, uh, for Carl Burke. And you see him in the lead here with his tongue lolling out. Uh, often he can finish a little bit weakly. He looked under pressure at this stage. Um, a higher rated horse on his outside coming with a challenge. But Mahalik actually di digs in well over the six furlongs on this occasion. Ends up coming, coming clear again. Uh, the runner up 
sorry, the horse in second at this stage uh, finishes quite weakly. I'm not sure he was quite fit for that. And there's a bit of a line of them in behind uh, for second and third. But impressive performance from Mahalik. He tends to see his races out better over six furlongs. He wants to get close to the lead early on. Doesn't need to lead outright, but he wants to get close to the lead. And his, the dichotomy with him is over six furlongs in a really good dirt race, he maybe has to go too fast and then doesn't have much left for the finish. Uh, here we have the race that uh, the Pagan won last time out in which Monaseeb finished second. You see Monaseeb in the yellow colours with the red cap. You will also see Acer um, in the red cheek pieces in the sort of purplish colours on the outside. They both finish well uh, in behind Pagan in this race. Um, it's a competitive contest. As you can see, there's not an awful lot between the first uh, six or seven home on this occasion. It's a tightly handicapped event. Um, and I wondered whether uh, Monaseeb might be scuppered by the fact that he stuck out and stole 13 here um, when he was nicely drawn last time for a run. It's going to be an exciting race anyhow. Uh, recall the show. Uh, had a really good run last time out, Rory, meeting 108. He did, and we actually saw him in that, in that picture. He was seventh in that race, won by Pig, but he ran very well uh, last time out. We saw him in both of those pieces of footage. Actually, in fact, his previous run, he was running on from the back of the field and just got into it when second to Mahalik, Mahalik in that six for dirt contest um, last time. So he's clearly in very good form. Um, he's effective. He, he does his best work late. He's not a natural... Um, go forward six furlong horse but he tends to stay on strongly when others are beginning to flag and the tricky thing again with him he's drawn a sort of 11 he will need gaps to appear uh, for him to arrive with a challenge but he's not out of it and he's clearly thriving at the moment number nine Lajal Thati is getting better yeah Lajal Thati I mean he, well she's she's her form is is uh, uh, is coming to a peak at the moment. She's had plenty of racing. Um, four lengths forth to Sunset Flash in the King Abdul Aziz um, racetrack championship for Phillies last time out. Um, but her previous turf run was over 2,100 metres and she ran quite respectably here. That's gone back a couple of seasons. Um, and, and yeah, she did a lot of racing two or three seasons ago over much further, but her last couple of runs have been over 1,200. And you wouldn't say she wasn't suited by it, although she did come from the clouds in that race that Sunset Flash won last time out. So again, don't expect to see her early, uh, and she'll hope they go hard and fly here because she's a finisher. And uh, we have Ryan's party next. We saw him in action last Thursday. We did. He's, they, we, we see him constantly. He's running week, meeting 108, 105, 103, 95, 93. Every other week we see uh, Ryan's party. Um, he's had 38 races here, and he also had um, seven or eight runs in the UK where he was a winner. He won a winner um, over six furlongs at Hamilton for, um, for Kevin Ryan. Um, I was going to say, hence the name Ryan's party, actually it was owned by Steve Ryan. Um, all three wins here have come over six furlongs on dirt. Um, he was well behind Pagan over course and distance um, three starts ago, but his, his last two runs back on the turf um, are pretty good. And he was fifth to Mahalik in that bunch finish, last of bunch finish for the places. So he's behind Recall the Show, but not far behind. And he's, um, he's not without a chance. But he's a little bit of a launch to himself again. He, um, he, looks after himself and he'll, he'll win races when the opportunity arises, but he won't, um, he won't hurt himself uh, if, uh, if winning is out of his reach. Let's head on to Hippie Go Lucky then, number 11. She um, won back-to-back -back course and distance handicaps last year. She's an absolutely lovely filly, only little. Um, she'll be one of the first off the bridle here, but again, she tends, to, um, she tends to finish well. She was only seventh over course and distance last, uh, or actually, sorry, fifth over course and distance, rather last uh, two starts ago meeting 98 and I thought she was better than the result there she was coming from the back of the field when there was a wall of horses in front of her had to switch round them and was finishing off nicely I think she might have been third with a clear run that day but she does lack a little bit of mid-race pace and all she does is sort of run through beaten horses at the end but again if the race pans out her way she's one of a few who'll be trying to make uh, late inroads she's got a fantastic name as well she does uh, Beehive, Mr. Mr. and Yamtaz are the three remaining. Uh, word on those, Rory? Well, Beehive is reasonably well supported, but um, he's been well beaten in his last couple of starts. He is a turf winner in the UK. Um, he is not a bad stick when he's at his best, but he's, again, had a long season. His last two starts suggest that he needs a break. Mr. Mr. is hard to fancy on any of his three runs this season. Yamtaz has got half a chance, was third of it to Rustam Basha um, two starts back. Um, although he was behind the 76 rated M tiles on that occasion and that suggests that maybe his rating of 82 is a little high at the moment and whether he's a natural six furlong horse on turf I don't know but he is by Dubai destination so he is bred for turf. Let's see how he get on, gets on in this one then and the horses are loaded so let's head to Alex Fussy for this one.
Last one comes in. That'll be Yam Taz, and we are set to go. Okay. They're off. Racing away over 1,200 on the turf here for this 0 to 90 handicap. A little bit slow in stride with beautiful Ashling will be at the back end, but he's now rushing in between rivals to try and get rolling. Dropping to the tail is recalled the show. A good start made here by National Gallery. Also right up there to the inside is Mahalik as well in the dark green jacket. Red cap of her PP go lucky in the front wave. Also with them on the outside is Monasiv. The yellow and red colours tries to get forwards as they continue to take the spin. Income is just in behind them on the fence. The white cap there races alongside Arsa in the purple and white jacket as they take this turn towards the top of the home straight. Heading to the business end then, and it's National Gallery who's got on past Mahalik as they level in. One or two closers trying to come down the outside. Beautiful Ashling from a long way off the pace is getting rolling. Monasib is still there as well, working their way inside the final 200. National Gallery is looking a little bit vulnerable now. Etisilat could be the biggest danger. National Gallery all out. Etisilat, cozy stuff, I think. Very, very smart ride. Etisilat's up to win it. Beats into second National Gallery just in the nick of time. Beautiful Ashling on the outside and income back on the rail. Some of the next runners home. Etisalat has won this very cosily. I think this has been one a shade on the cheeky side here. Didn't really go for full effort, just knew he was going to get fast. Did Al Zahari, a winner back at meeting 93, and has now won on the final meeting of the season. And has gone on to beat National Gallery by a neck, who's run terrifically well, having been always up there from the outsets. 1.10.65, the winner's time. A neck the distance, as you can see just behind them, is beautiful Ashling. That's a, a nice start here uh, to life in Saudi for sure for that filly. And income was just, I reckon, fourth on that far side rail. But we are just waiting uh, for that to be confirmed. And it has now been confirmed uh, that income holds off Arsa. Uh, for fourth position. So the order in our third race of the day is four, six, three and two. A winning margin of a neck. I think it could have been more.
What a great win for Eti Salat and a first win. Uh, well, sorry, can't get my words out. <laughs> I was going to say Eti Salat takes the win on our first turf race of the evening. And our commentator there, uh, Alex Fussy, said something about going for full effort with this horse. And you said you can't go for full effort with Eti Salat. <laughs> yeah, he wasn't. He wasn't all out to win. And you know, the, jo the jockey didn't um, uh, didn't go for the stick. But this is that's the Tisalat. I think if you go for the stick on him, he just he will just down tools. So what's happened with him is basically you just let him find his own stride early in the race and either he will decide to pick up and rattle home or he won't. When he does decide to pick up and rattle home, he's very good and he's won, he's won plenty of races. This is his eighth career race from 28 starts. Uh, well, he's more than 28 uh, Saudi starts and he's got eight, eight uh, lifetime wins. Uh, basically, you just, he does actually get a, he gets one reminder there, but He's not necessarily the horse who's going to respond to the, to the hardest of driving. Um, and uh, he, he got himself to the front. I think he, he just about had the race won because uh, the runner-up, National Gallery, had had to race very hard to get to the front. Didn't jump. Again, not, not um, like the uh, US horse in our previous race, not a national sprint. You see National Gallery from Stolford just misses the kick slightly there and has to be rushed up to get to the lead. Mahalik gets out well, as he usually does. National Gallery now begins to show a little speed and gets to the front. And these two dominate the first few furlongs of the race, with a lot of the others um, staying wider on the track. Because if you try to cut across into the bend and you don't get to the lead, you're going to be forced wide. And it's a lot better to take your own path into that bend and make sure that you've got a natural, uh, a natural path around it. Um, it is lads way back in the field of grey. He's just coming round on the rail, biding his time, you know, just not doing much. Out for a day at the races. Um, while you've got a bit of a burn up in front um, with uh, Monacy, who was drawn wide, um, pushed up into a challenging position. Mahalik having a battle um, with uh, National Gallery, which National Gallery wins at this stage. He was a six and a half furlong uh, winner on turf for Joseph O'Brien, so we, we knew he'd stay the trip reasonably well. But the question is whether his exertions earlier on are just going to tell late. It is a lot at this stage, has been switched wide of runners and comes home um, really fast here, um, as is his wont occasionally. Doesn't always give us running. You know, things don't, if he gets messed around in a race, he just says, no, maybe not today. Next, next day, I'll give a good run. Um, but because he's like that, we talked about that horse yesterday who, who'd won um, uh, multiple uh, times. These horses who look after themselves but win when they can um, are great money spinners. They don't get stressed. Um, they, don't, uh, they don't end up having hard races when they can't win. Um, but when they can, they'll end up doing it. Good run in third, by the way, from Beautiful Ashton. She was coming off a very long layoff and she was badly away. So she had one horse behind her, uh, that being recalled the show, um, into the first bend. But she's rallied really well to grab third. And that's an excellent performance from her. Uh, although it's worth pointing out that a few of these were working really hard to try to get close to the lead early on and probably paid for their exertions late in the day. Whereas um, the winner and Beautiful Ashton were running late and therefore um, maybe had things uh, set up nicely for them. But um, I think there are more positives than negatives for Beautiful Ashton in that run, and uh, she's one to keep an eye on. And what happened with Mahalik? Uh, Mahalik, because he was just, he was challenged for the lead and put under pressure, um, he can fold. I mean, again, we don't know exactly how good he is on turf. We know that he was capable of winning on turf in novice races in the north of England as a, uh, as a youngster. Um, this is obviously much deeper. Now that he's, at race, he's gone up to a mark of 90, um, the old turf form they had isn't, isn't good enough to win this. We, is, we guess that he should be as good on turf because he was back then, um, but he's taken his, his game to a new level over sort of between six furlongs and a mile um, on the dirt. He travel, in mile races, he looks like he stays seven furlongs and 150 yards. He only weakens very late in the day. So it's not like, you know, he should have been sprinting the whole time. He can go a little bit faster himself over six furlongs and then have nothing left at the finish. Over seven and a mile, he's usually able to get a very good position and cruises through his races, but he doesn't quite see them out. So he's not the easiest horse to place, but as you see, he's won four times, so the connections have done very well out of him this season. Well, that was our third race on the card, our first race on turf. We have four turf races in total over the course of this evening. We are going up until 2 a.m. local time, so do stick with us. Uh, somebody who will be sticking with us throughout the uh, course of the evening is, of course, our commentator, Alex Fussy. So let's head to him now. Thanks, Rebecca. Yes, I'll be here. On we go to race four, 1,200 metres. Uh, get on the turf. This is a restricted win race, no more than... Uh, three previous victories uh, for these runners. Number one 
is Reem Al Riyad, the Mount of Abdullah Al Lawfi. At number two is Lama Al Zulfi. Al Mutib will take the ride there with three. Foz Alaita uh, looking to get a fourth win. She won back at meeting 89. Uh, number four, Queen Zayat Muhammad Al Nasser with five. Infrared Nafal Nazi. He's an interesting runner. Six, another Odyssey. Abdullah Al Credis with seven. Rava Nimi, a girl we touched on earlier in the program. Luis Morales will ride. Number eight is Tarara. That is uh, Youssef Al Hussein. A nine is Jiwant Abdullah Al Hussein with ten. A Jathab Mohammed Al Yami. Number eleven Al Hashiria. Uh, Atsil Al Shahani rides with twelve. Fakati uh, Al Musa in the saddle for that one. Uh, the gelding thirteen is Goose Rock. That is now Ahmed Al Zahari. That's a jockey change. And fourteen is uh, Melawa uh, Khalid Al Mimoni. No reserves here. So the 14 of them go. Uh, we've got quite a, a shorty here in terms of the international betting again. Infrared is uh, well ahead of this pack at 11 to 8. A clear favourite for Alanazi uh, to rack up another winner. Rovanimi currently second in at 11 to 4. Reem Al Riyad at 9 to 2. Uh, Jiwant is at 6s and we go 10s and bigger the red. Uh, the rest of the field. So Infrared then, the short priced favourite. Uh, interesting to see this runner at the top of the betting. I wonder if Rebecca and Rory like his chances. Thank you very much, Alex. We'll get to infrared very shortly. That's horse number five. Let's start with Reem Al Riyadh, though, Rory. You think this horse could pose a problem? in this race. Well, not pose a problem, I, but challenge. Yeah, I thought Rima Riyadh had a great chance here. Um, the only downside to Rima Riyadh is, is she doesn't have um, the early pace of one or two of these, but she's got, um, she's got the best form as far as I can see, and by some way, she was an excellent uh, third to Sunset Flash in the King of Dulazi's Racetrack Championship for Phillies last week. Uh, we saw um, uh, at least one in our previous race coming from that. Lajal Thati came from that race as well. Um, she won the Sprint Championship in Taif over this trip. Um, and she's got, she's got really solid form. She's also drawn a stall one, which is definitely an advantage, as we said here. Um, a low draw over this trip is a, is a big help, um, particularly in the weaker races. When you've got the stronger runners with different run styles, maybe not so important. But I thought Rima Riyadh had tons in her favour here. She will be coming from a little bit off the pace, but as you saw with um, the winner of our first at Tizalat, um, just if you can get tucked away on the rails and then swing wide off the bend to come with your run, that's, um, that's very helpful as well. You don't want to have to be racing wide of runners the whole time. So um, Abdullah Alofi, who's been in, in good winning form, he had a double yesterday, um, can do what he wants on, on Reem Al Riyadh and he should, um, he should have this race set up for him. I, I struggle to see him out of the frame, to be perfectly honest. Well, you made a compelling case then for horse number one and uh, the Almondiel family. Lama Al Zulfi, horse number two, might struggle in this. Uh, yeah, has a uh, rating of 83. And in fairness, that's, that's um, obviously gives her a bit to find with, um, with Reem Al Riyadh, but not that much with, with most of the others in the field. And she's been in deep, um, in deep company the last twice. Previously, her, her third start back, she was um, two lengths third. Uh, to Lajo Thati in a six furlong uh, Phillies Open. Um, that was with the likes of uh, Taraha uh, in behind, that's number eight, and um, uh, Al Hashoria, rather, number 11, was also behind, it was seventh on that day. So she holds that pair fairly comfortably. I don't think she's out of this from stall two. Uh, Foz Alaita, uh, number three. Yeah, um, she dead heated for first in a seven furlong Open. Um, back in meeting 89, uh, that was a 0 to 80 contest. She ran well on her next start to be second, but her last three have been a little bit disappointing, and um, she'll need to, to find her best form to get involved here. Queen Zayat, you suspect number four will be outclassed in this. Uh, yeah, and she's, she's been running poorly in her last um, couple of starts. Six starts here, hasn't shown the same form as she did in the UK. Let's head down to the paddock then, where Shamila is ready and waiting. Shamila's had a good look at the horses, and tell us what you think. 
Thank you very much, Rebecca. Second um, turf race of the evening, and I've gone the way of horse number seven, Rovanimi, um, who is trained by Sami Al Harabi and will be ridden by Louis Morales. Now, Sami Al Harabi's horses tend to do really well on this turf surface, so um, I wouldn't be surprised if this horse managed to get up only a rating of 79. However, um, has Louis Morales on board, which is a huge help to that stable as well. So um, it has to be horse number seven from my paddock selection in the fourth race of the day. So very um, best of luck to the Sami Al Harabi team. Now, um, I know that horse number five is the international favorite in for red mm -hmm. and for good reason as well. I absolutely love this horse, but horse number seven just looks a little bit fitter to me. So Nay Falanazi is chasing that double, but Louis Morales is chasing his first winner of the day. So and I think he's going to get it. Thank you very much, Shamila. Well, let's talk about the short price favourite, Rory Infrared, who we can see now. Um, looks fantastic, um, really come well in his coat and has a good chance. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's almost black, isn't he? He's listed as a bay colt, um, but that's because he was racing in the UK. Um, he was um, chiefly park horse um, in the UK. Um, they got a bit of, they got a few horses who, who are very close to being black, um, who tend to be called bay or brown. But uh, yeah, he looks really well. He was fifth to pig, of course, in distance in that in, uh, international jockey challenge. We saw a video um, before our previous race, and he should hit the frame um, in this contest. I don't think he's an outstanding um, favourite, though. I can see why. You know, he's proven over course and course and distance. He's got turf form in the UK. He, he ticks more boxes than he doesn't. But um, I thought his price was was just a tad on the short side. Another odyssey could be outclassed in this. Yeah, think? a disappointing run when, when last seen um, five, four or five weeks ago, meeting 101, only rated 66. Again, another odyssey is a horse who's shown decent form elsewhere. Not a 12, not a 1200 um, uh, meter performer on pedigree. He's a son of Ulysses, so he really should want middle distances. And Rovan Yemi, the horse that Shamila says looks a little bit fitter than infrared. Yeah, he, he had been a bit frustrating this season. He always shows speed in his races, but he do, it's sometimes a little bit cheap. He, he can sort of drop off uh, in races over a little bit further. But he made the, the most of being drawn and stole one last time. I um, bounced out and made the majority of the running um, to, uh, uh, to win narrowly. Um, the horse that he beat that day was, um, was G-Want, wasn't it? Uh, who, again, hadn't been entirely convincing through the season but showed his best form of the year um, to be second that day. They were drawn in stalls one and two, they dominated from the start. Again, I'm against the pair because um, they're in seven and nine now. I think they're slightly flattered by last time. There's a chance that one of them can win because clearly the, the six furlongs on turf suits them, but I thought everything was in their favour last time out. What do you make of Taraha number eight? Well, Taraha has held um, on her running two runs ago when she was behind um, Lama Azulfi, and then she was disappointing last time out, so I find her difficult to fancy her. Gwant uh, is at sixes. Yeah, um, he's, he's been running okay, but you know, you haven't been entirely convinced by his finishing effort in races this season, um, but he did put in his best effort in a long time when beaten a length and a quarter by Ruven Yemi over course and distance last time out. He was drawn and stole two that day. Ruven Yemi was on the inside. We'll see whether the pair of them uh, will back that up. Well, speaking of Ruven Yemi, we can take a look at uh, one of his recent races. This was March. Yeah, this is, this is him running uh, last week. He's in the nosebands on the inside. I think Luis Morales was on board that day. Um, got the... Got the um, the perfect draw, got the perfect start that day and made all. G-Want um, tracked him from stall two and was the only one to throw down a challenge. Maybe they were just a lot better than the others on the day. Um, I think this is a tougher race than that one. Um, and of course they don't have the, the same draws, but if they show the early p the speed that they did, um, they could get involved. Uh, this is Rimal Riyadh um, looking okay as she heads down to post under Abdullah Alofi. And this is her running. She's in the yellow camp here. There are several runners uh, from the stable in this uh, contest. Uh, this being the King Abdulaziz Racetrack Championship for Phillies. Sunset Flash on the rail rallies to win this and brought the house down um, as a result. But Rimal Riyadh um, was ridden to pick up the pieces essentially and she stayed on strongly um, to grab third place on the line. This was a likeable performance. Uh, you also see Laj Al Fati, the, the grey, running on uh, late in the contest. Rimal Riyadh. Um, I think she'll be okay um, on, uh, on this surface. She's, um, she's bred for turf. She's a daughter of Otad. Um, she's drawn a stall one. She's got a rating of 94. 
Um, she's clear in the ratings as a, as a result of that. She's also getting um, four pounds from infrared is rated 87. So she's actually got 11 pounds in hand here. Now she won't lead early, that's not her run style. Um, but I would have thought she's, um, she's gonna come with a strong run as long as, um, as, long as the gaps open up. I and mean, your worry when you're coming from behind in a race like this is um, there's just nowhere for you to go. But hopefully she can tuck in um, in midfield and then swing wide off the bend and come sweeping through to win. That's the idea. <laughs> we'll see if it uh, see if that plays out shortly. Uh, let's head back to the runners. I think we got as far as number ten, Jatab. Yeah, Jatab hasn't shown much since landing a seven furlong local local open in October 2022. She's fairly lightly raced since then, but recent efforts have been um, have been disappointing. She was off. She, she was absent after disappointing on her final start last season. She then ran once early in the season in, um, in Taif, was absent again until running last week. And all, all of those things just, you know, they're all red flags for me. Oh, Sharia really hasn't done much in recent outings either, number 11. No, uh, as, and again, she was uh, her one half decent run was meeting 96 when finishing seventh, but she's held by Lama Al Zulfi and indeed by Taraha on that run. So um, I was. I didn't find it too hard to put the pen through her, particularly from stall 11. I'm sure you can also put a pen through at 12 and 13 as well. Yes, um, disappointing efforts from Thakati of late. I mean, she is capable um, and she will win more races, but she's, um, she's not in the best of form at the moment. And she's stuck out in stall 12 here, which, which puts me off. Um, Goose Rock is, is really not good enough for this. Her own, she was well beaten on her only run here. That was um, two weeks ago. She is a three-time winner. Um, in her career, but um, she probably needs more time to adjust to um, to life in Saudi Arabia, and I don't think Stall 13 is any use to her. And I can see lots of crosses on your race card, Rory. I'm guessing that you don't like any of the rest of the runners on this. No, we've only got we've only got number 14, uh, Malawa left because the the reserves 15, 16, and 17 don't get in. Uh, Malawa has been out of the has been, you know, ninth or worst or worse than her last uh, four starts. She's got the widest draw of all, which is the big disadvantage over six furlongs. She's hard to fancy in form. She's hard to fancy from the draw. Uh, she's not really a turf horse. Yeah, so two, two crosses through her. And you say Rimal Riyad won't lead. She's got a good chance. So who is going to lead? Who's going to set the, the uh, pace? Yeah, it's a good, that's a good question. Um, Lama Al Zulfi might go forward from stall two. Infrared will go forward. Rovan Yemen stall seven led last time out and was clearly going to. Those tactics saw him run a lot better. He always goes forward. I think he's the likeliest leader from stall seven. Um, and if I don't want him to get there too easily, I want I want something inside him to put pressure on him um, because he's a much better horse when he's not under pressure near the front um, and he tends to crack when um, uh, when put under pressure mid race. Um, we saw him under no pressure mid-race last time, given a lovely ride by Luis Morales. I just think this might be a bit tougher for him. Thanks a lot, Rory, for that. Uh, let's head down to the start then and join our commentator, Alex Fussy, as the horses begin to load. Lovely stuff. Thank you, Rebecca. Yes, we're loading forwards, aren't we, here for this uh, fourth race on the card, another race on the turf, as you can see. First seven or eight already into the starting stools here. Definitely uh, infrared, an interesting runner here. The next one up, still five. Uh, Fene Falanazi's mount coming on in now. International favorite at six to four, infrared. Rovanimi, five to two. Rimal Riyad, seven to two. G Want at sixes and twelves bar those. There is uh, Jafab, the Greys forwards. Al Hasharia has just gone in. Malaw was coming up and also Rovanini. Final couple of runners. Pat down the neck for Malaw. That works the trick. And Rovanini is push forwards. All aboard. Okay. They're off. Jumping out over 1,200 once again. A little bit slow this time. It was Goose Rock who's going to be at the tail end of the field. Also taking a pull is a Taraha. Good beginning, though, made by Infrared. Right up there early. Also good speed, Al Hasharia. That runner may just get to the advantage overall. Not far off them is Rovanimi, but plenty of pace pressure 
On the outside is Jaff Fab as well. G wants is coming in between horses. The Carti is on the outside, the dark green and white. Remal Riyadh is getting a nice run through on the inside rail. Spot the green jacket is ticking off rivals, traveling quite powerfully as they're about to swing on in. It's infrared. who will be the first in line to the judge over Al Hasharia. Right behind them is Reem Al Riyad looking for closers. G1 tries to finish off. Robert Emi is responding to pressure. Deep inside the last 200. Infrared still just has it. But here is Reem Al Riyad who moves on by. Reem Al Riyad shot clear and won it well. Reem Al Riyad has beaten Infrared into second. G1 was in third and fourth to Robert Emi. Success for Reem Al Riyad, number one on your race card. The Almond Deal Stable get a win here with this uh, likable finish. She's going to fourth career success in the hands of Abdullah Alawfi. And she traveled quite purposefully to, throughout on the inside. She was a big eye catcher with about 800 to go. And once she's been pulled out into the clear, she's zoomed on past infrared. Bold showing again from infrared at the head of the pace here. G1 third, Rovanimi in fourth. It's gone uh, very much according to the international betting here in terms of uh, those top four in it have fought out this finish. And Remal Riyad posts a time of 1.11.03. Goes on to win in the end by two and a half lengths. Nice performance, maybe uh, one of our best performances of the evening, I reckon. Uh, the numbers across the line in the fourth were 1, 5, 9 and 7.
beautiful Reem Al Riyadh. She is bred for turf, and what a race on turf. You've, it panned out exactly as you thought it would, Rory. You said she wouldn't lead, uh, but she got up there in the end to win. Yeah, I'm really, really uh, happy that that's uh, worked out. It's nice when you've got a plan, and, and I, I imagine that um, our winning jockey, Abdullah Alofi, also had that plan. Um, just to try to, to tuck in behind the leaders. Infrared, we knew would go forward. Rovan Yemi, we, we, we knew would go forward. We were hopeful um, that the pair of them would get hooked up in a little bit of a duel. Uh, and then the key for, for Abdullah was just to sit on the rail, not to get messed around by anything else um, coming over on top of him. Just keep, keep asking her to go through gaps so that she was able to track infrared through and then swing to the outside of infrared and, and come with a run. And it's worked out absolutely to a T, which is uh, <laughs> It's a rarity, but every now and again, you see a race where you're pretty sure how it's going to pan out, and, uh, and it did. And all the right horses came to the fore. Infrared was the danger on paper. Rufa and Yemi and G1 were first and second over the course and distance last time out, and they filled the first four spots. And uh, any, any of those hard luck stories, do you think? I no mean... hard luck stories, no. Um, in fairness, there probably were four horses with a with a very good chance of winning this, and they, they filled the first um, four spots in the end. Um, no, uh, I mean, obviously, Rolf and Naomi would have had more of a chance if he was able to get an undisputed lead, but you can't really call him unlucky on that, uh, on that front. Everything was in his favour last time, and he just had a bit more to do and had to work harder to lead. Infrared showing speed in his inside made that harder for him, and that was just the end of the story. Um, You'll, you'd give um, Al Hashoria a chance in a weaker race. She showed speed from, from wide before fading late in the day. That was a little bit more, um, more like it from her. But again, she did, did fade out of things um, late. So um, we, you want to see her, see her races out before you'd be uh, supporting her. But no, the, um, the, uh, there are no real surprises in this race, uh, the way it was run. Um, and even at this stage, you could see, although um, Infrared was, was in front, we knew from the figures that Infrared had 10 or 11 pounds to find with Remal Riyad. We knew that the one thing that Infrared had in his favour was that he had better early speed, but he really needed Infrared to get in trouble for him to win. You know, his, uh, his strong point was getting in a good position and then hoping that the, uh, the, the big danger wasn't able to do that. And unfortunately, Remal Riyad just got the perfect run, the run you would have expected her to get from that real spot. She's very reliable. Um, she obviously has she has her limitations, but she's a she's a 94 um, rated filly, um, and she runs to that rating more often than not. This is a big opportunity for her, and it's worked out. And what do you see happening with her in the type season? Um, okay, well, we'll probably, I imagine we will hear from from Naif Almondiel or Sultan Almondiel more likely about what's liable to to happen with her. But um, there are good prizes to be won. Um, obviously, no turf in Tyfe, but she's, she's, um, she's fully effective on dirt, as she's shown several times um, this season. Um, open races, there'll be open races that she can run in. Sunset Flash, for example, won um, a few in, uh, in Tyfe last season against inferior opposition. Those races that are open up for fillies, um, who've won multiple races, and, and um, uh, she'll go there. She obviously, she's, not, um, she's only eligible for not eligible for non-winners of four anymore, having just racked up her fourth win. So those um, restricted races aren't open to her anymore, but Phillies Opens um, will be uh, a rich source of uh, future wins. Yeah, she uh, ran a fantastic race there anyway. Lovely, lovely Philly, really likeable. Uh, do you think that she could go a bit further, Rory? Um, well, she, she'll, seven furlongs is fine for her. Um, she's, um, she's just a late running sprinter, essentially. Um, sort of uh, splinter come miler, but yes, yeah, so her, her very best efforts have come at six and seven furlongs. Um, and again, you know, should be. I don't see her being asked to tackle a mile um, very often. There may be scenarios where she's she's fit and ready to go, and there just happens to be a race at a mile and nothing shorter for her, and therefore connections will have to give her a go there. Um, and she's capable of winning over a mile if everything drops right. But the way races are run over this trip um, are is more suitable for her, and that's where she's she's going to get most of her. Uh, her pickings. But six and seven furlongs tend to come alike to a lot of these. Do you think perhaps that infrared went off a bit too hard? Not really, no. Again, um, infrared has run right up to his form. Um, the, the issue, as I said, he had was he needed to get in a good position um, and he was 10 pounds inferior to the winner and the winners ended up winning by that sort of margin. Yeah, it was a great race. Anyway, our second race on the turf. That's four races of 12 now done. I believe that we are sticking with the turf for this next one as well. So 
Plenty more to look forward to tonight in Riyadh. Uh, we're moving on from the local and imported fillies and colts to a Saudi-bred fillies and colts race next. But sticking over the turf, but stepping up significantly in trip. 2,100 metres for this next one. And another big field. Well, no, not another big field. Another small field to, compared to what we're used to. We're used to seeing you know, all 20 or so spots taken, but uh, not on the turf anyway. Um, so coming up, our fifth race of the night. So we are very much looking forward to the rest of the action on the card. And as ever, to talk us through all the runners and riders for this next one, it's our commentator, Alex Fussy. Thanks so much, Rebecca. Yes, uh, as you say, a bit smaller. Still quite a few, though, for uh, some terms of racing. 11 uh, for this local bread, over 2,100. As you say, up in trip we go. Uh, Amo Ataza is the top one. Uh, the Mount of Ran Alterage. Two is Motalahem, Khalid Al Mimoni. Three is uh, Adal, Thurb Al Timyat, with four had Al Gamam. Uh, Al Mudiani is on board, a winner at meeting 90. Number five is Halfs Al a jockey change there. Yasser Al Bakawi now in the saddle. Number six is uh, Nashia, that's Ali Al Mimoni, with seven, Warad Al Jud, Mohammed Al Yami. Number eight is uh, Moata Zewa. Uh, Jimmy Carrion, nine is Mumtina. Uh, that is Al Mutib, a couple of seconds earlier in the campaign. Number 10 is Fana for Abdullah Al Lawfi. And 11 is Ibn Hadban. Uh, that's Abdullah Al Credits. So hopefully, we will uh, spin over the page for you in a moment or two's time and you'll be able to see the 9, 10, and 11. There they are, the final three of the 11 in this local bread open. Uh, the favorite here is Mumtina. Number nine on your race card, available at 11 to 10 in the international market, looking for a third career success. Ibn Hadban is currently second in at 13 to 8, and the betting is all about these two because it's sevens bar the pair. So numbers nine and 11 are the pair of hot shots in terms of the international markets. Of hot shots, Alex. I thought you were talking about me and Rory there for a second. <laughs> uh, yeah, so a smaller field for this one. Let's start from the top. It's going to be a competitive uh, race this next one, Rory. Let's start with number one. That is a, a familiar horse. We saw this one in action just a couple of weeks ago, as we do with many of these. Al Mota Tazer. Yeah, Al Mota Tazer um, is arguably best up to a mile. Um, and she's got plenty to prove, I think, on, her, on this turf debut. She's won from 28 in her career, um, only eighth last week. Um, three weeks ago or four weeks ago, she was, she was way down the field at 15th. Um, and the, the handicappers pulled her rating down since last week as well. She was rated 75. She's now been pulled down to 73, or he rather has been pulled down to 73. Um, I think we'll need to be running close to 90 to win this. So um, I've um, put the line through her. Yeah, well, just uh, two horses actually fit that bill, the one, the two that Alex was talking about. We'll get to them last, or three rather. Uh, we'll get to them further down the card. Uh, Motala Hem, I suspect, is going to struggle and has had a massive break. Yes, um, has been off since meeting 59, had a long break before that as well. Um, the eight-year-old has done his winning at, um, at, five, at six and seven furlongs. He does stay a mile. He's, he's run OK at a mile, but he's yet to try turf in a 45 race career. His last win came in, um, in 2019, and it would be a surprise, despite the low draw. I'm not sure the low draws are quite as, uh, as important over the 2100 metre trip as they are over six furlongs, um, as we've seen before. They're certainly not a bad thing, um, but neither of those drawn very low make massive appeal. Uh, Ad, Ad, Adhal is another drawn low in store three. Yeah, he's got claims on the form that he showed in meeting 93 when he won a 2,000 metre open on the dirt beating Motair. Um, that, you know, that reads quite well in the context of this race. Um, he's been, not been so good in two starts since. Um, he's not exactly been out of his depth either, so slightly disappointing. And he's another one making his turf debut, the son of Bandini. And what about Had Algamam, uh, number four? Yeah, um, she's been in really tough races her last two, 12th and 9th, but those came in the custodian of the two holy mosques and the Al Juf uh, um, Regional Governorate Cup. So it's easy to ignore those runs. She would have had very little chance on paper. Prior to that, she won a not to 85 um, Phillies handicap over 1,800 metres and meeting 90, um, beating Ceylon Silverbird by a nose. Now, she's, she's rated 80, but Ceylon Silverbird is now rated in the 90s, having bolted up on her next start. So if you take that literally, then um, Had Algamam could be um, 
uh, you know, could be up there with the best of them in this race. As I said, the two, the two most recent starts were in races she couldn't win, um, and it wouldn't be a surprise to see her get involved here. And we have Hafa Albert in course number five, who we saw just a couple of weeks ago, but we'll need to improve from the last two starts. Yeah, and again, another one, the handicap has pulled down in terms of the rating, pulled down from, from 75 to 73 on the back of that ninth um, last week. Was rated 84 in the past, um, had already regressed this season, so I come down a little bit further. Um, I think... I think he has it to do it the way he's a nine-year-old now. And to be honest, my reading of his form is that he's just slowly regressing. Um, and it'll be a big surprise if he's good enough to win this on his current form. And Nashea is the second lowest rated in this race. Yeah, I mean, Nashea is running well enough, but she's running well enough in weaker races than this. And I think the step up in class will find her right. Uh, Warad Al Jude is 90. Yeah, was rated 97 um, after winning the... Uh, Suleiman Al Hassan awards um, at the tail end of the, the season last year. Three runs this season um, are, tell a very different story. He's been well beaten all three times. Um, he's not, we see he's rated 90 and he's got that form here, but um, he came from nowhere last season, really. He was rated in the 60s, I think, starting out, or maybe, maybe 70 starting the season. He won a couple of races, including that. Um, so he won a maiden race and he won the Suleiman Al Hassan award. Um, but he's not been close to it in three runs this season. I just wonder whether he's, whether he's trained on. Um, he, I've got a question mark over his rating of 90. Uh, Mota Zawi uh, is running off a mark of 54. Yeah, I don't have a question mark over his rating of 54, uh, but he's not, from, he's not from 16. He was 14th in Fairly Modest Company last time out, and he won't be getting involved here. Uh, Mumton, I should get involved based on the... Uh, favourites rating he's got 11 to 10 here yeah it was down the field last time out last week but I thought the uh, I thought the mile trip was sharp enough uh, for Mompton our last time out um, is a course and distance maiden winner and that's a big plus for me uh, it's going back um, a year or two um, or a couple of years certainly um, and was better than ever I thought when second to Jabba Ala in the local group two Prince Badr bin Abdulaziz Cup over 1800 metres that was in January um, you can argue that a couple of runs recently haven't been quite so good, but the pick of her form is very good, and the fact that she's a course and distance winner um, sways me in her favour, and she is a three-star. Oh, three stars. Uh, three the star, star system. system is back. Uh, yeah, I didn't know. I'll be honest with you. Uh, the winner of the last race would have been, might have got into my four-star category, which has never been used before, but we didn't, we didn't get <laughs> onto the stars then. You can't start changing the rules midway through. I, I can't. I only invented the system <laughs> yesterday so, or the day before, so I can change them as often as I like. Okay, that's your, your prerogative then. Uh, Fana is uh, running off a mark of 79. How many stars for this one? Yeah, um, Fana won a one-mile look at one mile local open contest in November. That was back in meeting 61. Was beaten 12 and three quarter lengths, went 14th in a similar event last time out, and is an inconsistent sort. No stars from me. Capable on his best form, but not showing it often enough for my liking. And finally, Ibn Hadban, 13 to 8. Um, Ibn Hadban is short, short enough at 13 to 8 for me. Used to look very hard to win with. Um, has won four times this season, having previously run about 20 times without getting his head in front, looking a professional maiden. But he's not looked back this season, um, and he's, um, he's seen his, his rating go up to 90. Interestingly, he's now rated 88. Um, he ran last week again, finished uh, sixth. His, his march been pulled down to, uh, to 88 in the back of that. Prior to that, he was a, a, a good two and three quarter lengths third to Alta Wahidi in a, a one mile not to 90 international jockeys challenge. I think he's got a little bit to find, three pounds to find uh, with Montana on the ratings, but is also giving um, eight pounds to Montana. So again, it's an 11 pound differential. I think the market's got these the wrong way around again. Montana should be the favorite and Ibn Hadban should be second favorite. Interesting indeed. Do you think then it's, it's gonna turn into a two horse race? Well, the pair of them are clear. Um, it wouldn't surprise me to see um, Had Algamam in stall four run better than she has done. I've given her a star as well. Um, but for me, it's, um, it's Montana, uh, the likeliest winner in this contest. We can see there the likeliest contender then in Ibn Hadban uh, looking lovely in the preliminaries. So just 11 runners go in the fifth race on tonight's card, 2,100 metres, the longest trip so far uh, tonight. Rory, how do you think this race is going to be run? Um, I'm not entirely sure because it's not many of these are regulars over this unusual mile, one mile, two and a half furlong trip on the turf. So I'm not, not um, certain how it will be run, um, where I was the last race. 
Um, we just have to wait and see who decides to, to, uh, to go out in front. Indeed, we will. Thank you very much, Rory. Let's head down to the paddock then and uh, check in with Shamila. Shamila, have you got a winner for us? I sure do hope I have a winner for you. Abdullah Lofi was our winning jockey in the last race, and I hope that he can come up and be the winner of our fifth race as well. Horse number 10, Fanar, is my paddock selection. This time, it was 14th last time out. However, I just something drew me to him in the parade ring, um, honestly, and I couldn't look away from him. I tried to choose any other horse, but Fanar is the paddock selection for me. Jumps out of stall number 10, so one of the wider ones here, um, but I, I genuinely love this horse. Horse. I think he is so beautiful and he's five years old by Frozen Power. Frozen Power is one of my favorite sires here and um, I just hope that he can get the job done. Definitely just drew me to him straight away. Um, but I also really like horse number 11, Ibn Hadnan, um, who is under Abdullah al Kuradis. However, I could not look away from horse number 10, Fanar. Yeah, he looks absolutely spectacular indeed. Thank you very much to you, Shamila. So, Mumtana, Ibn Hadban, the two likeliest winners. Do you think there's anywhere, any horse here that could spring a surprise, Rory? Um, I don't really see it, but obviously with, um, with, I've got slight questions over the, the, the second favourite. Um, but not, not really only because of how, how short he was in the betting, Ibn Hadban. Otherwise, um, the front two look pretty solid. Um, I've given, I've given my idea of, of an outsider who could outrun their odds. Um, any other winner would be a little bit of a surprise to me, I have to say. Remind me who your outsider for this one would be. That would be a number four, um, Had Algamam, who um, was only 12th last time out, but that was in the custodian of the two holy mosques um, for the, the Phillies last time out. That's a really tough contest. Prior to that was in the, um, uh, in the Al Juf Regional Cup. Um, so you can ignore those runs in terms of them being a little bit out of her, um, her pay grade. And she was a winner um, of a not to 85 handicap on her, her, um, her start before that in meeting 90, beating Ceylon Silverbird. Um, that was a bit costly for me. I, was, I thought Ceylon Silverbird was, uh, was um, home and hose that day and she got done on the line. Oh, um, that is heartbreaking. So uh, this ex the trip should suit um, that one if she's ready to go. It, you never really know when a horse has, has a couple of runs in, in tough company. It can leave a bit of a mark on them. It can, it can knock their confidence a little bit. But often horses will be unsighted in these good races. And then you just lower their, lower their sights and they'll, uh, they'll bounce right back to form. And that's a possibility um, with that runner. And in terms of number three, uh, Adal making his turf debut, what do you think the connections will be hoping here? Well, they'll... They'll be hoping he handles the turf. Uh, it's, it's just one of those things. Most, I mean, listen, most horses handle the, 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 the surface. It's not because it's a very, very good turf surface. It's not. We're not looking at loose ground or, or soft ground. It's um, it's a um, uh, a really high class um, turf surface. The going will be um, on the quick side of good. Most horses will absolutely love it. It's a case of. It's just a case of whether they're able to show the same level of form as they can on dirt. Um, with different actions and, and different uh, running styles, um, horses don't always show an equal level of form. Um, but if you don't try, you don't find out. Absolutely. Absolutely. All horses are heading down to post now. I think that is all of them from the parade ring behind us now onto the track, heading down to the stalls. Uh, we should be underway in this one, the fifth race of the evening in round about five minutes' time. And I know I said this before, Rory, but this season has absolutely flown by in Riyadh, hasn't it? You've been here throughout most of it, actually. And what are the real standout moments for you throughout the season? Oh, that's a, that's a uh, tricky one. Obviously, we weren't here for the... Um... Uh, for the Saudi Derby and, and that meeting, but the uh, the day that we had the um, uh, the custodian of the two holy mosques, a really huge race day, and the atmosphere here was um, uh, was different level. Um, it would have been as as big locally as the Saudi Derby itself, um, and it was a real honour and a privilege to be there for that. I can imagine that was a really spectacular time indeed. And of course, it's such a spectacular setting as well. It's such an imposing grandstand. Everything is just so immaculate, immaculately cared for as well, isn't it, Rory? When we see those overhead shots, you said to me earlier, that looks really pretty. It does. And it's, it's the same with Taif as well. Taif, you know, um, you're, the first thing that really um, uh, catches there, obviously, it's, it's, a little, it's a slightly smaller track. There's no, there's no turf. Um, but the, um, the way the track is maintained and the way, you know, with the... Um, the planting of flowers and, and uh, shrubs uh, in the uh, inside of the track, and there's you know nothing is left to chance. When you consider that, you know, 
Riyadh isn't a terribly pretty city, it has to be said. It's, um, it's really good to come here and see something that really does um, take the eye and, and make you appreciate um, the beauty of it. Absolutely, yeah, it's a really impressive, impressive venue indeed. We've been very lucky to be here throughout the course of the season, and I'm sure, Rory, that you're looking forward to uh, Taif when this is all done with as well, after a bit of a break, when you'll uh, head back to the UK and then you'll be dying for some better weather again. Indeed, yes, yeah, and then, uh, well, we'll, we'll, we'll see whether uh, a trip to Taif is in the offing in, uh, in July, but... Indeed, we indeed. Plenty of racing to get through here tonight, though. Uh, this is race five of 12. We are racing through the night, uh, a Ramadan special here in Riyadh. So we are sticking uh, with the racing until 2 a.m. local time. So I do hope that you will stick with us as well, wherever you are watching in the world. And of course, uh, we had a fantastic week last week. We had Super Saturday last week, but then this week has been special in its own way as well. We've had some really unexpected winners throughout this week, uh, Thursday in particular. Particular, we had some unexpected winners. Uh, I don't think any of the favourites came in, did they? Uh, very few. I mean, we, we, had a, we had a couple of real, you know, if you give me 15 picks, I wouldn't have picked two of the winners. Um, so it was one of those days where, um, you, know, two, you know, two of the least likely horses uh, popped up. That's, you know, you kind of expect that at the end of the year with those sort of maiden races and uh, low grade contests that we get on a Thursday here. Um, not so much today, although again, towards the end of the card, it could be tricky enough as well. Absolutely, yes. Uh, they tend to say the best till last here uh, towards the end of the card. So, like I said, we have plenty more still to look forward to here at the King Abdulaziz racetrack. Uh, number three, Adal, making her turf debut, looks pretty relaxed down by the stalls. Uh, they all look pretty relaxed, on, uh, to be fair, don't they, Rory? We haven't had too many pag paddock negatives no, it's, this week. It's interesting that on the Thursday, actually, we, had, we probably had quite a lot of negatives um, at the post. A lot of horses getting, getting strangely warm and we thought maybe it was because the, it was a, a complete change of time, a complete change of routine for the horses and it's putting some of them off and yet yesterday no signs of that at all, barely a horse um, breaking a sweat at all um, and um, again you know the results all made perfect sense, the horses were largely well behaved, the one or two who, uh, who disgraced themselves were horses who disgraced themselves before so <laughs> it was all pretty much as you'd expect. Yeah, it was interesting to see those horses getting quite, quite warm on Thursday. Even before they'd, even before they'd actually got onto the track, there were a couple who were when they had just unloaded and they were walking kind of around the track with their handlers. Some of them looking really warm as well. So that was certainly interesting, but it doesn't seem to have been a problem that's prevailed here. Um, but we're all used to the time change now. We're all used to the late nights here in Riyadh. Well, I think that it looks like all the horses now are down by the stalls. They should shortly be loading, which means that it is time to head over to our commentator Alex Fussy. Thank you guys. Yeah, it won't be too far away, will we? Here from our uh, fifth race, and it's circling behind the stalls. And uh, as Rebecca says, that loading up process is imminent. It means we can take a check on the international betting before they get sent away. Bumptina is the 11 to 10 favourite. Hasn't been much change, I must say here. At 13 to 8, Ibn Hadbam. 15 to 2, Warad Al Jude has drifted a little bit. There's been a bit of support uh, for one that Rory liked, actually, had Al Gamam. It was given a little mention from him in terms of uh, perhaps she could get involved uh, from an each way perspective. And she's down to 8 to 1 from 10. So had Al Gamam uh, could be a filly to follow here, jumping out of stall 4. Fanar is 11 to 1, and then it's 28s and bigger than the rest. So you'd be surprised uh, to see any of those further down the list. Uh, get involved. Don't forget Shamila liked Fanar at the 10 horse in terms of appearances in the parade ring. There's Ad Al Gamam who's just gone forwards and now Nashia goes in. Motazawi is forwards as well. Warad Al Jude goes up to the gates. Ibn Hadban is there. That'll be Fanar. Forwards into 10. Two back. Mumtina is up, and half Albertin is in as well. That's it, ready. They're off. Underway for the fifth. They go 2,100 for this local bread open. Dropping back to the tail of the field is Motazawi at the early stages. Good beginning by Warad Al Jude, zooming off to the lead. The blue colours and white cap has gone on by a couple of lengths here as they work their way to the opening left-handed turf nashia 
is racing in second, the yellow and black. Another two or three lengths away to the next pair. Motta Lahem and Hafs Albertine are racing in third and fourth positions. Behind them is uh, Adal on the inside. Cheap pieces and nose band for that runner. Races there in advance of Ibn Hadban, who's right in midfield. Fanar is wider out. Is around the outside now of half Albertin as they're all uh, stacking up a bit in behind, with the exception of uh, Motazawi, who continues to be a long old last. Back end of the field, Alma Wataza got lots of work to do at this stage. Also, Mamtina is uh, nearer last than first, but would have every chance because there's only five or six lengths between the main group. Working then towards the end of the back straight. Up on the way at rails, it's Warad al who shows to an advantage of about half a length with 800 to go. Adal in second place. Between rivals now, Ibn Hadbar is making that move. Here he comes. Ibn Hadbar into second. Back on the inside, Had al Gabam is running on a bit. And now Mumtina from the tail of the field is starting to circle rivals to close in. Top of the home straight. Have they let this leader get too far clear? Warad al Jude is away by four or five. Ibn Hadban and Had al Gamam are now set down into the drive to close. Mumtina is still down the middle of the track, but it's Warad al Jude just needing the line a bit now. Two lengths the lead. Had al Gamam switches back to the inner, but Warad al Jude is drifting there. Had al Gamam tries to get through, but the leader did get clear and has won. Warad al Jude has beaten Had al Gamam. Mumtina followed them next. Warad al Jude, the seven horses won here, has managed to hold on. Legs were getting a bit like jelly, weren't they, late on with Had al Gamam? The filly switching back to the rail with a bit of a rattle. But the distance that had been gained at the top of the home straight and out of the back straight was enough for Warad al Jude, who's gone on to win here in a time of 2.11.45. Wins by half a length over Had al Gamam in second. Very good run from Rory's each way play. And Mumtina finished in third there, and Ibn Hadban in fourth place. Dramatic closing stages, but the seven, the pacemaker, did get away from them, and it proved decisive. It's seven, four, nine, eleven. Our finishing order in race five.
Hazard Al Jude held on for a good win. And this is a horse, Rory, that you had a question mark over pre-race. Yeah, well, certainly on this season's form, he was he was um, very close to top rated. Um, he came here with a with a, an official rating of 90. Um, based on his excellent season last year when he won twice, including that uh, valuable uh, Suleiman Al Hassan award. But in three runs this season, he's finished 11th, 17th, and 12th, and he's not been particularly deep. He, had, he came back, missed Tyfe, came back in meeting 65, was disappointing, then had a break, um, was off until meeting 104. Now, the Australians will tell you ah, you see, this is his third run back from a break. Moderate run, moderate run, not fit, finally fit after, after two runs and strikes and yeah he's definitely found last season's form he got the run of things um, but he was back to form and he was entitled to to win this um, with the run of the race if you will watch this again and we'll see that there's no excuse for Ibn Hadban um, had al has run well as suggested um, Montina has got an awful ride um, has gone round the height you, you can't go 10 horses wide on the turf track and hope to win it's the inner track it's sharper than the the dirt and what we'll do, we'll, we'll focus on the winner to a degree, but he got the run of things and bounced back to form. So there's, there's nothing terribly interesting about his run. He got himself to the front and ran really well. The horse to watch in terms of the hard luck story is the, uh, the favourite, the grey horse. Um, you'll see immediately um, showing pace to get to the bend, uh, Warad al Jude, and then has, has, um, has slowed things down a little bit in front. So he got the run of things. Um, but there's been no attempt from... Um, um, from Ali Al Matib on the grey to save any ground at all. Um, he's come out of stall, stall um, nine and he's stayed uh, wide on the track. He's now um, fallen back to the close to the rear of the field. He's three off the rail at this stage. Now, if he wants to drop back and then sort of find room towards the inside, make ground into the space we see between behind the front four, that's fair enough. But when he makes ground, he makes ground very very wide there's only one horse wider on the track than him at this stage and as we go into the next bend he then makes a move into the bend which means that he's wider still um you see him now moving towards the, the very outside of the track and literally there are eight horses between him and the rail um and he's making a move at this stage as well which which force which loses him momentum because he's he's making his ground um wide and being forced wider. It's okay to go wide in the track and then cut in on the bend and make a move like that. You're cutting towards the bend, but he never does. And again, after making this move, he still finds himself well back in the field because if you rush up on the outside of horses and they're all taking the bend together, you're the one who's going to lose ground. So he's now 10 lengths off the leader, despite having made an effort earlier. He's going to have to come widest of all again for the second time in the race. He comes into the straight now. Um, and he, he comes wide of those runners in front of him and finishes well, um, but he's just been given too much to do. Um, he doesn't, if he had a, you know, a turn of foot like Shergar, he might have got there, but he's just running on at the one pace. The leader who's done plenty of work in front begins to uh, to weaken um, about a, a furlong out, but he's got enough to hold on. You see Montana there in the middle of the track, flashing home uh, the grey, but you can't give a horse um, 12 lengths like this while also losing ground and expect to pull them back in in the straight. And that was a, um, an, an example after Abdullah Alofi showed you exactly how to ride this track in the previous race. That's an example of how not to ride the track here. Well, actually, as we look at the horses coming into the finish, we've got a bit of a delay to clear this result, to con confirm the first and second, uh, because there is a dispute between the, these yeah, two. Yeah, you'll, you'll see the winner drifts across to the reel, and we've got um, Had al trying to come up um, that reel with a run. I don't think... Um, hopefully we'll see the head on and see how close they get. Words were exchanged between the jockeys, but I think all that's happened is that uh, the winner as he tired has, has drifted towards the runner-up. I don't think he's ever interfered with them, made contact or even intimidated him. Um, but we'll wait for the stewards' inquiry and see what they, what they think of that. I say him, her, the, uh, the mayor had al Um Maybe we're seeing a rerun now, focusing on the, uh, on the winner, Warad al Jude. Um, he initially drifts off the reel under pressure. He's, he's under a left-hand drive, and it's not unusual for horses to drift away from the whip. Uh, the whip then gets switched because he's drifted, and of course, the, what all horses will do in that scenario is just drift back to where they've come from. The question is whether the, whether the horse in second um, was ever cost any momentum by that. And it's possible a little, but I don't think, I don't think so. But the stewards will make their, make their minds. Here's the... Here's the head on. Now this, this, will, this will give us more of an idea. Um, we'll see, he, he moves across a fair bit. Initially he's moved across 
and to our left, his right under a left-hand drive from his jockey. Um, the jockey now um, switches his whip to the other hand, um, and as a result, the horse then drifts back the other way. Um, Had Algamam is going for a run up the inside. There's still a big gap there. Um, she has to cut across the rail. She's not be able to go straight. Um, she has to go to the rail with her run. Is she stopped in her run here is the question the stewards will, will try to ask. Um, she's certainly forced towards the rail, um, and that will have cost her a little bit of grime, but she doesn't, she doesn't touch the rail. Um, the winner comes off the rail again in the end. I think, my, think reading, my reading of this is that's not enough to, to change the result, but it wouldn't have taken more than a, you know, a couple of millimetres more and you would have had a different result altogether. Well, we had a similar scenario last Saturday, the final race of the night, where there was a bit of bumping in the running as well, and that didn't look like too much and the result was overturned. Well, yeah, I went back and I looked at the replay of that. We don't get a terrific view of the final race when we're outside here. Uh, what happened in that scenario was that the interference didn't look terrible, the winner, the winner's then gone clear, but the runner-up, who was hampered, ended up finishing very strongly and has only been beaten the neck um, and was gaining at the line and was in front a couple of strides after the line. In this scenario, um, uh, Had Algamam has never come past, never really looked quite like getting past. She was getting close, but uh, again, the, the, the stewards here have their own set of guidelines, but in the UK, the guidelines will always say, you know, would the horse have won? Um, in, you know, was, there, was there evidence that the horse was going to get past? And it's really only those scenarios where the horse gets back in front after the line that the stewards seem to, to um, rule in their favour. Um, and if the, uh, if the stewards have a similar guidelines here, and I'm not sure they do, um, that's probably how they see it. But we will keep you up to date with that because obviously um, there will be plenty of people who would be interested in the, uh, yes, in the results absolutely. of the Yes, absolutely, yes. Uh, news on that as we get it. Uh, the runners for the next race are in the parade ring behind us. Uh, things are not stopping here. Uh, we will continue, but we'll bring you uh, the Race 5 confirmation as and when we get it. Yeah, um, just, just to clarify on that, it's actually an objection from the jockey rather than, a, rather than an immediate steward's inquiry. And you can see from the, res from the reaction of the rider there, um, it was, it's uh, Nawaf al Mudiani. Uh, he clearly was unhappy with what happened and he's objected to the stewards. So um, that's, um, that, there's two ways of, uh, of results being looked at. Either the stewards spot something and look at it themselves or the jockey calls a file. Well, we'll keep you updated with that, but let's head across to Alex Fussy, who's going to talk us through all the runners in the next. Well, thank you, guys. Yes, I certainly will. Interesting to see how that uh, all unfolds, isn't it, with race five with the uh, protest there. Right, here we go. This is an open turf race over 2,100. Number one is New Pursuit at the Mount of Abdullah Alawfi. Two, Volt Away. Amudiani's on board for Jerkins. Number three, Step by Step. Uh, that'll be the Mount of Mohanad Al Nasser. 14, Al Khatib for Waswanas. Uh, five, Year of the Dragon, Turkey Alofi. Six, Rajasthan, Mohammed Al Yami. Seven is Tath Beat for Luis Morales with eight Rubio Draco Nafal and Azi. A nine is Every Day Ayad Al Turisi with ten Takin. Eleven is Prefontaine. Uh, ran uh, pretty poorly last time, only eleventh the meeting 106. A number 12 Star Cat fired Al Faredi. Thirteen is Cliffs of Fury and will carry the same ownership and the colours as of the 14, uh, which is Emirates currency uh, for Khalid Al. Uh, we've got no reserves getting their chance again here, so 14 of them are standing their ground. And Starcat is the international favourite here at 2-1. to one. Bolt away, currently second in, in fact, in company uh, with Tath Beat. They're both fives. Six is then for Cliffs of Fury. Eight, New Pursuit. And Prefontaine is the other one in single figures at 9-1. to one. Looks quite uh, open beyond this favourite in terms of of the international betting as we head back to Rebecca and Rory. I believe they have news of uh, the protest in race five. Very many thanks to you, Alex. Well, the result for race five stands no change to that result. And I think that Shamila has already picked out her paddock pick for us. So let's head down there now to join her. Thank you very much, Rebecca. I'm very glad to hear from Alex Fussy that my selection in this race is actually the international favorite. 
course number 12, Starcat, who will be ridden by Fahad al Faradi, is my pick of this race. Um, I haven't had much um, luck with these turf races. They're throwing up some pretty weird results. However, I really like the look of Starcat. He is a seven-year-old gelding by Lope de Vega. Really a stunning individual. And um, I'm waiting for Fahad al Faradi to have a winner today. And I think it's coming. The horse is rated 100, so it definitely has a good chance. Now, I do also like horse number 13 at Cliffs of Fury. It was a huge toss-up between the two horses, definitely, but Starcat has my pick. Thank you very much, Shamila. Starcat number 12 has caught her eye. Uh, let's start from the top of the runners. New Pursuit, Rory, is horse number one last seen two weeks ago. Uh, yes, um, another with a chance of scoring in these uh, famous Almondale colours. Um, was running in the North America Cup last time out, so it's easy enough to forgive that 10th place. Um, was previously a fast finishing fourth to Badr in the Lucid to Wake Cup over 1,800 metres. Um, all his wins have come at seven furlongs and a mile, and he's stepping up to mile two and a half here. But lots, he's, he's turf bred, like a European pedigree. Lots of his siblings have won at a mile and a half, and indeed, um, he is a half brother uh, to a horse who won the Cesarowicz and the Ascot Stakes at Royal Ascot. So. I should say two and a half miles on that evidence. I'm being by New Bay. I think New Pursuit will actually improve for this trip. Got a rating of 101 as well. I think um, from stall one, which is maybe not wildly important here. I think he's got a big, big chance. Highest rated in this race anyway. Uh, bolt away for Jimmy Jerkins uh, is uh, the next one. Yeah, listen, he's an interesting horse on his old form, Bolt away. He won. Um, he was a very progressive handicapper on the flat in the colours of uh, Prince Khalid Abdullah in the UK in 2021. He won uh, four times um, and his, uh, his rating went up to, he went up to the mid 90s. Um, and uh, he then switched here. He hasn't, um, he hasn't done quite so well here of late. Uh, 14 runs in, um, in Saudi Arabia and this season they've been largely disappointing. Sorry, I say it. Say his rating was in the 90s, 102 actually, he, um, he rose to, I think in his first season here, he's rated 102. Um, he was three, three lengths third to Zoran Zoran in a 2,000 metre open and meeting 69. Um, that's, I don't think we've seen Zoran Zoran since, but that's good form. The winner rated north of 100, um, but he was um, only eighth to humour maker last time out over 2,000 metres on the dirt. Obviously the switch to turf could really suit him, um, given that he's got lots of good turf form in the UK. but. I just wonder whether he's quite the horse that he was. He's not as reliable as he used to be, and um, Jimmy Jerkins will, um, will be hoping um, that he can recover his form on this surface. Absolutely. Uh, let's head on to step by step, then very disappointing in meeting 95. Smart performer a few years ago in France. Um, he's won over a mile and three and a mile and four. We see him in picture, actually, and he's a lovely looker as well, step by step. I thought that switching to turf would do him good, and indeed he ran quite well two starts ago when runner-up over course and distance, um, beaten by Bismillah Alea, but he was left for dead by that horse. And Bismillah Alea, the winner of that race, I think he'd run 33 or 34 times in his career before that, never on turf, and he bolted up on that race, leaving step-by-step um, -step for dead. Step-by-step -step then stepped up into the uh, Prince Khaled Abdullah Cup, which was a trial for the... Um, uh, for the Neon Turf next time out, and he was bitterly disappointing, finishing 14th. Um, so I don't know what to make of him at the moment. I think he probably wants about two miles round here. Um, he's lost a lot of his early speed, and indeed his, his turf winning form was over a mile and a half on soft ground. Well, we can look at the horse that you like now, Rory. This is New Pursuit. Yeah, this is New Pursuit, finishing well to be fourth to Badr. Badr finishes well himself. He's a horse in the yellow colours and the white face. And also with the white face and the noseband, you see New Pursuit from a from a difficult position, finishing off really well to be fourth in the very valuable Lucid to Wake Cup. This was Saudi Derby um, weekend, so one of the big races there. Um, an international, um, I think it was an international jockey's race as well. But uh, Badr won it nicely, but um, I thought that New Pursuit did really well running on. He's up and trip here. That's a mile contest. Uh, sorry, it was a mile and a furlong. I think the extra furlong and a half will really suit New Pursuit. He's not been tried at it, but I am absolutely certain it's going to suit him down to the ground. You heard it here first. Well, this is Cliffs of Fury. Yeah, Cliffs of Fury in second place as they turn for home in this race. Um, he, did, uh, he was always handy and he's run on well to win this um, course and distance contest. Um, that he had um, Prefontaine, Hessel Woods, and Trevoli behind him that day. You see a Hesselwood in the pink colours and the blue cap, Trevoli on the inside, 
uh, with the blue cap and it's uh, Prefontaine who runs on really well to be second also runs in this race. He was a bit disappointing mixed time out um, but he's a horse you can never really rule out. Thank you very much for that Rory. Uh, well we've got quite a few runners still to get through before we uh, before we get this race gets underway in about four minutes time uh, we've still got quite a lot to mention which ones have really caught your eye um well i'm not massively interested well uh I, I can rule out rajasthan um and what he's done recently he was okay in the uk but hasn't shown much since he left um john and theory gosden i'd rule out rubio draco i'd rule out uh, takin um and i'd obviously we get three reserves at the bottom but the others are worth a mention so let's see if we can rattle through um a few of those Absolutely. Uh, Year of the Dragon in that case. Yeah, it was a course and distance winner in January, meeting 93, beating Emirates Currency into third. Um, he was behind Humor Maker, well behind Humor Maker last time out. His two runs since that have been very disappointing. He was 10th over this course and distance in the Prince Khaled Abdullah Cup, uh, behind Starcat on, this, on that occasion. Um, and I think, although he's won over course and distance, I think he's probably held here. Let's talk about Starcat, number 12, Shamila's pick. Yes. Yeah, Starcat's very much worth a mention. Two of his three local wins have come over this course and distance. He was an excellent fourth to, to Grocer Jack in the Prince Khaled Abdullah Cup in meeting 95. Um, uh, he's been in the Neom Turf next time when he was 10th. That's, that's one of the, that's the toughest turf contest of the year here um, in Riyadh. Um, and then he was in a JCSA challenge over 1800 metres last time out. His fourth in that um, Prince Khaled Abdullah Cup I think is the best piece of form and offer. Um, he's not brilliantly drawn in stall 12, um, but hopefully Fahad Alpha Rady can, can stop him uh, having to go wide throughout. And he's got a big chance if he gets a, a clear route through. And he's got Cliffs of Fury on his outside. He does. And we saw Cliffs of Fury. And obviously Cliffs of Fury beat Prefonti and Hesselwood and Trevoli in that contest two starts ago. Um, he was then... Uh, he came from, from Stoll 10. He's not on Stoll, Stoll 13, which makes life tougher for him today. Um, He's, he's a useful enough sort here. I, I think he's got uh, place claims again, Cliffs of Fury. He wants to be handy, and that's so being a stall 13 is a little bit tricky because you've got to cross over a few horses and you might find one or two too good. Emirates Currency is also uh, worth a mention here. He was third um, to um, Year of the Dragon over course and distance in January. Was back to his very best when beating Milwaukee three quarters of a length and a not to 90 local jockeys challenge here last time out. I think he can overturn the form with the Year of the Dragon, but he's probably, again, being a stall 14, he's probably find two or three of these a little bit too strong for him. Um, who else? Well, Prefontaine, we've mentioned, uh, he was only beaten in the neck by Cliffs of Fury last time out, um, but was well behind Emirates Currency over the course and distance of meeting 106. And I think Emirates Currency, we just mentioned, I think he's um, maybe the more solid of that pair. I think this is going to be a really competitive race, Rory. I'm really looking forward to it. And uh, you've made a fantastically compelling case for New Pursuit horse number one. Well, they are loading, so let's join our commentator, Alex Fussy, down at the start. Rebecca, thank you. Yes, we are going forwards. Every day has just gone up into the starting stool. Star Cat, seven to four before they get sent away here. Five to one, Bolt away. Five's also Tath Beat. 13 to 2, Cliffs of Fury, New Pursuit at 7 to 1, and 10s and bigger the rest. Cliffs of Fury just into the stalls. Distinguishing yellow cap for Emirates Currency here if you're following the 14 in the run. There goes Prefontaine. Up to stall 11. Looking for a sixth career win. Star Cat comes up for Fired Alfaredi. And two to go. Al Khatib and Taft B to the final pair. Here goes Taft B then with a little push in. We're set. They're off. Gates crash back here for the open over 2,100 meters. Decent start made by step by step with a white gap. Also, Year of the Dragon was away well, but they're all going to be passed by Taqueen, who gets on over. That will go to the lead by two lengths. Year of the Dragon is in second. Step by step next in the field, racing in third on the inside of Rajasthan, who's in fourth place. New Pursuit is following. Down to the inside running route is being tracked through uh, by the likes of Tath Beat, also deeper Emirates Currency, racing around the outside of Cliffs of Fury. 
Back down the field at this point for Bolt away. Red and white colours, not got too many behind. Prefontaine is well out the back end. Also uh, towards the tail is Al Khatib. Last couple of runners include Every Day and Rubio Draco. Down the back straight they go. 1,200 metre point they have just passed. And the pace continues to be a contested pace now with De Queen joined by Year of the Dragon. Step by step is just in behind them. They are really starting to stack up here. On the outside is Rajasthan. Also there wider is uh, Emirates Currency racing around the outsides of the black and white of Tathbeat. And also right there is Cliffs of Fury. They're all together, the black and white colours. Back to the insider's new pursuit. The green jacket is followed by Bolt away. From the tail end of the field, one or two starting to try and weave through. Al Khatib is in that bracket. On the swing to the top of the home run. And Year of the Dragon has committed. Year of the Dragon off the turn by two. Step by step is in second. Down to the inner, New Pursuit is following. Then we have Cliffs of Fury and Bolt Away, who still try to dive through the red jacket. But Year of the Dragon is still roaring with 100 metres to go. Is away by three lengths here. Over Bolt Away and New Pursuit. Then to the outside is step by step. Year of the Dragon, a length and a half. Bolt Away is closing, but not in time. Year of the Dragon. Lifts off here in the open to beat into second. Bolt away. Uh, down the outside of those uh, was step by step as well. But Year of the Dragon is an impressive winner with another handy ride by Turkey Alofi. He got away from them on the turn. Beats Bolt away into second. New pursuit across the line in third. And fourth position uh, to step by step, I reckon. It is uh, 2.09.51, the winner's time. Beating off Bolt away, and new pursuit is Tathbeat, who's got fourth. But look at this, right on the line there for fourth. Look at that, it's a nose between them. Very uh, on much on the bob. And there's uh, Starcat in behind them. Starcat, who didn't really get involved at all, was always towards the outside and off the pace. So the order in the open race six is first number five, Year of the Dragon, Beating off the two bolt away, one new pursuit in third, and confirming seven taff beat. Head down at the line and snatched fourth money.
was a fantastic ride, wasn't it, Rory? Uh, from Turkey Lofi on Year of the Dragon, really impressive. Yeah, we don't see rides like this very often, mainly because it doesn't work on the uh, on the dirt track, um, and six furlongs is too short to be doing it on the uh, on the turf. Um, but you've seen that uh, Turkey Lofi go hard to the front on Year of the Dragon, and then he slowed things down uh, before they came into the uh, the final turn. He's got the runners stacked up behind him. And then when they've done that, he's kicked on again. I wonder if he was on. I saw this. I saw this happen once on the dirt this season. A horse called Freshwater Cliffs, who's uh, who's been disappointing since you've seen him in the last two mm. weeks. But he won well in a in a uh, an eighteen hundred meter uh, dirt contest, doing the same thing. Um, slowed it down. Uh, they all all the stayers stacked up behind him, and then he's kicked off the bends and um, done them for two. Uh, and that's uh, that's the winning of the race here uh, on Year of the Dragon. He was a winner. He's clearly. Uh, has a liking for track and trip, but he was well beaten last time out when unable to dominate. Um, and this is the way to do it. If you end up going too fast in front, you will get run down late. Um, you've got to be able to save a little bit. And you either just try to go that little bit slower throughout, or you go fast to begin with and slow down so you can fill up, knowing that the riders are expecting to come past you late in the day, so they don't come, they don't come past you at that point. Um, they're still being held up waiting for a run. So you can fill your horse up and then kick on again, and that gives you an advantage, and that's exactly what Turkey's done here. As I said, the, the, the dirt, track, dirt tracks generally don't um, lend themselves to those tactics, but turf does, and you'll see the best riders doing that on a, on a semi-regular basis. And This was a, um, was a sound ride by Turkey Alofi. He didn't, he, didn't, um, he didn't panic when he didn't get to the front. Um, he wanted to be handy, but he's taken along for a long way by the, the rank outsider, Takin. And he's happy just to sit outside. He doesn't want to track Takin because he thinks Takin's going to weaken. So he just ends up sitting um, two horses off the rails, waits for the horse in front just to show signs of weakening, and then he'll get himself there. Once he gets in control of the race, then he, he uh, plays cat and mice. And he's done it really well. For a young jockey as well, I think Turkey Luffy's only um, 18 or 19. I thought this was um, a very mature ride. Really smart ride from him, really impressive stuff. Uh, a word on the second place horse, Jimmy Jerkins runner, Bolt Away. An improvement since last time, Ash. Much, Yeah, much, much better than he's been showing of late, um, Bolt Away. Just lost his way for a while. Again, he's, he's not a dirt horse, um, really. His, he was a progressive handicapper as a three-year-old um, on turf in the UK, but that's going back three years now, and he's just sort of lost his way a little bit in the meantime. Uh, not bad. He's still got, there's still you know good runs in there, um, but he has he hasn't been progressing as expected, and he's a, he's fallen down the ratings a little bit this season. Um, but in um, in a race of this nature, he's bounced back. He would have preferred this to have been an end-to-end -end gallop all the way, to be honest. But he's um, he's stuck on very well uh, in the finish to, to come second. A new pursuit as well, who who um, I quite liked as. Um, has shown his stamina for this trip by, uh, by finishing third. Um, step by step, he's the turf specialist, but he does look a bit slow with this trip. He always gets himself in a good spot and then just, um, he doesn't fade really, he just can't find any speed at the end of his races and just plugs away. Um, if we ended up having some kind of massive downpour um, on a race day when they were on the turf, that might just suit um, step by step, but it's asking an awful lot, isn't it? Indeed, yes. And New Pursuit, do you think that was a disappointing run? Um, no, uh, bear in mind this was, I was hoping he would win, but bear in mind this was his first attempt um, at, the, um, at the trip and his first um, run on the, uh, the turf here as well. Um, he's shaped very well. Uh, he's another one who really would have wanted this to have been an end-to-end -end gallop. He also just got caught briefly behind step-by-step -step when he wanted to come with his run, so he had a switch about a furlong out. It didn't cost him an awful lot, but it, it's... Um, it might just have cost him second, but he's not faded out of it. He's kept on very well, and I would still be hopeful with him. And he's a horse, he's a horse I'd love to see given an opportunity at a, at a staying trip, given how many of his relatives have done well at a mile and a half and beyond. He's one to put in the book then. Yeah. Yeah, I'd still, still be positive about New Pursuit. Absolutely, yes. A great race anyway. Really really enjoying these turf contests anyway. It's a nice change of pace from, uh, from what we see on the dirt. Uh, that is the halfway point in our card this evening. Six races down and six more still to come. Uh, lots of excitement still ahead here at the King Abdulaziz racetrack. The runners are in the paddock behind our studio, ready to uh, get going for the next one, uh, race number seven. Uh, this is a Saudi-bred Phillies and Colts. 
uh, open race and we've dropped down in trip to 1800 meters we'll shortly be joining our commentator alex fussy who's going to give us a run through of all the runners in this next one give us an overview of which horses we'll be looking out for uh, as we reach this halfway stage we're still looking at the replays from this last race and it really was a very well timed ride from turkey lofi wasn't it it was, and we're getting to see the, uh, the full treatment in, in slow-mo as it's um, no doubt being analysed by our, our colleagues in the, uh, uh, the Arabian Channel there. But yeah, a lovely ride from Turkey Alofi. He's, he's undeniably a jockey to keep on side, and this is the thing we've seen here in, in Saudi Arabia, that the young jockeys are really, really talented. Um, you know, you've got the likes of, of Naif al Anazi, who's, um, who's established, um, but the likes of Turkey Alofi and, and um, uh, one or two others are, are stars of the future. Absolutely, and I'm sure that his uh, trainer is absolutely delighted with him as well. And we can head down to Shamila, who's got a word with the winning trainer. I am joined by Sami Al Harabia. After that sixth race, Year of the Dragon has won. Are you happy with that result? Yes, my friend, this, uh, this horse, very good horse, uh, good uh, run for grass. Uh, this uh, season, uh, won uh, three times. Last season, uh, last year, uh, won two, two days. Uh, this horse, I think, uh, better for grass, good for finish season uh, for win, alhamdulillah. A lot of your horses this season have been doing very good in the grass races. Very good horse. Uh, two, uh, this uh, this uh, season, two time uh, win, easy for uh, grass. I think, inshallah, this horse very good, horse clean, horse uh, good. Uh, inshallah, next year, inshallah, uh, I think, inshallah, more uh, uh, win. Thank you so much, Sammy. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Alex Fussy, our brilliant commentator, will take you through the runners and riders of race number seven. Thank you ever so much, Shamila. Yes, let's take a look at them here then. 0 to 70 handicap. And back off the turf now, aren't we? We're back to the dirt here. Number one is Oral, uh, Ryan Alubade. Number two, Abo Hamra, Jimmy Carrion. Three is Misyav, uh, looking for win number three in the uh, career. Al Musa rides. Number four is Kebab. Uh, in decent enough form before last time out. It was poor last time. Uh, five, Walad Um Aldawi. Well, not to say that in too much of a hurry. Winner at meeting 83. Number six is Rashika Ali Al Mimoni. Uh, seven, Batua Abdullah Al Credits. Number eight is Tayal Al Clear. And that's uh, Norweth Al Mudian. Number nine is Hudhuri Sultan Al Mimoni. Ten, Mota Kem Jockey Change. Abdullah Al Saidi now rides. 11, Al Hayawi, uh, that is uh, Youssef Al Bakawi. Number 12 is Ain Al Yaqeen, Ayad Al Turisi. 13, Wad Al Bandari, Thurb Al Timyat. 14 is Najmat Al Shaib, Mohammed Al Nasser. 15, Lay Ayun Maram, Khalid Al Mimoni. 16, Al Apatit, Naif Al Anazi. Uh, the final one on that page. We continue. 17 is Dante, Abdullah Al Hussein. 18 is Latin for Turkey, Alofi. Uh, 19, Almetin, Rayan Alteration. 20, Motamasek uh, completes the field, but gets the inside draw is in stall number one. Now, this looks pretty open to me, and the market is somewhat agreeing. Oral is the favourite here, uh, the one horse available at three to one. Uh, Kebab follows them in at fives. Wood Albandari at sevens, with Alapatit available at eight to one. And they go tens and upwards the rest. Open for me. I wonder if the guys have got a, a strong fancy here. We go back to Rebecca and Rory. Many thanks to you, Alex. Let's find out then. Rory, we've just seen Arrol, the uh, horse number one, the favourite for this, uh, just passing our studio behind us. She, I really like this horse. She's she's really small, but she's so effective. She is, and she she showed her best uh, her best form last time out. Um, the daughter of Frozen Power. She won a not a seventy. Um, handicap over one mile last week by three and a half lengths. Uh, so she's quite impressive in the end. We'll get to see footage of that uh, too. She does, she is up and trip here. She's in a um, similar contest, but she does, the, the interesting thing with this is if she was entered for this race last week, if she didn't run last week and was entered for this, she wouldn't get into this. She wouldn't be good enough officially because it's so tight. So with a rating of 68, which she had last week, Amazingly, the, the top, uh, the next 13 are all rated 70. 
She's rated 68, but she's got a seven pound penalty. So she's actually giving five pounds away to the other runners. Um, but had she been entered without that win, then a rating of 68 wouldn't have got her in the race. But she was impressive. I think that is improved form and she's got a chance. Slight question mark over the longer trip suiting her as well. Um, stole 12. Um, neither here nor there, I think, in the, in the grand scheme of things. But it won't be easy for her following up. I think the biggest issue for her is, is carrying that weight. 64 and a half kilos is a big, big weight. More than, it's more than horses are asked to carry in any other race. Um, but obviously the, the, the conditions of a handicap are that you get your original weight and then if, you, if you've won and you get a penalty, you just have that on top. So it takes her above what would normally be the top weight of 62 kilos. Interesting as well to see how much that win from last week took out of her as well because it was just last week that she was here on this track as well. Uh, Abu Hamra, horse number two, is also recently run here. Yes, I uh, ran last week and finished sixth. It, it hasn't run too badly in his last couple of starts, but the bottom line is he's won one from 21. That win came exactly two years ago on this day um, and uh, in a one-mile maiden, uh, quite possibly on this card, who knows? But um, the cards do change over time. But yeah, that, that was his only win and it came two years ago. He's been running respectably, but he's not the easiest to fancy from a win perspective. I can't believe, Rory, you didn't do a deep enough dive into your research to find out if that was the exact same card. Well, that's, it's, never, it's difficult to find that out, isn't no, excuses, it, really? excuses, excuses. I couldn't find out what day of the week it was. You're right, you're right. <laughs> Next time. Uh, Miss Yaf is horse number three. We haven't seen uh, since meeting 10. Yeah, um, was off, finished third on his final start um, uh, last season. Was then off until uh, meeting 10, which would be, what, July, I suppose? Um, and it's then gone missing again. Was finished last on that occasion, coming off a long layoff. Hard to fancy on that on that evidence. Um, his last win came in October 2020 as well, so I think he's an unlikely winner, but we saw a horse with a similar profile bolt up the other day. We did, absolutely. An 11-year-old coming off a two-year layoff, so anything can happen. Uh, kebab number four is uh, five to one. Yeah, not the, um, not the absolute star of the uh, Prince Faisal stable. Very well-bred, though, by Frozen Power, out of a mare called Hellenistic from a very good family, but hasn't quite lived up to expectations. Did win a seven for a long maiden here in meeting 79. Um, but was well behind Mahalik over six furlongs last time out. Um, was six to Wadahi um, over seven furlongs, two starts back. So a little disappointing those two runs. Now steps up and trip and down slightly in class and that, uh, that gives some hope that Kebab will bounce back, but I think he's got a little bit to prove. Well, let's head down to the paddock now, shall we? And join Shamila. Shamila, who's the paddock pick for this race? Thank you very much indeed, Rebecca. My paddock selection goes the way of horse number 19, Almetin, who will be ridden by Rayan Altarish. was first last time out at meeting 100, and he um, looks really good here in the parade ring. It took me a while to try and find my paddock selection for this race. I kept umming and ahhing, and I couldn't quite put my finger on it, but it has landed on horse number 19. Jumps out of stall number six as well, so really not a bad stall draw for him. Rayan Altarish is a great man to have on board as well. So hopefully, hopefully everything should fall into place and go the the way of horse number 19, my paddock selection for race number seven. Um, I also like the look of horse number 13, Wad Al Bandari, one of the highest rated horses in the race at 70. She is a four year old filly, but horse number 19 just did something for me and hopefully um, it can get the job done for me in this seventh race of the evening. Lovely stuff. Thank you very much, Shamila. Uh, Rory, let's have a word on Walad Um Aldawawi, number five. Uh, yes, uh, Walad Um Al Dawahi um, comes here on the back of uh, a couple of disappointing efforts, uh, but was a neck winner of a maiden here in meeting 83. Um, has been in, I suppose, been in tough races since a not to 82 starts back over a mile and a half, which um, he probably didn't stay, and in an open race last time out. Let's have a look then at Aural Horse number one, the favourite for this contest. Yeah, this is Aural in winning form. She's. Um, uh, third coming off the bend in this one mile handicap last week. It's a not a 70 contest like this is. Um, she pounces at this point and goes on, goes on well to win by um, three and a half lengths at the line. This is the run of the mill handicap, um, but she was quite impressive with the way she pulled away. I thought she was going to win by a length snugly, um, but she's ended up uh, paring away and, and doing that in, in nice style. Whether she's up to carrying a seven pound penalty so quickly afterwards, especially over the longer trip, is, is up for debate. But she is at least going the right way at the right time. There are no signs that she's had a, a hard race. She's, um, 
she seems in, in uh, perfectly good order on the way to post and she seems on good terms with herself. Absolutely, she does indeed. Looking lovely. Uh, let's get to the rest of the runners then. We'll skip from number forward from number six. Let's look at number seven, Batua. Yeah, Batua was um, eight and three quarter length seventh to Daydan in a 2,000 metre not to 75 last time out. Needs a bit more to figure, but obviously it's dropping from not to 75 to not to, not to 70, so it's a slightly easier task. Um, has a chance, but didn't particularly light my fire. Uh, we have uh, Taylor Te Alkia. Does uh, this horse light your fire, Rory? Um, not particularly, no. Was beaten 16 lengths with 9th of 20 to Motafarid in a course and distance non winners of three last time out. That's a tougher race than this. Um, but you don't need to make too many excuses. Was 16th um, on his previous start and filled the same spot on meeting 99. So um, a lot more um, moderate runs than, than good ones. The last one wasn't terrible um, in comparison, but I think others are more likely. And what about number 10, Motokem? Um, Motokem is. He looks a bit hard to train. He's had gaps between his races. Um, of late. He's only had two runs this season, had an absence, had one run before another break prior to that. So not the easiest to train, but at least he's, he's been able to, to um, put three runs together, assuming he, he lines up here. Um, and you often hear people say that horses who've had their training problems, it's the third time back after an absence, if they're able to, to stand their racing, that they're liable to show the form. So he's been ninth and tenth. Um, ninth behind Taj Neom in a seven furlong open last time I've beaten 14 lengths. That form doesn't give him a great chance, but it may well be that he's needed two runs, um, having been hard to train. We have Ain Alia Queen, who uh, was disappointing at last time out after a penultimate time out win. Yeah, it was a seven furlong open winner in, in um, uh, meeting 97, um, beating Ferreira Alanea by a neck. That's not, that's not especially strong form, I have to say and then was beaten 21 lengths behind Rustam Basha in the JCSA Cup. That was a big step up in class. So it's, we're seeing that with a lot of horses. That they're winning a maiden, which you think, well, that's not really good enough to win this, but if you build on that next time, I'll give you a chance. And they're often asked, the task they have next time is too tough. A lot of people are happy to, to throw maiden winners into big races, and Aina al Yakin wasn't good enough for that. Um, this is a longer trip as well. So it wouldn't, be, it wouldn't be the biggest shock ever to see him win, but again, I'm not, I'm finding it hard to, to make a strong case for him. Let's have a word on Wad Al-Bandari, number 13, and number 19, al Metin, the two that Shamila said looked well in the paddock. Yeah, Wad Al-Bandari was um, a five and a half length winner of a course and distance maiden back in meeting 94. Um, was uh, well beaten next time, but back to form, went three and a half lengths second to Aral here last time out. Um, that was a good run. Uh, we know that uh, Wad Al-Bandari stays the trip, so I would give uh, her a decent chance and uh, she'd be reasonably high on my shortlist. Any of the rest of the runners deserve a mention, Rory, before we get down to the start? Uh, Naj uh, Najmat al Sheikh was forced to fire out in a not to 70 over course and distance two starts back. Clearly, that would give um, him, her a chance, rather, but she's well behind Aral over a mile last week. Uh, Le Oyun Maram um, has only had two runs since December 2022 and looks hard to train. Um, Ala Petit's hard to fancy, Dante's hard to fancy. Uh, Latin's hard to fancy, Motomastic is hard to fancy, but Al Metin, uh, we should mention, was um, having his second start after a break when taking a seven, seven for a maiden last time out by a length and a half from Assad. Um, he's unexposed, um, he's had 14 runs, but reasonably unexposed in races like this. Needs to prove his stamina for 1800 metres, but more interesting than, than plenty around him. Yes, absolutely. Some very interesting prospects in this, our seventh race on the card. Uh, Rory, who are you picking for this one? I'm going to go for Wad Al-Bandari to reverse form with Aural back at this trip. Well, we'll see how that one gets on. That's number 13. Horses are loading, so let's join Alex Fussy down at the start. Many thanks, uh, Rebecca. Yes, runners are going forwards, as you can see. There is the 20-in shot, which is uh, Mota Masek, and that's the yellow cap on board the 20 because it's the same ownership as the uh, six horse Rashika. So just uh, bear that in mind if you're a follower of uh, Mota Masek. And there's the red cap, which is on uh, Latin as well, distinguishing red cap. That'll be the eight horse, Tayal Al Kir coming up. Moves forwards to stall number eight as well, has actually been drawn in the same position as the number cloth. Order continues to be the International favourite at three to one. Kebab, eleven to two. Wad Al Bandari also eleven to two. Ala Petit at fifteen to two. Najmat Al Shabe at nine to one, and it's elevens 
and bigger for the rest of the field. There is Miss Yaff. Had a, quite a long old break, haven't uh, he, since we last saw him run. Just moved forwards, Motakem into 14. Next up is Hodhari. Sultan Al Mimoni, still number three. Just needs straightening, and that uh, works the trick. Not too many more left. Motomasek is now coming up. Looks as though still two still to be filled, which is Abo Hamra, who goes in there. Also, Kebab is in. Look at Misyaf. Could well be the last. There is Misyaf. Like misbehaving at the moment. Going for a reverse here. Getting quite warm as well. Frothing at the mouth. Warm down the neck for Miss Yav. Who is closer to the stalls. And more hands now coming behind. Currently available at 20 to 1. In the international markets. Plenty of hands. But it is working the trick. Miss Yav has gone in. Standing by. Track clears. They're off. They're racing away over 1,800 in this local bred handicap, 0 to 70 the grade. Down on the inside, Motta Marsek, the grey, uh, got an average start, not particularly quick to get going. A good start, though, made by the light blue colours of uh, Wood Albari. Uwabal Bandari and Alapatita now coming over with a Motta Kem also right there. So getting through the first couple of hundred and moving past all, it's Ala Petit and Nefal Anazi striding on. Motokem is in second position. Rashika and uh, Al Metin are in that next wave. They race in company with uh, the likes of uh, Ala uh, with Najmat Al Shabe. Wider out on the course now, Latin is improving. Red Cap is around rivals, is around the outside of Al Metin. Back on the inside is Kebab, the red jacket is stalking through a one or two horses. Hodhuri is just preceding that runner. Now on the turn here, Motakem is just ahead now. Motakem leads up from Rashika. Plenty of those stacked in behind looking for a bit of a gap though. Alapatit is dropping back, Almetin is still in there pitching. On the turn in then, will they get past Motakem? Still to be travelling in hand here as they level on in. Rashika for second place. Oro now around the outside is being asked for more here. Trying to get to the leading two. Hod Hari follows then with Almet in next. Also, Leoyun Maram down the outside is a big close of the black jacket. Heading with 200 to go. All out now. Motakem ahead, but finding more. Two lengths the lead. Motakem keeps on rolling. Over Oral and Leoyun Maram and to the line here. Motakem still shows by a length and has scored. Beats into second, Leoyun Maram. That runner followed by Oral and Rashika. The victory for Motakem. Number 10 on your card. Goes on to win here. Jockey change as well. Abdullah Al Saidi has had a winner. He's done very well. His recent form has been bang average, but he's beaten off Lei Oyun Maram, who was the uh, runner also coming into this on the back of a, a poor effort and a bit of a break. So upsets here, that's for sure. Oral was eventually in third, and Rashika another head away in fourth position. There we have it there. Number 10 is your winner of race 7, 10, 15, 1 and 6. The order across the line.
Well, Marta Kem is the winner of our seventh race here in Riyadh. It was really interesting, Rory, looking at those uh, results, that the first two finishers uh, have had really big gaps in their racing. Yeah, they've not, they've not been racing an awful lot uh, recently. We touched on, on Marta Kem. He's, um, he's very likely raced here for, for a nature old. Um, he didn't make his reappearance this season until meeting 96. And he had one run um, in the middle of last season um, before a break. So I'll see if I can I'll dig out his, um, his full form lines. But there is this theory uh, with horses uh, running in, in races like this who, are, who have to be given breaks between races that um, while some horses can be got fit first time out, um, with a lot of them, you want to back them second time off a break or indeed third time off a break. And for horses, maybe it's been very hard to train and, very, and therefore hard to get fit. Uh, it's always a positive if they're able to run three times fairly quickly um, because you know, his previous efforts suggest that he's, he's developed minor problems. So he's had three runs since meeting 96. He was well beaten um, uh, last time. I don't, you know, he wasn't disgraced, he's beaten 14 lengths. It's not like he was tailed off. 14 lengths by Taj Neom in a seven furlong contest up to a trip that he stays today um, with the benefit of two runs. He's simply come back to his, his best form. Clearly he was handicapped. I mean, he was, strictly speaking, top rated, wasn't he? Because there were so many horses rated 70 here and he would have been higher than this um, in the past. If I dig in here, and if you can, uh, if you can um, Stand I don't know, by. hum a tune or something to, uh, <laughs> to keep everyone yourselves. happy. Uh, I want um, to ask you about the second base finisher who you said was hard to train as well. Yeah, and again, when I say hard to train, it's guesswork if you don't know anything about them. Clearly, if you've, if you've got inside information about why horses are off and stuff like that, you can make more informed choices. And we heard, we heard a trainer yesterday saying this horse has been ready to go for ages. There wasn't a suitable race. And yesterday's race was the, uh, the race that they chose as the result. And therefore, we thought this isn't, this isn't liable to be fit at the end of the season. But there were reasons to think it was. When you see horses who, who have a, one or two runs and then go missing and then come back again and have a run and go missing again, that suggests that no one, no one plans to go horse one run down the field and then give it three months off. Um, so the reason that they've got those absences usually because they come back charred up or they get sore shins or they get sore feet or uh, there are lots of uh, training problems that they can have and, and things that are exacerbated by a run. Um, and the, a trainer's job is a frustrating one. We expect these horses to turn out you know, every couple of weeks and run their races, but the, the job of actually keeping them fit is a lot harder. Um, just l running through the race again, as we should with the, with the replay on here, uh, you'll see that Motokem was always in the front rank, always pretty much um, leading after the early front runner um, uh, dropped away. That was, um, if I can find my page, um, and I... Uh, um, who was it? It was Ala Petit who'd gone forward earlier on and that showed speed and then dropped away so that allowed uh, our winner to get to the front then after a few furlongs. He's been given a canny ride um, by, uh, by Ahmed um, Al Saidi. Having a second win of the night is worth uh, pointing that out. He won our opening race and was immediately booked for this afterwards. I'm guessing that Mohamed Saeed who was due to ride and wasn't available and uh, the trainer thought well I'll see who wins the first race and I'll offer him the ride, and that's smart uh, a smart choice because you've got a jockey riding with a lot of confidence. He's, he's uh, ridden him in front, but he hasn't, he hasn't asked him for a big effort until about a furlong or so from home. So they're, they're sort of queuing up to challenge him, but you could see that he was still in hand, um, and he was just waiting and biding his time before asking the horse to stretch, and Modicam did stretch, um, and has run out a, a cosy enough winner. It just closed down very late in the day. Again, the issue with horses at this sort of level is, you know, when they're travelling well, the temptation is, is to ask them to go on three furlongs out and very few of these horses are able to sustain sustain their top speed for for more than more than a furlong or so they're, they're, they're generally short runners and you've got to um you've got to ride them accordingly but it's nice to see motokem come back to form um as i said he's, he's not had an awful lot of racing here for one of his age he was uh, rated 86 back in the day he missed a long long time he didn't race in season uh, going by the uh, the um Arabian calendar. He was um, a dual winner in, in uh, season 1440. Um, he then only ran once in season 1441, not seen in uh, to last season or the season before. So he was coming back from a long, long break, went 10th in meeting 96, and he's had to gradually build up his fitness. So if you thought he retained his old ability, um, he looked very well enough 70, but most horses with his profile you know, their problems will get the better of them. So this is a very good training performance and congratulations to Connections for keeping the faith with them. Absolutely, yes. And I just want to ask you about Aral, the uh, third place 
a horse, the favourite ahead of this race. She did ever so well, I thought, and perhaps if she hadn't been carrying such a heavy weight, she would have... Yeah, absolutely, it's as simple as that. She's on exactly the same race she did last time. She's come round uh, into a challenging position off the home bend, and she's just having to give um, five pounds away to the, uh, to the, the um, second and the... Um, sorry, to the winner and the third. And the second, rather, I'll get the I'll get my uh, my numbers right at some stage, and that's that's just been the difference. She's not a big filly, and she was carrying 64 and a half kilos. That's a stopping weight, and she's run an absolute cracker at least as well as she ran last week. And again, another who's an absolute credit to Connections. I think she did absolutely brilliantly, Arrol, in third. Well, let's head to Alex Fussy ahead of race number eight. Yes, thanks, Rebecca. On we go. We continue next with a. Open race over 1,800 metres. We've got a big old field again, haven't we? Uh, we've got 19 of them going this time. And number one will be Minbaria. That's the mount of Abdullah Al Hussein. Two is Dazman for Ali Al Mimoni. Three is Sonic Ayad Al Turisi with four Sukut uh, Rayan Al Taresh. Number five is Lazerdi. That's a jockey change. Rakan Al Obeid rides. Number six, Sultan Road, that's Ahmed al Matib, And seven is Burkan, Fahad al Faradi. At the bottom of that list, number eight, World Without End, Khalid al Mimoni. Over we go. The next one will be number nine, Sam Tuwait, looking for a, a first win at the 14th time of asking. And number 10, Manawek, the mount of uh, Al Saidi. We just saw uh, his talents on show. 11, Desert Jewel, Thurb al Timyat. Uh, the 12 is now a non-runner. The 12 is out, late scratching. 13, Ali Waji, uh, Norway Al Madiani, with 14, Al Kasi, Abdullah Al Credis. 15 is Samu, and that's another jockey change. That's now Fawas Wanas. Number 16 is Al Sharik, Hamza Sad, with 17, Damis, Mohammed Al Yami. Number 18, Salfa, Osil Al Sharani. 19 is Alaham. Uh, that's uh, Asil Al Sharani and 20 Al Diwan rounds out the field, looking to get his head in front at the fourth attempt. No reserves getting in here. The 12 are late scratching, and the jockey changes on numbers 5 and 15. Uh, that's where we stand in terms of our next slice of action here, uh, with runners already in the parade ring. So we better hot foot it back to Rebecca and Rory. Indeed, thank you, Alex. We'll catch up with you very shortly. Uh, this is horse number five. We'll start with Min Barrier, though, first of all, Rory. Yeah, listen, a lot of horses in this race um, that are difficult to fancy. But, let's just, um, well, we're two off in about eight minutes' time, so let's just go through the ones. Okay, who... well, Min Barrier gets a, gets a mention. Two and a half lengths second to Shayik in a course and distance non winners of three um, in meeting 86. Largely out of her depth since in tough races, this is a lot easier. Her form figures in uh, her last couple of starts are not particularly impressive, but she's got place claims here in a race lacking depth. Uh, Dazman uh, was in action just a couple of weeks ago and a couple of weeks before that as well. Yes, uh, actually, I think last um, last Friday and the and the, uh, the week before that. So Dazman, difficult to fancy on form, as is Sonic. So we'll come back to Sukut when we're done with uh, Shamila. OK, well, speaking of Shamila, let's head down to the paddock and join her there now. Thank you very much indeed, Rebecca. It is the eighth race that is coming up here now for us. And I've been looking forward to this race all day for one horse in particular, and this is it. Horse number seven, Burkan, for the FMQ Stables. Highest rated in the race at 90, Fahad al Faradi is on board. Eighth last time at a meeting, 109. But um, other than that, he's been super consistent all season. A three-year-old called by Audible and FMQ Stables have been doing really well in recent times as well. So hopefully they can end their season in a good way with another winner and um, with Fahad al Faradi on board as well. So um, he was my paddock selection long before I saw the horses in the parade ring. And um, when I saw the horse in the parade ring, he just made my dreams come true. He looks like a dream. And I'm so happy that I get to say that horse number eight for FMQ Stables is my paddock selection for this race. Thank you very much, Shamila. I love those colors, uh, the tin foil. Silks. Uh, let's ha have a look at the rest of the runners then, shall we, Rory? I think we're going to be looking at uh, Damis and Alaham, 17 and 19 shortly. Uh, that is Alaham. 
I think we'll be looking at some previous race footage from these two shortly, but uh, let's just have a word on both of these runners, shall we? 17 and 19. Uh, yes, um, Damis was back to his best uh, when third, uh, sorry, when three lengths second to Mashur in that one mile JCSA auction uh, contest last time out. Um, he did, he has run over this trip, but his best form, we discussed this at the time, I think his best form is at, at a mile um, or shorter. He's bred to be a sprinter. Um, lots of siblings are, are five furlong performers, but Damas clearly stays a mile. Um, and the return to 1800 is a little bit of a question mark, but he's in good form at the moment. He's found his feet. And Alaham, uh, number 19, we'll be seeing as well shortly. So let's just have a word on Alaham's chances. Yeah. This is, uh, we'll, get a, we'll get a look at Damas um, in action. Um, he's, um, he's coming out on the track at the moment on those eye-catching green silks with a gold braid. Uh, and he is running on uh, with Alaham in the same contest. Damas down the outside of the field. Alaham with the nose band. This is over a mile last time out. The grey um, in front is the, uh, the winner in those uh, yellow and red colours. Um, that is Mashur, who'd previously finished fifth in the Saudi um, Derby. So he's a... Um, he has a very good yardstick there. Um, Damas has run really well to be second. The, he came with a run at the same sort of time as Alaham. Um, Alaham outpaced initially before staying on again. Um, I think over the longer trip, Alaham might well come out on top. But as you can see from that footage, there's not an awful lot to choose between the two of them. And what about Sukut, Rory? This is uh, horse number one. Uh, and this is a race from the end of February. Yes, this is, um, this is Sukut coming home strongly um, to win um, last time out. Um, and Sakut's got fairly obvious claims here. Um, this was a filly's maiden um, she was winning two weeks ago, so it's, it's a, a weaker race than the one that we've just seen. But she wins in good style. She comes from a, a fair way back and clears away in the end uh, to beat Hug a Tree. Um, uh, Raza was third. She does need to improve a fair bit on that. Um, the, the second and third are lowly rated. If you take the view that Hugatree improved, then Sakut's effort is, um, is worth marking up. But the handicap has only given her 66 for that, which is a very conservative estimate. I, I'd have thought she'd maybe be 70 or above. But even then, she's meeting horses rated in the mid to high 80s. Uh, and the top rated here is rated 90. So she does have uh, work on her plate. But she's the VT team have picked her out. And the VT team don't often... Don't they never pick, miss. They don't pick too many duds. They don't, absolutely. Trust their judgment. Uh, so that's Sakut horse number four. Let's talk about Sonic number three. We love Sonic, don't we? Yeah, no, I, I, we don't love Sonic in this race, no. Sonic <laughs> is... Um, Sonic did show a lot more than previously when third in meeting 101, having been well beaten on debut. And I thought, oh, maybe Sonic's getting his act together, but he, he um, something when he ran an absolute stinker two weeks ago. Um, and I think he's going to struggle here. Uh, Lazerdi number five... Yeah, another one who'd be better off running in ordinary maidens, as, as she has been. And she, she's been running respectably, but no better than that. And with a rating of 62, she's going to struggle to, to win an open race of this nature. And I think you could probably say the same for Salton Road as well. Salton Road, yeah, exactly. Not from six. Um, rating of 61, move on. And let's move on to Birkin then, shall we? Shamila's pick, number seven. Yeah, Birkin's quite interesting. He ran in the 2000 Guineas um, last time out, or the, the 2000 Championship, as it's called here. Uh, finishing um, eighth behind Al Motahed. Um, that was obviously a really hot race. This is considerably easier. And Burkhan, although he is still a maiden, um, he was second in a strong course and distance maiden and then finished third to Salam Al Kher in the Saudi um, Broadcasting Authority Cup two starts ago. That's a good run, finishing third in a cup race. The Saudi Broadcasting Authority Cup isn't the strongest a cup you will see, but it was a good effort. And you'd like to think that Burkhan would have a, an excellent chance of uh, winning in an open race that only has maybe seven horses with any chance. Let's talk about them then. Yes. One of them is Manakwek, uh, I imagine. Manakwek, yes. Now, he's run in the UK. Um, he ran three times in the UK and got a, 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 a handicap rating of 80 from uh, the UK handicapper. I couldn't quite work out where he came, came up with that because um, I don't think... I thought Manakwek, maybe the handicapper, thought... He, he wasn't showing all he could, but the bare form that he showed really shouldn't have given him a rating higher than 70. He's run twice here. His better uh, run was last time out. It was last week from finishing fourth. Again, I don't think he's run above a, a rating of 70 um, in, in finishing fourth in maiden company. So although he looks to have a decent chance of a mark of 78, he needs to improve on, on what he's shown. He does still have potential, though, so I wouldn't rule him out. 
And what about 13, Ale Waji, who ran here last Thursday, but was disappointing? I'll actually, well, I'll, I'll cut back to Desert Jewel, actually, who's, who doesn't have a rating. Um, this was in training with Godolphin um, uh, as a two-year-old, but never raced. Is well-bred by a fridge out of America called Fairy Lights, um, but was sold on cheaply, 4,500 guineas um, from sent to the sales by Carl Burke. I've never known Carl Burke train for Godolphin, but it was, it was Carl Burke for Godolphin. Um, picked up cheaply by current connections, but actually ran quite well when fifth to Arabian um, Pleasure uh, in a one mile maiden on his second start here, or rather her second start here. I thought there was a bit of promise in that. I would give her a rating, you know, nudging 70 for that, and she might do better still. So I thought she was worth a mention as not being out of it despite a lack of a rating. But has just gone midnight. Uh, this race due off at midnight. We do tend to run to time here in Riyadh. Any others you want to quickly mention before we uh, join Alex? Yeah, I'll give Alawaji a mention. 2,000 metre open winner meeting 99. Um, was third to Yatafel um, in the Abdullah bin Ibrahim Award over course and distance two starts back. And was in, um, in Group 1 company last time, so you can ignore that run. Has a chance here as does who we haven't mentioned, no, nothing else we haven't mentioned really. Samu you can give place claims to, was in that auction race behind, um, uh, what's his name last time out? Uh, Mashur, but was behind Damis, so it's unlikely to turn the tables, but he, he's at least got a reasonable level of form. But I think we've covered all of those with chances now. Fantastic, thank you Rory. Sit back, relax, and let's join Alex Fussy down at the start. Thank you, guys. Comprehensive look across the uh, main protagonists here then ahead of our eighth race. We've got six or seven left to go in. Burkan, the six to four favorite internationally. Abraham, 11 to four. Alawaji, seven to two. Damis at four to one, and it's tens for that quartet. Some to wake coming up. In fact, quite a few come up together. Looks as though Al Sharik is going to be the last one in. Moving up to the stores. Standing by. They're off. Dashing away here over 1800 in this uh, open event. Decent start made by Sonic. Yellow jacket down to the inside. Going to be right up there early. World Without End also. Black colours and white disc. Manoeke is another one right there. Up on the outside of horses, Al Kassai. Red Cap is another one. Just trying to get into the mix, as is Burkad. It's improved quite well. A two from the right as we're looking on now. And he's going to tack on over and bag that rail. So Burkan has got a lovely slot in against the fence. Manawek is in company with Burkan then at the head of affairs. Alawaji is just in behind them. The check jacket is in third position. On their outside is Al Kassai. Also starting to move forwards now is Alaham, who's a bit deeper on the racetrack. Stripe jacket improving around the outside of Samu, who's just being shaken up. In behind the pace still is Sonic, the yellow colours. Just behind those, pushed along now well without end. Also, Salfa is coming off the bridle as they take the swing and work their way inside the final 600. It is Manawek on the inside fence, has the call here over Alawaji in second place. On their outside still, Alaham for third. Back to the running rail. Burkan is coming back into it now. Just sat off the pace on the turn, but is now being wound out for the effort as they dash towards the final 300. Change up top now. It'll be the striped jacket of Alaham who's gone for home. Out in advance of the field by a good five or six lengths. Damis is the closer and close very strongly he does. Damis is screeching home down the outside and has timed it to perfection. Damis got up to beat Alaham in second. Sonic was back in third. And Alderwan was next in the field. Might have just finished fourth. It is Damis, number 17, the winner, with a rare old rattle for Mohammed al -Yami. Good performance by this cult to gain a first career success. And he's finally broken... Uh, that uh, run of a couple of second place efforts timed it well to beat Alaham by length and a quarter. Winner's time is 158. Oh, sorry, 15380. 15380 on the clock. It is Sonic in third place, and uh, Alderwan did take fourth. 
these um, front pair pulling quite a way clear up the home straight. Alaham committed, but collared. 17, 19, 3 and 20. The order in race eight. Great win for Damis, a double as well for the jockey. And Rory, you said there was a question mark over this horse's ability to run this trip. Well, he's, he's run OK this, over the trip before. Listen, I'll, I'll, I'll be blunt here. He's a horse that I've, uh, I've got wrong um, in that he was running at, um, uh, at Thai when I arrived first. And obviously, he's, it's taken him a long time to, to shed his maiden tag. And I was here with Callum, and he was running over seven furlongs and not getting home. And I was saying, I said, oh, what this horse probably needs is a drop to five. And then they said, oh, there are no five furlong races here. So I thought, oh, right, well, that's going to be difficult because all the family are five furlong horses. So he's showing speed in his races, not getting home. And they should be running him over six rather than seven on that basis. And he looked a short runner. But as the season's gone on, he's found his form and he's, he's, he's turned into... Um, the way he runs his races is, is upside down compared to what he was doing early in the season. Early in the season, he was showing speed, not getting home. Now what he does is he's held up and he, he, comes, he runs the same way every time, moves out wide on the straight and comes with a really good turn of foot. So that's, that five furlong speed that he has, he is using as a finishing kick and it's a really powerful finishing kick. Again, when we see the replay here, you'll see he comes from quite a long way back. But that's his style, um, and it's taken obviously it's taken connections a long time to get to know him. We're watching it from the start. He's four from the outside and the green colours. Um, the horse he finishes third, the grey there, um, Sonic. He's a nice looker, Sonic, um, but his um, he only had one half decent run before this. But he's just beginning to get his act together by the looks of it. Um, there's speed up there with uh, World Without End, uh, Hanty, um, Manawek goes up as well. Lots of horses want to get close to the speed. Uh, our eventual runner-up is, is trapped very wide on the track from stall 19, Alaham. Um, uh, oh, we've skipped forward quite a bit uh, all of a sudden, and uh, Alaham kicked clear in the straight, um, but then got run down by, um, 
by Damas with that really good late run. So, and we cut back again. Um, Alahams on the outside in the, sort of, in the dark blue and uh, gold stripes. The blue cap and the, um, I suppose you could call it a gold nose band, can't you? Sort of, because orange wouldn't do it justice, really, would it? I'd go mustard yellow myself. Mustard, yeah, maybe, maybe. Uh, and uh, he travels well at this stage. He's had to go wide, but he's not. He's made his he's made his move on the straight part of the track, which is the, the way to do this, uh, rather than being forced wide into the the turn. So although he has to go four or five wide coming out of it, that's not as not as as desperate as it is going into the turn. It's still not ideal, um, and again he still has to fight for it. But he travels well at this point, and his jockey, I'm sure, is, is thinking, right, I've got this. I've had a quick look behind to see where my old mate Damis is. They've met twice uh, in recent weeks. And Damis, as you see, has come from a long way back in the field, but he'd only just been asked for his effort. But he does show real speed here. Um, and it seems that they've, they've taught him to switch off and then show the speed that he's bred for in the home straight in his races. And it works really well. And I've, I've got a lot of... Um, I've got a lot of admiration for, for Connections here because I genuinely thought this was a horse who wouldn't find his niche on dirt here. And I was thinking, well, I, I joked with Callum about it. What we'd love to do is, is try to, once he doesn't work out in Saudi Arabia, see if we can buy him and take him back to, <laughs> take him back to Britain, uh, send him to Michael Dodds in, uh, in, uh, in uh, Northumberland and get him to, uh, to win a few sprint races in the north of England. But here he is winning at 18, 1,800 metres and finish strong, finishing stronger than anything else in the race. And he really has found his niche. I think you might be needed to ask for a pay rise, Rory, if you've got designs on owning a racehorse. Well, I was hoping he'd be very cheap, in fairness, and I could convince a few people to come in. <laughs> not after that. But that's not going to happen now. No. So, Damis and Alaham, we expected those two to be up at the front, but Sonic in third. What Sonic, happened? well, see, again, I, I said with Sonic last time, we saw, I had a bit of a joke about, about how badly named he was. Um, because <laughs> unlike the supersonic hedgehog, um, Sonic looked very slow on debut. Um, did a bit better second time out without showing an awful lot and then suddenly improved enormously to finish third and meeting 101 and I thought oh Sonic is actually he's maybe just taking time to learn and he's going to take off and I thought he'd run well last time out and he ran a stinker um, but here he is looking an awful lot happier at 1800 meters um, showing the speed to get to the front without um, while still traveling fairly comfortably and also the stamina to see this out as well so there is hope for Sonic he'd have a lot more chance in handicaps because um, uh, it's, it's a pity there isn't racing next week. He'd get into a not to 55 handicap um, with uh, off his uh, current mark as well. But um, they'll have to wait for Tyfe, which also suits Sonic, um, and he's um, he's one to he's one to look forward to at a lowly level. Well, we look forward to seeing him again in a few months' time, little Sonic. Uh, rated 55, you think he'll be bumped up? No. Oh well, yes. Yeah, sorry, he, he probably will go up a little bit for this, um, and obviously he doesn't get a chance to to, to run. Uh, again, you'd have to look at who's, who has finished fourth in the contest and try to, um, try to work out how to, um, how to get a rating for Sonic. You don't want to put that on too much. Was it Yadar who was, who was uh, near was them there? Aldiwan, um, uh, Aldiwan finished was, in fourth in yeah. that one. So, with a rating of 57, so yeah, just so there's about two, there's two of them is, with yeah. ratings in the, in the high 50s, mid to high 50s in behind. So, I think, that, again, the handicap where we'll often take the view at the end of the season that a lot of these horses not really giving the running. The two class sites have come to the, the four, um, and it's a bit of a bun fight. I say the two class sites. Um, of course, um, Zilliar was the one who had the highest rating, but after travelling well into it, he's flattened out very badly. Absolutely, yes. So that was the eighth race on our card this evening. We still have four more to go, though, so don't go anywhere. But of course, this is the final day of the racing season in Riyadh. So time to have a look at how the standings look. We'll start with the Jockeys Championship there. Camilo Ospina uh, quite a way ahead of the rest, Rory. Yeah, I mean, this, this, the, everything's over now. The, uh, the, the, the people on top of the tables are, are the winners of the categories. Camilo Ospina... Uh, knew he was champion jockey a couple of weeks ago. Adele Alfaredi is the um, defending champion and he's, he's um, ridden very well in his pursuit of a second title. Uh, Alec Alex Moreno has been one of those jockeys who is often on fire and can ride, um, can ride three and four timers. When he's hot, he's very hot. When he's cold, he can be a little, uh, a little cold though. Luis Morales has really uh, sprung to life in the last few weeks. Um, he always gets his share of winners. Uh, quite a lot of big races, you see he's got a Group 1 win and two Group 2s. Um, he'd be happy with his haul at the end of the year with uh, 69. And Nafal Anazia had a winner today and he's, he's also had um, 
he's, he's had a couple of big winners in purebred Arabian races. And I think although he's only finished fifth in the table this time around, I think he'll also be happy with how his season has gone. Absolutely, he had a couple of winners yesterday, I think. Let's look then at the trainer's standings. Uh, close for third, look at that. Yeah, very tight. And that one, actually, I suppose, might change yet. Um, Gaith al Gaith, uh, Abdul, uh, Abdul al Bada, and Naif al Mandil there in 44, 43, and 43 um, in the points. But uh, Ahmed Mohammed uh, is our champion trainer, um, the main trainer for the, the White Stable. Saad Mutlak um, has dominated the Pure Bet Arabian races and will hold on to second place in that as well. Been a very good season for the Al Khaledia horses. Um, and just a lot of competition just underneath those. Um, if we go down a little bit further, you'd see a few in the high 30s there. Um, Tamar al Dahani not quite getting in there, but he's been really hot in the, in the last few weeks as well. And we've heard a lot from him after winning races. We have, absolutely. Well, perhaps uh, there will be no surprise then when we look at the owner's standings next. No, um, this was a foregone conclusion from a, a long time ago. Um, Prince Faisal, who's second on the table with 77 points, has been um, a champion owner here on multiple occasions. But uh, the stable of the, the sons of King Abdulaziz, um, essentially, uh, uh, King Abdullah and Abdulaziz, rather, I should say, essentially Prince Miteb's stable has been exceptionally strong in terms of numbers and quality this season. And they've just been farming not, uh, not just maiden races where they've got a tremendous strength and depth, um, but they're also going mob handed into cup races and group races here um, and I've got their, their just rewards. That's going to be an even stronger stable next year and it's, again um, there's very little doubt that uh, the white stable will be dominant for quite a while. Absolutely, they certainly mean business here in Riyadh. Well it is time now for race number nine so let's head across to our commentator Alex Fussy. Lovely, thank you Rebecca. Yeah let's have a look at the field shall we for this ninth over 1800. We've got another field of 20 here. Number one is House of Aviz for Mohammed al -Ghami. Two is Yada, a winner back at meeting 91. Number three is Fonda and al Torej with number four, Harbour, Sultan Al-Mimoni. Five is Zilia, Norwef al Mudiadi will be on board to him, not in some publications. Number six is uh, Saeed, Mohammed al Nasser. Number seven is Safa. Uh, Naif al Nazi is now on board the seven. Here. Number eight, Saw Al Kuwait for Ali Al Mimoni. And nine is Conta. That's going to be Mohammed Al Habib. Number 10 is Returnal, Abdullah Al Lawfi. 11, Lahab. Looking to get uh, his head in front at the fifth try. Number 12 is Hamoud Al Kir, Fahad Al Faradi with 13. Star of Laziz, Khalid Al Mimoni. 14 is Hadlan for Abdullah Al Credis, with 15 Al Yabani, uh, Rakan Al Ubaid. 16 Al Nouri for Aswana. 17 Manea Al Kir for Ayad Al Turisi. 18 is Sayak Al Kir for Thurb Al Timyat, with 19 Al Hermes, uh, that is uh, Al Saidi again on board, and 20 Al Fuz uh, for Al Mutaib. So 20 of them all standing their ground. Now this might be a little puzzle to solve because the international betting has it as five to one the field here. Fonda is the current favorite, number three on your card, uh, five to one. He's been going close quite a few times uh, this campaign. Yadar currently second in at sevens. Well, in fact, there's three of them at seven to one. Hamoud al Kia and Star of Laziz available at sevens. It is then Harbour at 8-1, to one, Nines, Sur Al Kuwait and Conta. I think these international markets says it all, guys, here ahead of race nine. Yeah, indeed it does. Thank you, Alex. Uh, we love a puzzle, don't we, Rory? So let's see if we, we, do. Can, we can crack this one in another big field here for race number nine. Uh, House of Aviz, let's start with him. Yeah, he's, he showed um, decent form. It was placed at Dundalk in his final start for Aidan O'Brien. Um, but it's taken a wee while to acclimatise here. Um, well beaten when expected to go close on his debut. Um, but his best effort here probably last time out went four and a half lengths second to um, Arabian Pleasure in a one-mile maiden last time out. I thought he was plugging, plugging on OK at the end of that, suggesting that a step up to 1800 will suit him. He needs to build on the form that he's shown here, but he arrived here with this sort of rating and um, he's now got a chance to justify it, having had three runs to acclimatise. 
Yadar is horse number two. Yeah, Yadar had one run in the UK when badly needing at Yarmouth in the summer, and he won nicely on debut despite showing a slightly awkward head carriage and meeting 91. He's been well held since, but he's been in really tough races. He was in the Saudi Broadcasting Authorities Cup uh, two starts ago and the 2000 Guineas last time. Um, this longer trip should suit. As a son of Cracksman, he, he should want a mile and a quarter plus. So this is his first run beyond a mile, and that should be a benefit to him. So I can see him improving beyond his current rating, and uh, he's shortlisted as a result. Fonda is the favourite for this one. Yeah, Fonda has, um, was well beaten last time out, but has been in, um, uh, in a pretty tough contest for a while. Um, meeting 106, uh, he was six and a quarter length second to Yatafel in the Abdullah bin Ibrahim Award over course and distance. That's a really good run. Obviously unplaced either side of that, but they were in tougher contests than this. And now uh, dropping into a not too handicap, he should be uh, competitive at the very least. Uh, Haba as well, number four, should be competitive. Was a good third to Yatafel in the same race that Fonder was in um, a couple of starts ago. He was um, three lengths further behind, um, but he's got a pretty, a pretty solid profile and I think he should be thereabouts again. Well, let's see who Shamila thinks will be there or thereabouts. She is down in the paddock for us. Thank you very much, Rebecca. It is half past midnight. This is my paddock selection for our ninth race of the day. Horse number 11, Lahab. Um, bred in the USA, a three-year-old colt by Collected. Third last time out at meeting 109. Will be partnered with Abdulaziz Al Musa, a really good jockey here, and has had, been having a really good season during the Riyadh season as well. So. Um, he isn't the highest rated horse in the race, um, but I just really like the look of him in the parade ring. He comes and he owns the place as well, struts around the parade ring really nicely. So that is what drew me to him. Um, straight away, my eyes landed on horse number 11, Lahab, for my paddock selection of the ninth race. Um, I do also like the look of horse number one, House of Aviz, who is rated 80, second last time at a meeting, 108, and will be jumping at a stall six. But um, I have all my fingers and toes crossed for horse number 11, Lahab. Lovely, thank you very much, Shamila. Uh, let's go back to our runners and riders here. Rory Haber is uh, horse number four. That's where we got up to. Uh, let's yes. have a look. Sorry, Rory, to cut you off there. This is uh, House of Aviz. Yeah, you see House of Aviz uh, in this footage with the white breast girth in the middle of the three at the front there, the orange colours with the, um, uh, the purple braces. He just looks like he's weakening out of things at this stage. Um, and he's clearly had enough of the battle, but the winner looks quite smart. Um, the front three have pulled clear in, in what looked an above average maiden. And while he briefly looked like he was going to drop out of it and maybe get caught for fourth, you see he actually picks up again uh, inside the final uh, 100 yards and uh, regains second place. Maybe he's looking for this longer trip. He certainly looks a little bit lacking in pace, but he's got size and scope about him and he could well do better yet. Uh, let's look now then at Haber. We were just about to talk about this one, Rory, and we can see uh, him in action. Yeah, this is Haber finishing um, third to Yatafel and of course in distance um, Suleiman uh, Al Hassan award last time out. Um, lacks the class of the winner, but that's, there's no shame in that. Yatafel is a very good performer. He stays on well um, to be third. Uh, Fonder is in there as well. Um, he was um, actually Fonda wasn't Fonda has been second to Yatafel in a very similar race, but not this one. I think actually if, it's possible that Fonda was uh, uh, was running against Yatafel in the Ibrahim as the Abdullah bin Ibrahim Award. So very similar contest. They have both chased him home um, at similar sort of distances. So they got they've got a, a similar claim on paper. Absolutely. Well, let's look at Zilyar number five. Yeah, Zilyar has been in the frame in uh, One Mile Maidens, um, but was only fifth to Sawaj last time out. Needs a bit more. And he's fairly handicapped in the best form they've shown, but he's had chances to win Maidens. That's the impression I've got, the son of Run Happy. And he hasn't quite put it to bed yet, so he needs a bit more um, to make the best of his, um, his uh, handicap debut. And I think you could probably say the same for number six, Saeed. Yes, yeah, Saeed was uh, seventh to Sawaj um, in that contest that uh, Zilyar was in last time out. Um, and he was a length be just about a length behind uh, Zilyar on that occasion. So they're pretty closely matched on that form, carrying the same weight here. And there shouldn't be much between them, but the pair of them probably need to step up a little bit to be winning this. Uh, Safa does have a win. Yes, she does, um, and she's been running pretty well. She's only 10th last time out, but that was the Phillies mile, 
and you can certainly um, you can certainly mark that up in terms of you know a tenth place and that is is equal to what she was doing prior to that. Um, she was an eight length fifth uh, behind uh, Snafia over seven furlongs on her previous start. This is easier. She's eased a little bit in class. She's got a chance on the ratings um, if that run in the Phillies mile hasn't taken the edge off her. Uh, let's look at uh, Al Kuwait coming here off a third place finish last time. Yeah, um, the trip is a concern for me. Um, so Al Kuwait ran well when just over a length third to free in a not a 75 handicap over six furlongs last time out. Was behind Moelo over seven furlongs two starts back. Now tackles a mile for the first time. Sorry, not a mile. Tackles 1,800 metres for the first time. I'm far from convinced that the trip will suit, and I think there are plenty of others who make more appeal. And we have Quanta, horse number nine. Um, was fourth behind Humor, uh, sorry, not Humor Maker, Hamoud Al Kair in a not to 80 over 2000 um, last time out. Drops back slightly in trip and has placed claims with a repeat of the last run. Disappointing two runs prior to that, though, so not the most consistent. Uh, we have Ritornell, who was uh, finished in second place last Thursday. I quite like um, Ritornell. Um, she needed the run on her local debut. Um, she ran better when three quarter length second to consoling in a course and distance open last time out. So she's dropping from open company. I know open races can, they're not always the strongest, which has proven over the trip. And she won a mile maiden on the turf for Andy Slattery as well. So we know, not on turf, uh, oh, it might have been a turf actually. Um, I, haven't, I haven't clarified that, but she won over a mile in her time in Ireland for Andy Slattery. So it's not like she doesn't have the experience. She's a, a previous winner. She's had three or four runs for a previous yard before coming here. And I thought she was shipping up well last time. She'd be, um, she would be one I'd want to keep on side in this contest. And are you on side with uh, Lahab, the one that Shamil has picked out for us? Um, was third of 19 behind Al Abani in a 2000 metre maiden. Um, last time out. Prior to that was fourth to Yuffie Cook Alla in a maiden over seven furlongs. That form has worked out pretty well. I'd get, yeah, Lahab has got, has, got, um, has got place claims on that. We know that he stays. Um, I certainly wouldn't want to rule him out. It's a desperately, desperately open contest though. Absolutely is, yeah. Could uh, any number of these could be the potential winner here, Rory? I know you're not sticking your colours to any one mast just yet. I'm going to ask you for, for your selection, of course, the latest that you will have to make. I decision. will indeed, yes. Uh, Humad al what do you think of this one? Uh, Humad al uh, we, we've uh, mentioned him uh, before. He was, um, he was the winner of a race in which um, uh, Contar was a fourth in. That was a not to 80, 2,000 metre handicap, uh, meeting 102. Um, that's uh, a career best for him. Um, he's up in the ratings a little bit for that, but he's certainly going in the right direction. You wouldn't, you wouldn't rule him out here. A star of Laziz, I don't suppose you'll rule him out either. Was a nursery winner in the UK over seven furlongs for Gemma Tutti before being gelded and transferring here. And then he ran a very respectable uh, debut, three and a half lengths, third to Saudi front, over six furlongs in a not 80 last time out. I think the star of Laziz is, is, is one that could be underrated because uh, there's no doubt in my mind that he will stay this trip, um, that the six furlongs was too sharp for him and he was doing his, his best work late. So this trip should suit um, and he might just sort of creep onto the radar because of the, um, the defeat last time out. We've got five or six that we still haven't mentioned, Rory. Which are the standouts there? Uh, the, the next two, uh, the, only, the only two that are interesting are, well, the next, yeah, the next two, I don't really fancy Al Nori that much. Uh, Hadlan had uh, Ali Abani a length of the quarter behind in third, went second to Hamoud Al Kher, um, two starts back over 2,000 metres. Was then beaten a long way in a maiden last time out, which is a little bit off putting. Uh, and Ali Abani um, showed improved form, went third in that race behind Hamoud Al Kher, um, and looks reasonably well treated on that. Obviously, Hadlan has kind of let that form down since. And if you decide that he's the guide to the form, you might just sort of throw the, that. The whole race out altogether, but I thought I thought I would be fairly positive about Al Yabani and Hamoud Al Kher. Um, and Al Nouri um, was beaten in nurseries in the UK before coming here. His best effort was last time out, but I think he needs a fair bit more, or she needs a fair bit more to, to win here. Uh, and my pick, thanks for asking. <laughs> I was uh, just about to. My, I, I think Star of Aziz is interesting at a price, but my pick is Returnell uh, in stall 15. I liked her run last time out. She's got the form in Ireland to make her competitive here, and she's uh, competitively priced. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Rory. Well, horses are loading, so let's join our commentator now, Alex Fussy. Many thanks, both of you. Yes, runners are going forwards. Quite pleased to uh, hear Rory liking the chances of Star of Laziz, because I thought he was a big player as well. So I'll certainly be keeping my eye out 
uh, for number 13 on the card. International betting is still headed up by Fonda at 5-1. to one. Hamoud Alkir at sevens. In fact, this has just changed a little bit because Star of Laziz has uh, dropped into 6-1. to one. And return now, Rory's pick. The punters are following. Available now at 9-1 to one from 11. So both of them are coming for support. There's the blue and white jacket of Ali Abani. Still to go forwards to store number 12. That in picture is Lahab, number 11. Red jacket with the white cross belts. Jamila, like the look of him in the parade ring, has got some fair enough placed form so far this season. Saw Al Kuwait for Ali Al Mimoni. Hadlan there. Abdullah Al Credis, still four. Also, still out the back is uh, Konta, number nine. Don't forget Mohammed Al Habib is now on board him. He's got a wide berth in still 20 to deal with here. We're nearly set for action. Race nine of the evening's cup. All clear now. They're off. Racing away. They jump out over 1,800 metres here in race nine. A starter caught them in a pretty good line on the whole. Decent start here. Saeed in the centre got a good beginning. Also right up there, the FMQ colour, Zilia, the silver jacket, uh, wants to go on and take up front-running duties. So I reckon Zilia will just have it here early on. House of Aviz is also prominent. Nose banded to the inside. Another runner coming through to just push the pace uh, will be Alfuz in the checks. Right in amongst horses as well is Saeed still and also uh, on the outside of rivals Lahab, red and white, starting to circle them. Star of Laziz is just in behind the pace. Quite a good slot there. Racing in advance of Yadar. Sayek Alkir is following. Midfield so slot at this stage for Hamoud Alkir. Back down the field. Haber's got loads on. Hadlands out the back. Also towards the tail end, you've got the likes of Al Nuri and Al Hermes as they go into the turn. Heading back towards home. Saeed is leading the way here. Shows up by about a neck. Over Zilya for second. On the outside of those, Lahab is third. Now, Star of Laziz tries to spy the gap in between rivals. Sayak Alkia is back on the inside. Look at Yadar. Green sleeves and cap traveling well in behind. And it's now going to try and dart through up the running rail. From the back end of the field, Return L is picking up strongly down the center. But the leader skips clear. It is Saeed who still shows the way. Found a good turn of speed there. Inside the 200, away by about six lengths. Return L is into second. Then Zilya and Yadar. But they are not catching Saeed who's won that impressively. Beats Return Al, who got up for second position. Uh, back in third place was Zilia, followed by Yadar, and also Al Yabani, who could be one for the notebook. He uh, closed in late. Win for number six, then, here. An impressive win as well. Off the mark at the uh, sixth attempt here of this three year old. So Aid has won it in a time of 153.74. Wins by four and a half lengths. Beating return now. Good run uh, for Rory's uh, selection. Third place goes to Zilia. And Al Yabani has got fourth just on the line. Has just tipped a uh, Yadar out of that position. The 15 horse, a particular uh, eye catcher with that closing display. Good little finish for the placings, but there was no doubt about the winner. Uh, Saeed was well clear. 6, 10, 5, and 15. The order, race nine.
Well, Syed was a really impressive winner of race number nine. One of your picks, Rory Ritonel, running well in two seconds. That was a great run, wasn't it, from the winner? Yeah, he was a maiden coming into this. He finished seventh and eleventh in his last two starts, um, Syed. Um, but the son of Munnings, he caught the eye in his first couple of starts. You know, he looked like he was going to do really well. Just his progress seemed to stall a little bit um, on his last two starts. But given a chance and a handicap, um, he's taken a, a step forward here. He's he's bred to stay this trip well, uh, being by Munnings. Um, and um, yeah, always handy. He disputed the lead from the outset um, and was led into the straight. And the question was what he was going to find, but he found loads for pressure. And, and bounded away from them uh, to win in, in good style. So, um, yeah, he's, he's a horse I, I struggled to get a handle on beforehand. He was he looked competitive um, at the uh, at the weights, but it did look a very very um, competitive handicap. So I thought this was going to be a bit of a blanket finish, and for uh, Saeed to have won it um, uh, with that much in hand is um, is a good sign. Um, he uh, he was third to Farzal Waya uh, over six furlongs early in the season, looking that, like that was um, too sharp for him. Um, I, just th I thought he would have taken off a little bit before now, um, but this was, um, this was a lot more like it. And he's, um, he's a good looker and lived up to his pedigree uh, belatedly with this uh, win in handicap company. Uh, we see from the start, he broke from uh, stall nine, and you'll see him there in the sort of purple colors with orange, um, uh, armlets, uh, always travelling well with, with the nose band, about six or seven horses off the rail. He's going forward with uh, House of Aviz, who was drawn in stall six at this stage. They dispute the lead. Uh, House of Aviz trying to go up the inside. Uh, Zillar uh, was also handy there from an early stage in the, uh, in the silver colours um, out wide. Um, you see a little bit of uh, pace from one or two of the outsiders uh, as well. A uh, bit of pace from Sayak Alcare there in the, uh, in the brown and orange, uh, orange and white hoops. Uh, with those red blinkers. But the horse who travels best at this stage is the winner. He's lobbing along quite happily, even though he's not got away from his rivals. Uh, House of Aviz comes under pressure on the rail now, and he soon begins to, to backpedal. Um, Zilliard travels OK at this stage. Uh, Lahab out wide is covering a lot of ground. Um, and at this stage, I'm thinking, are they setting it up for a finisher? Uh, maybe that finisher being Yadar, who's in behind with the white blinkers. We knew that he would benefit from a step up and trip and he looks dangerous at this stage but um, still traveling well still showing no signs of stopping side uh, and now he makes a move off the bend and steals a couple of lengths very quickly uh, on Zilliar and basically asks the big question of the others the one who sets out in chase who was probably sitting in eighth or ninth place coming into the bend uh, is Returnell and she's won an absolute stormer to get second She's had to do a lot of work to get into that position. Uh, pulled wide off Lahab in the straight. She's got closest, but she never really got that close to him. And you see the finisher out wide with the white face and the nose band. That is our eventual third, or our fourth brother, Al uh, Yabani, who got fourth on the line. Uh, Zilyar, who we see there in the silver colors and the, and the um, cheek pieces, just fading out of, um, out of contention with the winner, but held on for third. And Yadar, who we mentioned earlier on, is just touched off her fourth on the line. But um, an improved performance from the winner, very much in line with his um, with his pedigree and his looks. You can see that he's a um, he's a very well put together horse, a good mover, um, and he's just you know I thought maybe he was heading to, to be to becoming a little disappointing behind Zillar last time out at the same weights, but has very much turned the tables there on this handicap debut and looks like a horse who can go on to uh, to better. Um, I think he's probably more of a horse for, for this track than he is for, for Tyfe, but it'd be interesting to see what connections want to do with him. Uh, those, um, the real US uh, pedigrees like he has, um, this dirt surface is a bit more akin to what they have mm -hmm. at home. Um, the, the surface at, uh, at Tyfe is very much um, a, a law unto itself, uh, which not everyone likes, but it's, it's a very safe surface and the horses, the trainers like it um, here, so um, I think there's n we're not going to see much of a change with that and certainly the rate of attrition on the on this surface compared to US tracks, for example, which are very fast, um, shows that it's a much safer surface as well. And what about Ritonel? I mean, a really good run for, from her in second. She was second last time out last Thursday, so just nine days ago. Huge improvement on her run from meeting 103 when she was 13. So she's just getting better, isn't she? Yeah, she she just needed the. I mean, she's she's um, she's transferred from Ireland in the autumn. Uh, she's picked up at the autumn uh, horses and training sales needed the uh, the experience first time out obviously it would have been the first time she'd raced on dirt 
So, you know, she obviously would have trained on the surface, but it's a different experience knowing how how to uh, to race on that surface because you you race in a slightly different style than you would do on turf. But she showed plenty of ability for Andy Slattery, who's a trainer. I see a f quite a few horses from his yard are coming across here. I think um, he's been picked out as a kind of trainer who doesn't bottom his horses. You know, he looks after his horses, um, and if you pick them up, they will. You know, you don't tend to pick up horses with problems. You pick up horses who are, who've been brought along gradually and can continue to progress. Um, and that's clearly true of a return, true of Returnell. Um, who's run a cracker here. She, was, she wasn't badly positioned, but there was a gap between the, the, the first group and the stragglers, and she was the one who tried to bridge that. And that's always harder to do than working with a group. So I thought she deserved extra credit for finishing second. Um, but the, first, the winner is clearly, um, was clearly um, better class on the day and is, is really fulfilling its potential now. Yes, absolutely great win there in race number nine. So let's head on to race number 10, and our commentator, Alex Fussy. Lovely, thank you, Rebecca. Yes, we continue on, don't we, to the 10th. We're getting there. Local bred Colts and Geldings maiden, 1,800 metres now up next. We've got uh, 20 going because we've got an absentee. Actually, we've got 19, haven't we? Uh, we'll tell you about that in a moment. Here's number one, uh, Kateb, Mohammed Al Yami. Number two is Skip Moon for Turkey Alofi. And no number three, so the next is the four, Red Host. Uh, that is uh, Fahd Al Sanan. Number five, Mabdana, four was Wanas. Six, Jalmud Wabel, Fahad Al Thoredi. Uh, seven is Kabat, Jimmy Carrion. Eight is uh, Sayar, naught from five so far, his record. Naught from 12 for number nine, Abu Al Hom. And number 10 is uh, Kaseb Al Aiz, Osil Al Shorani. 11, Al Montajeb, Abdullah Al Hussein, with 12. Moktalef Liahia, Mohammed Al Nasser, 13, Al Shihab Al Kaza, Al Farouz will ride for the Algate Stable, 14, Al Jawa Al Safi, Abdullah Al Kridis, 15 is Damak Khalid Al Mimoni, with 16, Ali Krayan Al Toresh, 17, Al Adhid Al Musa will guide him, with the 18, Estokad uh, will now be the mount of Ali Al Mutib. Number 19 is Orda, Rayan Alabade. Uh, the 20 is out. 20 is a late scratching. And that means the only other runner is 21, Abu Salman for Naif al -Anazi. So no 20, but the 21 will be included here uh, for race 10. This maiden over 1,800 metres. Thank you very much, Alex. We'll catch up with you in around about 10 minutes' time. Uh, Rory, for this next race, Quateb is horse number one. Hasn't been seen since meeting 63. No, and didn't figure on my list of likely winners. Um, sixth on, on two starts this season. Has a rating of 51. Um, again, the top rated here is 70. Maybe I should be more forgiving of Kateb, but I was pretty brutal um, putting the, the line through them, and um, uh, I didn't consider his chances here. Have you put a line through Skip Moon, the horse that's no, seen on our screen now? No, absolutely not. Skip Moon is definitely of interest. In fact, it got a couple of stars from me. Okay. Um, I thought uh, best to ignore his latest run, which came in open company. Um, his previous effort was a four-line second to Wakil Alanea in a course and distance maiden, so proven over the trip, uh, largely running well until last time out. Sometimes sticking them in those tough races um, is, a, is a good way to, um, uh, to get them geared up for, um, for that uh, a drop back down and uh, the maiden breaking run next time. So that skip moon was very interesting. Uh, Red host number four, disappointing in meeting number 100. Uh, yes, um, and is, has a rating of 30. Um, and yeah, was a run no sort of race on two previous uh, starts here last season. So Red host is easy to uh, rule out. Uh, Mabdana. Rated a little bit higher, 45. Yeah, 45 is not going to be enough to win this, and, and he's run 16 times without getting his head in front. Did run better last time than he has for a while, but uh, it's only it's only poor stuff. And while he might, I can see something lowly rated um, getting one of the places here. I'd be surprised if uh, Mark Dan is good enough to win. Well, Jarmud Wabel hasn't run enough to even get a rating yet, but what do you make of this horse? Yeah, I, I, I've given him a, um, a performance rating of 65 with a question mark for his run last time out. Um, he was two lengths second to Mr. Mobem in a one mile maiden here last time out, doing his best work late. We'll actually get to see that, uh, that run. Um, Mr. Mobem is rated 69, 
So he's two lengths behind, took four pounds off 69, you get 65, um, with improvement to come. Great maths, Rory. Well done. Uh, let's head down to the paddock then and join Shamila. Thank you very much, Rebecca. Tenth race of the evening that we are about to head into. My paddock selection is horse number 11, Al Monte ridden by Abdullah La Al Hussein, um, a jockey in very good form at the moment and an apprentice jockey to keep your eye on for next season as well. Um, he rides incredibly well and the horse looks really good as well, which is a bonus. So rated 64 is fourth last time out at meeting 105. And I just really love this gelding, a four-year-old by Patriot Act. Um, Another horse that I like is horse number eight, CR, um, who was fifth last time out. But I do have one negative in this contest. I think it's my first negative of the day, actually. And that goes away of horse number seven, just looking um, not so fit, not as fit as the rest of these horses anyway. Thank you very much, Shamila. Yeah, the first negative we've had uh, all day, which is pretty good. Uh, we were talking about Jarmud Wawal. I think we finished there. Let's move on then to Kabat number seven, the one that Shamila says doesn't look fit. Uh, no, 10 length, eighth or 20 behind uh, Al Met and a seven for Al than last time. Looks pretty exposed now. That run was, what, three, four, four actually, it's four weeks ago now, I suppose, meeting 100. Um, and um, it's possible that he's been held up on his work since, if he's looking a little bit. Um, like his carrying condition, but we'll take Shamila's words, word for it and put a line through him. What about Sayar, number eight? Um, was a respectable six legs, fifth of 18 to Kadir in a caution distance maiden last time out. And that was his first run in, in six months, so we can improve. We've seen a horse pick up a race at a big price earlier on who, who had very little racing in the last couple of years, um, but improved for a couple of recent runs to win. So although Sayar has a little bit to find on the ratings, he's lightly raced and he can do a little bit better than a rating of 57. Abba Alhum has uh, shown improvement in his last start. Well, improvement from his previous start, but not, not, um, not any great step forward um, based on his um, official rating of 53. He's had 12 runs now. Um, he's, he's not going to improve past 53, I don't think. Um, and while that gives him a glimmer of a chance of getting in the, in the places, he's not on my, uh, on my list of likely winners. Kaseb Al Aiz has had just the two runs. Yeah, it's been tailed off both times. Uh, Al Monte Jeb has had three runs. Uh, and has been gradually getting better. Al Monte Jeb, two and three quarter lengths, fourth of 19, and a one mile maiden won by Mr. Mobhem last time out. Has got place claims, and that obviously is held by a Jalmud Wabel. And that, but we get a chance to see Al Monte Jeb running in that race in a minute here because this is Jalmud Wabel in short. And uh, if I'm any kind of judge, that means we'll be shortly seeing him in action. And here is the race in question. Um, Mr. Mobhem goes for home here, looking like he's going to win very easily. He ends up only holding on from a couple who finished fast. Jalmud Wobble is one of them we see in the, uh, in the blue colours with the lighter blue sleeves. And he gets going late in the day to, to finish second. But you'll also see um, Al Montajeb uh, finishing fourth there. That's the horse. He was actually disputing the lead off the bend and just weakens late in the day. But you can make a case that if, a multi, if Al Montechev was held onto for longer there, he would have finished closer. So there is very little to choose between Al Montechev and uh, Jalmud Wabel. And uh, both of them are worth considering in this race uh, because, there, as I said, there's not that many you can give a chance to. And those two are definitely two of them. Interesting to see if Jalmud uh Jamud Wabal actually lives up to that potential rating of 65 that you think he deserves. Uh, let's head back to the rest of the runners then. I think we've got as far as uh, number 12, Mokhtalef Leg Lelkiaia. Yeah, um, I have, I'm, I, I could have made that easy for you by saying skip <laughs> on to number 13. Rated 44, um, no real improvement this season, being 13th or worse in four runs. Um, showed a tiny bit on debut, but hasn't gone on from it at all. Let's skip forward then, number 13, Al-Shahab al Kasa. Rated 56, um, hasn't been running too badly of late. Started the season fairly poorly, but the last three runs have been okay. It was five lengths, sixth of 20, and a seven for a long maiden won by Acer al Roya last time out. Um, that would have been one of the weaker maidens um, run here, um, and he will need to improve again. But a, a repetition of the run means he'll be you know, within a few lengths of the, of the placed horses at the very least. So he's, he's worth a mention. al Jawa al Safi is coming off a long break. Uh, yes, um, was really making up the numbers in Thai, finishing last um, on his last two starts there, then finished last again here in meeting 65. So um, although he showed um, 
better, a little bit better form early in his career. Um, he's, he's gone badly the wrong way on those starts and uh, it's impossible to fancy uh, unless he's able to leave that behind uh, for reasons unknown. Uh, Damak, uh, disappointing in his uh, last two starts. Yeah, he does. He, he was placed in meeting 73 in Maiden Company. Um, if he could, if he had built on that, he'd be happy. To, he'd have had a chance, but he seems to have regressed a little bit. And a mark of 49 is probably a fair reflection of his current level of ability. A leak, uh, disappointing as well in the last two starts. Yeah, running a handicap last time. And these handicaps can be tough, it has to be said, but was beaten 44 lengths and a knot to 65 over 2,000 metres last time out. Had shown enough in meeting 66 um, early in the, in the Riyadh season to suggest he would have place claims here. Um, rated 60, but two runs since have been very disappointing. Um, and while you can't rule him out on the ratings, um, he's not the easiest to fancy just on recent evidence. Alad Head, though, is a consistent horse, number 17. Yeah, and he's top rated here as well. Half length second to Aldemir in a 2,000 metre, not to 65, two starts back. And then finished a solid five and a half lengths fifth to Faret in a not to 70 over course and distance last time out. That, that's just a better race than most of these have been running in. Um, more competitive than, than most maiden races. Um, obviously, in maiden races, you can, you know, there might be one horse who's different class, but a lot of them are very ordinary. In these not to 65 and not to 70 handicaps, all the horses tend to be very closely rated. So the fact that Alated has, has um, finished close up um, on his last four starts, um, you know, uh, in Tyfe, then early season here, then off a break, and then those last two runs, all positives, um, very, very hard to kick him out of the frame. Uh, Esther Quad and, and Munnings, we've just had a winner by Munnings in the last race. Indeed, um, so hopefully uh, lightning has strike twice for the sire. He was six in that race we saw, um, we, we did see him in short, um, in vaguely similar colours to the runner-up, finishing sixth to Mr Mobbin, but beaten seven lengths that day, and clearly he's got a bit of work to do with the, the two that finished second and fourth. And number 20 is a non-runner, which means that Abu Salman, 21, gets in. Uh, I'm not sure Abu Salman does get in if, if, Abu, if Abu Safuk was a late scratching. Um, we'll need to, you'll need to double check that. We will um, check that one and But we do, have, know. we do have Orda, who is running, um, but is a debutante um, and is a half-brother to a Colt who was unplaced in his only start here. So not, not too many positives there. Just clarify that, um, that Abu Salman uh, doesn't get into the contest, if you give me a second. Well, the horses are down at the start, circling before they're loaded into the stalls for this. Our 10th race on the card, it is coming up to just before 1 a.m. local time here in Riyadh. The race should be underway at 5 to 1 uh, at just about two minutes' time. Uh, oh, no, sorry. Yeah, he doesn't get in. Sorry, uh, that's, I'm, I'm confused here because um, the late non uh, Abu Safuk was, um, was a late non-runner, wasn't he? Um, but there was a non-runner previously. Nadja Mosker was a non-runner. So um, Abu Salman does get in, but not particularly easy to fancy on two runs uh, to date. Meeting 72 and meeting 76 here when out of the top 10 and is coming off a break again. Apologies uh, for that. I was making an assumption about the late withdrawal, not allowing a, uh, uh, a reserve in, but obviously we'd, we already had a non-runner. Apologies. Well, now that that is cleared up, I think we can head down to the start and join our commentator, Alex Fussy, for this one. Yeah, thanks, uh, guys. Abu Salman is running and is quite well fancied in the international betting. He's down there at eight to one. I was quite surprised to see that uh, prize. Jalmud Wabal, the favorite at nine to four. Alad Head at 130, Amon Tajeb is at 5 to 1, Skip Moon at 6 is 8 then for Abu Salman, and also Al Shihab Al Kaza, and it's 12s and bigger for the rest of the field. Loading up underway, there is Abu Salman who will jump from stall 3. That reserve runner with uh, Al Anazi about to get up into the framework and get on board once the horse is in the gate, which is now. Uh, taking place. Alad Head coming forwards. Not from six so far in his career, but three very good place runs strung together between meetings 39 and 91. Moving on up now is Al Shihab Al Kaysa. Also pushing in Jalmud Wabel. Mahad Al Faradi on board him. Massive step forwards. From start one to two for the international favourite. Final pair now on their way up. 
Moktalef, Legea coming into the stalls, and that's it. All in. Bit of issues in the gates by the look of it here. Tall stall 10, Kaseb Alays. Jockey was briefly off the back. Shahani was on the side, but he's back on board. And he's back off. So perhaps that runner is going to come out of the stools here. Yes, backing out the 10, Kaseb Al Ais. If consenting to come backwards, that is is now rest of the runners are waiting okay there's the 10 horse backed out probably going to be checked over here having been restless looks as though the vet's having a look going to be spun around and trotted up doesn't look um, too many issues to me No, Jockey's getting back on board, so that's fine. Casse Ballet's uh, will run. Very warm. About the only thing to know. Comes up. And is there. Ready, take two. They're off. They're racing away. A very awkward start for Abu Salman, who shifted left. On leaving the starting stools, jumped out of stall three, ended up right against the rail to the inside. A good start, though, made by the seven horse, Kabat, who was right up there, and also Moktalef Leheya, and wider still, Al Shihab Al Kaza wants to come forward to lead the way. The back of the field, we've got uh, trouble here for one of the uh, horses. It looks as though Al Jawar Al Safi, uh, the 14 horse, was being eased off at the back of the pack. It's Al Shihab Al Kaza out in advance of the field here and clear from Moktalef Leheya in second. They're being followed by Abu Al Ham and also Al Adhed is in that leading wave. They've got quite well strung out here. Trying to get through a few rivals is Orda. Got a blue stripe on the jacket. He's coming around the outside to try and get involved. Kabat still there on the inside. Al Montajeb is just behind them, is around the uh, back of Damak as they go into that turn. It will be, though, Al Shab Al Kaza with a narrow advantage. It's about three parts of a length over Al Adhed in second spot. These two race clear of Abba Al Hum on the turn. Back to the inside of Horty still is Moktalaf Leheya. Round the outside, Ordar is the one finishing off with a bit of purpose. Top of the home straight, Al Adhed has got to the lead. This is a very, very well strung out field. Some of them still taking the turn. Al Adhed. Has got clear, though, by two. Where's the closers? What's going to change late? Al Montajeb picking up powerfully now and is coming with Orda, and they move on by here. It's going to be Al Montajeb out in advance and clear by two. Al Montajeb goes on to win it. Beats it a second. Orda, Estacad, who was eventually in third, then followed by Skip Moon and a fading Aladhead. Victory for the 11, Al Montajeb, who's gone on to win here for the uh, Algebra Stable. For the Al Musa team, is off the mark at the fourth time of asking. 155.19 is the time the winner's clocked. Beats Orda by three and a quarter lengths. The newcomer, big effort, good debut run. Estocad there in uh, third position, and a lad head was just in advance of Skip Moon who ran okay in fifth, but a race that got very well stretched out from a very early stage. There was one or two making a bit of an impact inside the final 200, but they were well stretched out up the Riyadh home straight. 11, 19, 18, and 17. Quite a lot of high numbers involved in the finish of race 10.
Well, Al Montajeb takes the win in race number 10 ahead of Order and Esther Quad. And Rory, the top five finishers were all horses that you really quite fancied in this one. Yeah, I got the impression that you, were, you thought I was being a bit uh, bit mean, ruling out <laughs> a, a lot of these um, on form. But I'm, I'm glad that um, we haven't been um, embarrassed by um, a trio of no hopers finishing first, second, and third. Um, Al Montajeb um, was one of the least exposed. This was just his fourth start. Um, and he'd run very well to be um, under three lengths fourth of 19 in a mile maiden won by Mr. Mobham last time out. We saw the footage of that, and I was saying, looking back at it, obviously finished behind uh, Jalmud Wabel, but uh, Al Montajeb was the only horse to have made a race with the winner that day and then faded late on. And you get the impression that um, if um, he was held on to it for a little bit longer, he'd have, he'd have finished closer and probably would have finished ahead of, um, of Jalmud uh, Wabel, who was helped in coming through late from off the pace with another runner making the same sort of run. Um, and we've, um, yeah, I, I think that's, that, that's a decent form. Uh, that was a step up from what he'd done previously. So he's been heading in the right direction. He'd proven that he, um, he looked like he would stay the trip, even though he sort of faded late that day. But that was not so much about a lack of stamina, more about sort of cracking late, having got involved in a battle with a better horse. And um, he's improved again. We'll see the uh, start, a rather messy start. Um, and um, yeah, he was squashed right in the middle of all of them there. Breaking yes, in stall number eleven. Um, we do see um, a couple of them get behind uh, fairly early on here. I think you'll see towards the inside. Um, that is uh, Al Jahar uh, Al Safi at the back of the field. He's being pulled up. Um, he was virtually unrideable. I don't think there's a physical issue as such, but the horse is pulled up then. You also saw um, one of them get, it wasn't uh, in very dark clouds. Oh, I just wonder whether it was Skip Moon who got behind in the early stages. But Skip Moon's finished off very strongly, so I don't think so. Um, but anyway, at this stage, we've got, um, as it, uh, Al Shahab Al Qasir, who's uh, built up a lead. But the, um, the eventual winner isn't too far behind um, at this stage. You see a group of about four or five stalking the leader. He's, yeah, he's in about seventh place, uh, just behind a group who are, um, who are chasing that leader. Um, they've gone fast enough uh, for, the, for the level of competition at this trip. Uh, Aladed moves into a challenging position here and looks the likeliest winner turning for home. But I think it's fair to say that Aladed ends up making his move too soon. He's pulled clear of the chasing pack. He gets past the leader here um, very easily, uh, Al Shahab Al Qasir, and he kicks for home. But he ends up getting swallowed up and finishes out of the frame in the end. So um, although Aladed had shown that he stays this trip before, he simply made his move. Um, at the wrong point of quite a well-run race and he's not seen it out as a result. But he's given them something to, to uh, chase and um, uh, the one who come to chase them down is Al Montage. But you also see Oda um, with the noseband uh, getting out after him as well and Oda stays on to finish second. Um, this was the debut. It's a good effort on debut from Oda. The pedigree was nothing special. It's not a frozen par, a good sire, but there wasn't much to take from that. The only previous sibling to have raced um, and back in uh, back in third was um, Estacad um, who'd run in that race as well had finished sixth in the race won by Mr Mobham last time out so the form of that race has worked out uh, okay on the whole and back and forth was Skip Moon who never got going until very late in the day um, but finished off well to uh, to grab a share of the prize money. And what about Jam Jamud Wobble before this race? You know, you said maybe that he deserved a, a rating of around 65. Based on what you've seen there, what would you say? Well, he hasn't run to it, um, but, of course, but you know, the, the, uh, the logic is still there because Al Montajeb, as we at 64, um, was just behind uh, on that occasion. So um, whatever Al Montajeb was rated, um, uh, Jalmud Wabel would be around the same mark, strictly higher. But as I said, I thought um, I thought Al Montajeb didn't really get the run of things last time out, or you know, did too much in the front end and was better than the bare result. But the pair of them are closely re uh, rated on that run. But these horses don't always give the running every time they, they see the racetrack. And Jal Jalmud Wabel, who was last on his debut, um, his good run came off a, a break last time, um, and he's um, he's been disappointing again here. Um, but he may he may bounce back. But this is this is fairly run of the mill stuff. None of these uh, will be developing into cup horses, I don't think. Although I, I suppose you'd be you'd have to be reasonably positive about Orta, who's done very well in his debut to to get placed, uh, given his lack of experience. Yeah, absolutely. It's a great run from Orta in second. Esther Quad as well. You like this horse before the race to Rory, horse number eighteen. 
Yeah, I mean, he's as I said, he was um, he he was running well enough. He was hailed obviously by by uh, a couple of these uh, from that um, race that um, Mr. Morpen won last time. Uh, Jalmond Wamble was was second. Al Montage was a close fourth, and Estocard was um, was a, a few lengths further back in sixth that day. But it looked a better maiden than this, uh, and that's proven to be the case um, with the uh, the winner improving from fourth in that uh, to run out a ready winner. But I would. Um, I'd make a note maybe of Aladed, who, um, who I think has simply done too much too soon um, here and, and has faded out of the, of the places um, as a result. I think he's finished fifth in the end, but he looked the likely winner for a long way. Thank you very much, Rory, as ever, for such a comprehensive analysis. We will head now to Alex Fussy, who's going to talk us through all the runners and riders for our penultimate race of the night. Thank you, Rebecca. Yes, let's have a look at the field for the 11th. We're up to 2,400 here for a local bred maiden. Number one is Hafid Cheetah. Mohamed El Nasa has uh, been called in for the ride there. Number two, Mashal Najd. Al Mutib riding, not from 18, quite exposed. Uh, Muteta is number three. Abdullah Alawfi with the four horse. Garnuk always, Rayan Alabay. Number five, Alezwa Nora to get her head in front at the third attempt, first run of the season. Number six is a Ouijez Alzari on board. Number seven, Al Shate Aldrak, Forrest Wanas with eight, Waj Al Shams, Nafal Anazi. Number nine is Zircon, Ori Al Sharani with ten, Al Katin, Khalid Al Mimoni. Number eleven, Modhi Al Dorea, Ayad Al Turisi with the twelve, Safa Ruma, Jimmy Carrion. Number 13 is Bishkeek Ali Al Mimoni with 14 Olfa Fahd Al Salan riding that particular filly. Number 15 is next, Hamza Sad with the 16 Al Muj Al Ali. Number 17 is Galeel Al Saidi riding, naught from 30 is his record. Number 18, Hush, naught from 5 and a couple of seconds so far of this season. And number 19, Onyx rounds out the field. Al Hassan is on board. Quite a few exposed ones in this field, haven't we? Nought from 30, nought from 22s. Wonder if uh, either of those will have their uh, day or night, should I say, in the limelight as we go back to Rebecca and Rory. Thank you very much, Alex. Yes, uh, night in the limelight rather than day in the sun at this stage, I think. Uh, let's look at the horses then Rory Hafid cheetah horse number one last seen in meeting 94 but not a bad result for this one no um, best effort probably last time when fifth beaten 11 and a half lengths and an 1800 meter maiden uh, won by Wakil Alanea um, has got a, uh, a squeak on that only rate of 55 but this is a ruby old race um, those with form uh, uh, tend to be uh, hard to win with and plenty unproven over this um, extended mile and a half trip as well so that is a concern for plenty. Masho Najd is horse number two, last seen a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, not from 18 and very rarely in the prize money either. Disappointing last time out. Easy enough to draw a line through his chances. Well, we saw Motta uh, last Thursday. We see this horse uh, quite often. Well, he, he might be worth another, another go. Certainly isn't as good as he's bred to be. Has been a little bit underwhelming so far. Was expected to improve and win a uh, handicap last time out, um, but was well beaten uh, in that 1800 not to 65 contest. Prior to that was uh, a two length third to Kamikaze in a one mile uh, maiden. Um, and if he stays this trip, he's got chances. But I think they're running out of ideas with him. You know, he's, he's not quite fired. He, he, he didn't have the pace to go with him last time out. Maybe the longer trip will help him express himself, but easy enough to have um, some reservations about Motueta. And Garnuk always was disappointing as well, and well, consistently disappointing. Consistently I disappointing is correct. 13th at best this season, and it's uh, uh, almost impossible to see him winning. Aleza Nura has had just the two runs. Yeah, and has had as coming off a um, an absence as well. Was 18th on debut, but improved a little bit to finish seventh to Jumanat Al Reem in a one-mile non-winners of three at Taif. That was back in August 2022, though. So you know. Um, 20 month absence or so uh, has a bit to prove but um, again it's, it's not impossible to come off that kind of layoff and certainly improve from debut last time out. Well, let's head down to the paddock then and join Shamila and Shamila who's your pick for this one? 
penultimate contest of the night and I barely got to have a look at the horses before the bell rang. The jockeys have got up and they are already out onto the track so um, I won't be walking next to my paddock selection. However, horse number nine, Zircon, will be for me. Um, 22 runs to his name and um, I, I had to rub my eyes and um, make sense of it a little bit because I, I was almost sure that Zircon had already won this season so I took that as a sign and he, um, she looks really well here in the parade ring tonight and I think that she is a deserving winner. Jumps out of stall number nine and uh, was only fifth the last time out at meeting 108. Um, she looks stunning here under the floodlights and hopefully she can get her head in front today. Now I do have a paddock negative for you again um, in this contest. Horse number 17 very much on toes. Hopefully it doesn't boil over before the start of the race. Hopefully not. Thank you very much, Shamila. Well, let's talk about Safia Ruma, Rory. This is horse number 12. Yeah, Safia Ruma is a real standout here. He's actually running in different colours. Um, he'll be running, you see him in the yellow cap here, in the sort of bluish colours, running on really strongly late in the day. That was, um, that was a career best by a, a fair way when finishing three-quarter length second to, to Wafi Alais. That was in the, um, uh, the final championship of the race course, um, which is a, um, a valuable prize. Um, it's not always it's not always as well contested as the um, as the grand title suggests, but that was still a big run um, out of Maiden Company. And if Safia Ruma, who's who's racing for New Connections tonight, can back that effort up, then um, he's the standout in this race. We'll keep an eye on him then, number twelve. Now let's get back to the uh, list of runners and riders. Rory, we've got as far as Orjes, number six. Yeah, um, Orjes is quite interesting. His best run to date, coming when five and a quarter lengths third to raid Alwasil over 2,000 metres, two starts back. Um, a little bit below that form last time, but not disgraced, and has given the impression that he's worth a try um, over a mile and a half. And um, Awijaz um, is definitely in a winnable race. And what about Al Shati Al Azraq? Uh, has shown very little to date, has a rating, has a rating of 36, and uh, seems a very unlikely winner after finishing 19th right at the, uh, the start of the season here in Riyadh and being missing since. Waj Al Shams, though, has been seen in the last couple of weeks. Yeah, it was uh, a length behind Onyx when the seven length sixth um, to Kadir in an 1800-meter maiden last time out. Is just is held by Onyx on form, but isn't without a chance on balance. Um, has had plenty of goals, though this is his 16th or her 16th start without getting her head in front. But it's a weak enough race that she might be able to do it. And Zircon, the uh, pick of Shamila, the second highest rated in this race. Yeah, rated 63, um, which gives her a, uh, a decent chance on paper. She was fifth to uh, Ala Duria in a not a 65 handicap over 1800 metres last time out. She's got place claims on, uh, on, on that. And obviously, if, um, if Safir Ruma uh, runs below form, then she'd be very interesting. We do have a couple at the bottom of the card um, who are slightly higher rated as well. We've got to make sure we get down to those. Uh, they're joint highest rated, so I'm, I'm, if there's a couple on 68, I know I should say they, she's the third highest, but I'm going to say second highest because there's a couple of 68s. It's uh, probably that logic doesn't make sense to you, Rory, no, sticking no, with it. No, no, especially as strictly speaking she's fourth, but that's fine because <laughs> there's also a 64 rated horse in the race. Well, look, I told you yesterday that you were pedantic <laughs> and I'm going to say it again. Uh, let's look at those, those higher rated horses then, shall yep. we, because uh, we'll probably be a bit short on time. Let's head then. We've spoken about Safia at Rumour with a rating of 68. And so I'm, let's talk about Hush, also on 68. Yeah, that's, I'm not interested in anything between the pair of them. Uh, Bishkeek, Olfa, Nixt, Almuj, Aleli and Glael. line has gone firmly through the lot of them. But the bottom pair are very interesting, Hush and Onyx. Hush has been runner up twice in one mile maidens this season behind Rams, uh, two starts back. Um, it has a rating of 68, so is right up there at the top of the ratings. Concern for me is the trip um, the best form has come at a mile, um, hasn't looked to be crying out for further, but again, what, what Hush gets is a weaker race, um, and that might just uh, help him travel through it for a long way. Um, so even if he's not necessarily a, a natural mile and a half horse, uh, he might just travel through this on the bridle and, uh, and be there at the finish. Which ones, which are proven over a mile and a half? Or none well, of very, none, none of them truly are. Obviously, none of them have won at the trip. And very few of them have actually tried it. Um, a lot of them have, have raced OK over 2,000 metres. So those who've stayed at 2,000 metres well, I'm giving a, um, uh, 
um, a, a positive to those who haven't raced beyond a mile is always a little bit of a concern for me. Um, Onyx at the bottom uh, was, has been placed over six furlongs and a mile, uh, was fourth um, behind Kadir over 1800 metres last time out. Um, just holds um, Waj Al Shams um, on that form, was in front of that one that day. Clearly stays 1800 metres well. This is a fair bit further, which is a question mark, but there are so few you can like in this race that you've got to have Onyx on your shortlist. Yeah, it was interesting listening to uh, Alex going through the runners there. So many with, uh, you know, naught from 15, Waj Al Shams. Uh, so many with that kind of profile. Mashnor Naj, naught from 18. And uh, they just keep coming back. But do you think that horses like this, at what point do you say, well, I'm not going to get that win? No, I know. But, uh, the, you know, if they look like players in the race, you, you've got to include them. And, you're, you know, you will theoretically find a race one day where you have four runners and they're all naught from 30. And one of them is bound to get their head in front so it's all it's it's all relative really it's it's clearly a little bit of a negative but all of these have negatives against them because they're uh, they're all pretty moderate well you've got to be in it to win it uh, horses are going into the stalls now so let's join alex fussy down at the start many thanks guys yeah runners going forwards here getting uh, ready for race 11 safa rumor is the favorite on the international markets nine to four for jimmy carry on Second in Zircon at three to one. Somehow Sharani's mount that to the one of those exposed ones, isn't she? Nought from twenty-two. Hush then fours Onyx at nine to two. Not say Tur is eleven to two and it's tens bar, but um, looks a tricky one this one. Thought this was a, a race to sit on the fence with an opinion because some of these. Um, as you've heard, I've had lots of goes. Others may have a bit of room for improvement. Only got about six, I think, to go now. Just going forwards will be Hush. In the shot there, white jacket with the green diamonds. And it's in. Mash or Najd. Malshatei. Al Azrak coming forwards, also going in was next, and there is the eight Waj Al Shams, and that looks just about good to go. They're off. Runners of the way, over 2,400 in this local bred maiden, race 11 on this evening's card, and now one of the riders have lost their irons on leaving the stools. I believe that to be Bishkeek, the 13, at the back of the field. Trouble there for Ali Al Mimoni. He's going to do well to get involved at all. I think we'll probably just be trying to ease up and keep out of the way. Back to the head of affairs, though. Pace into the bend here. Well, that's coming from both Al Wijes and also Al Katim. They are the first two with about a length between them. They race three or four lengths clear of the main pack of runners. Garnook always needs those into third place at the moment in advance of next to his racing in fourth. On the outside, Onyx trapped a little deep, but trying to uh, move a little bit closer to the pace now. On the inside, Moteta is next in the field. The red jacket is covered up on the running rail, racing alongside uh, Alawaza Nora. Looking back down the field at this stage, well, Galeel is just about last of those still uh, going here. Al Sheti Alzrak has got lows on. Waj Al Shams is also in that rear division as they continue midway down the far side. So up top, Awi Jazz just shows the way. Only a narrow advantage here over both Next and Al Kadim. Onyx is following them in fourth position, albeit two or three lengths away. Hush is going very wide, but starting to get involved. Also still right there on the inside is uh, Alex Wanora, the five horse. is in about fifth place here on the turn. Still on the inside as well is Moteta as they start this swing on in. One or two of them just trying to weave through from off the pace. Uh, Modia Alderrea still uh, with a bit of ground to cover on the outside could get involved as they are about to swing to the top of the home run. Here we go for home then, next, around the outside to try and take it up. Alwi Jazz on the inside is still there pitching and it's about to all change 
Safaruma has come from midfield and further back and is now bounding and clear. Safaruma, Jimmy Carrion, kept this one off the pace early but has come clear, close to the line. Safaruma, it's ninth time lucky. Gets the head in front here today, beating off next into second place. Alize Wanora followed, and then Onyx. Safaruma, number 12, wins race 11. Well handled here by Carry On because uh, he didn't want to have no part of that early gallop, and eventually has just come there bursting onto the scene wide of horses just waiting for the official time to be confirmed here for you Safaruma putting some good distance uh, between himself and the rest of the pack come the line there at 239.29 has come up on the board as your winner's time going to be a distance of about five lengths I reckon yes five and a quarter over next in second place, Alaise Wanora did run pretty well, actually, in third on her return, and then Onyx in fourth. 12, 15, 5, and 19 is our order for race 11. Before one race for him, you come second. How is it today? Yes, uh, first, thanks God for the winning today. I'm very happy. Uh, congrats to the trainer and the owner. Yeah. Yes, I raced the hole before. I know this hole. You come with him second for a turn of yes, four runs? Yes, he coming for bad. It's very good. Congrats. Thank congrats. Thank you. Well, there's Safia Ruma, the out-and-out -out favourite, who wins race number 11. Jimmy Carrion on board. Uh, this was always oh, going to win, wasn't it? Um, well, he was, he was the outstanding runner in a race where lots of them um, either didn't look good enough to win maidens or had lots and lots of chances or looked like they wouldn't stay the trip. Uh, this is the one horse whose last time out run um, was full of promise. He was he was three quarters of length second to Wafi Alais in that final championship um, over 1800 metres last time, out, finishing like a train, suggesting that he would stay this trip. Um, he has not had that many runs uh, in comparison to some of these. And indeed, if you've got a horse who wants 2,400 2, metres, you don't get a chance to run them over that trip early on. If they're on the course as early three year olds, They'll have to start off at um, seven furlongs or a mile or even six furlongs just to get experience. So getting beaten a few times over shorter trips for a stayer is not um, something to, to be too concerned about. So still one of the least exposed through in a career best effort last time out. And it was just a case of whether he could repeat that from a wide draw. Um, and so the key was Jimmy Carrion not panicking at any mm. stage. Um, he was parked wide on the track, but he didn't, he didn't try to manoeuvre anywhere. He didn't try to, to ask him to make any silly efforts. He just gradually... He allowed horses to drop away around him essentially, a lot of these, you know, not nowhere near good enough to maintain a gallop for this sort of trip and uh, gradually he was able to improve his position because of others falling away rather than him making a move. 
and then he's just asked for an effort. He gave the horse a tap um, just before they turned into the straight, and he came with a, a strong run then. And those who'd been on the pace, it wasn't a particularly strong pace throughout, but they were vulnerable, and he swept past to win impressively. We can take another look at it from the start. Sophia Rumo was very much off the pace early on. Yeah, you can see him. He's, he's virtually last in our picture at the moment. Yellow cap, um, dark sleeves, um, largely yellow colours. It looks like black, but it's, I think it's dark brown. But uh, you see he was, he was right at the back of the field early on. Just um, on the right of the picture, you see that um, uh, Ali al Mamoni loses his irons on Bishkeek and uh, looks to pull that horse up. Um, his chance of uh, winning the race had gone at that stage. Um, but even now, um, the, the one thing that um, Jimmy Carrion does he just manoeuvres his horse to the outside of the field. He doesn't want anything else to drop back in his lap, so he just wants to have daylight in front of him, but he's not really asking for an effort. He's not racing wide and making ground at the wrong time. He's just allowing the, the dead wood to sort of fall away uh, beneath him. So he's given the winners a little bit of rope, but he's also in clear daylight that if he does need to make a run, um, he's in a good place to do it. But you see, he's, he's, just, um, he's just sailing along quite happily just begins to, to shake the horse up lightly now um, as the race begins in earnest, making sure that the, uh, the front runner, Awijaz, doesn't get away from him. He's up to about 10th place now, but again, still no, no hurry. Um, the, the, the leader begins to try to wind it up from the front. You get three of them going together. Um, the, uh, is it uh, Alcatem in, uh, in second place, moving up with the, uh, the nose band, uh, and out wide you have next those three sort of hook up into a battle. The winner is still no closer than eighth at this point, but again, he's just picking off rivals gradually, um, but still not in top gear. Uh, now he knows that the three have made a bid for home, so he can't afford to sit too far off them. So he begins to ask for an effort, but it's still, he's just gonna quit poised. One tap there to say, right, now it's time to start closing that gap as we come into the home turn. Um, I'd. Uh, yeah, and you can see uh, Alvarez begins to weaken on the inside. That's leaving two battling it out. Uh, the winner of that battle will be next. Um, but having won the battle, uh, next loses the war because here's our winner out wide. And the track just cocks his head, uh, it just slightly off the bend. But then when asked to stretch, you see those uh, yellow bandages in front. Um, he's going on better than the others at this stage. And generally speaking. Uh, the other the runners around him are, are tiring and beginning to fade at that stage. Good run from Alezwa Nora, um, who also came forward at roughly the same time in the blue colours with the uh, the blue nose band there. That stays on for third. Uh, that's a massive a lifetime best from that. Two runs. I, know, I, I say that's not entirely true. Uh, on his second run last season, um, he was beaten uh, 22 lengths in the seventh behind Juminat Al Reem. That wasn't a bad contest. A non winners of three in Taif, but it was a long time ago. It was back in August 2022. So that's a remarkably good run off a layoff from uh, Lezwan Nora. Um, she will, she'll go back to Taif again and try to rebuild her career. But this is a promising um, uh, reappearance from her after clearly what was uh, some kind of training setback. And Safia Rumor as well had two runs early on in the season, meeting 59, meeting 65, had a long break, reappeared, meeting 98, finishing in second, had another few weeks off and finished now. Clearly, we'll have to have a break before the start of the new season. Do you think that Connections will want to run this horse more regularly, or clearly uh, the sporadic racing works well, better? Well, the, the interesting thing is now he's got, he's got new Connections. He ran in different colours last time out, and he's running on these silks for the first time, so it'll be interesting to see what his new owner... Uh, wants to do, but basically he's a horse who just sprung to life last time out for the first time in his career, um, showed that he was maturing. He's obviously, you know, for a horse running at this trip, you don't expect that, to see the best of them until they're about four years, uh, four years old here. So, you know, he's, he's going forward at the right time. He's not beaten anything special here. Um, you can't go mad about the form, but at least he's, um, he's backing up good runs. Um, he's proving his stamina for the trip, and he looked fairly tractable. So. Um, he should be easy to place. He gives the impression that he'd probably handle a deep surface as well, the way he's gone about this. So tie for to suit, and we'll see what, uh, what connections do. But what was read at 68 coming into this, he won't go up much for it because he was a top-rated horse in the race anyway. Um, there's no rating for the third. He was just having her, um, uh, her third start. So next was runner-up, read at 53 going into this. So given that uh, Sophia Rumo was already rated 15 pounds superior to next, difficult to put him up much beyond that 68 mark. Indeed, but nevertheless, he breaks his maiden. So congratulations to uh, the new connections of Safia Rumour.
Well, that leaves us with just the one race left of the season. I was going to say of the night, Rory, but it's of the entire season. Uh, just the one race oh, what to What a race with. to finish with. <laughs> Absolutely. And here to talk us through all the runners and riders of our final race is Alex Fussy. Rebecca, thank you. Good to see uh, the scenes there of everyone taking a photo before this finale. 2,400 metres for the Arabian Open to conclude the card and the campaign. Spinoza, number one, is the Mount of Al Mudiani. Number two is Fedor's Osama Al Sharani rides. Number three, Amir Al Cham, Ren Al Abed. Number four is Game Over, Ali Al Bimoni. Number five is Thea Athbar, that's Hamza Sad. And six is Hashem, Fawaz Wanas. Number seven, is Gasham Sham Al Jazra, Jimmy Carey on searches the double, with the eight Kasab Aldam for Ayad Al Tarisi. Number nine, Al Hajaj, uh, that's Al Nasser on board, not from three so far for that Colt, with the 12, Takdir and Al Shara uh, will guide the filly. Number 11, Preciosa Al Ashai, Abdullah Al Lawfi, with 12, Dira Al Khaladia, Mohammed Al Hyami. Number 13 is Zalej Al Jam, Abdulaziz Al Musa. Number 14, Naya Athbar Al Hussein, on a two time winner of late. She won at meetings 71 uh, 74. 15 is Kaka Al Khaladia, the Khalid Al Mimoni. 16 is Tawak Al Khaladia, Turkey Al Lofi. 17, Al Hareth Al Saidi on board. 18, Al Lajab, that's Abdulaziz. Al Yesh, 19 Wathnan Mohammed Al Habib, and 20 Fakir Dupuy Abdullah Al Credits rounds out the field, a full field of 20 for the final race of the season. We head back to Rebecca and Rory to do it one more time. Thank you very much, Alex. We'll catch up with you in 10 minutes or so ahead of this final race. This, of course, is the purebred Arabians. Let's start with Spinoza, horse number one. A bit of a break for this one, Rory, not seen since meeting 74. No, and with, a, with, a, um, with that absence, the poor run, first time out here, um, I thought Spinoza uh, did make an awful lot of appeal. Again, uh, the first thing to mention here is the ratings of the, the top horses here. This is again really tightly graded at the top, 108, 106, 105, 105, 104. Um, and uh, Spinoza with a rating of 77, even of coming on markedly for that um, Saudi Arabian debut, has got little chance. Ferdors with a rating of 71, we can probably skip through as well. So Indeed. let's talk about Amir Al Sham, horse number three, running off a mark of 105. Yeah, he's, he's a useful sort, Amir Al Sham, and a couple of his runs look really good. He was fifth to Jessam, um, who supports the same silks two starts back. Um, his best reason ever to come over six furlong, although he does stay 2,100 metres on turf. The, the main concern with Amir Al Sham is the fact that he's at 24 starts without getting his head in front and he's waited 105 so really it should have been fairly easy for him to find a race to win and he's just a little bit hard uh, to win with or maybe a lot hard to win with. Well game over is 5 from 14, not bad. Yeah it was tailed off um, in of course of this handicap two starts by 5th fifth of, fifth of 6 that day uh, but beaten an awfully long way but ran a lot better when a length of quarter second to Kassab Aldam in a 2,000 metre open last time out. Uh, Fakir Dupuy was um, back in third that day, beating four and a half lengths. And um, uh, Hashem, number six, was also a little bit further behind. He was beating five and three quarter lengths into fourth. So game over holds that pair, but he does have that, um, that poor run two starts to go to, to bear in mind. That was the final day of the, uh, of the tie season. So it's good to see that he, he returned from an absence to run up to his best last time. And Thea Athbar was disappointing in meeting 106. Disappointing meeting 106 and was disappointing on the other side of an absence. Is a winner in the UAE, but has a two runs here and has finished out of the 10 both times. So plenty to prove at the moment. Hashem uh, was placed in meeting number 107. Has won twice, both of those wins in France. Um, his best effort here was when uh, fourth to Kassab Al Dam over 2,000 metres last time out, but obviously he finished behind both game over and uh, Fakir Dupuy on that occasion. And what about Gasha Sham Al Jazra, horse number seven? He's uh, rated 95. His wins have come over six furlongs, twice and a mile. Um, bearing in mind this is a mile and a half, this contest. Six and a half lengths, second to Fakir Dupuy, and of course in distance open, um, meeting 87. That gives him a chance. 
Um, so although his winning form has come over short, he does stay this trip, although he's held by Fakir Dupuy, that six and a half length margin, a little bit hard to overcome. And Kassab Aldam is coming in off the back of a win. Yeah, that's probably um, uh, as good as he's done here in quite a while. Um, and he had three of these behind when winning that 2000 meter open last time out. Um, having finished fourth to Fakir Dupuy in that race and meeting 87 uh, prior to that, where he had Sham Sham Al Jazra in front of him, but clearly comes here off, a, um, off an excellent effort and must be considered. Al Hajjaj uh, was disappointing last time out. Yeah, that was two weeks ago. Um, he ran okay on his previous start, but he's only rated at 75. Um, he'd be a lot better off in, in not a 75 handicaps or in maiden company. Taktia had a pretty decent run in meeting 110 last week. Yeah, um, three, uh, his three wins here have come over seven furlongs and a mile. He was fifth in the uh, King Abdulaziz Racetrack Championship um, last time out. Um, that was behind the, uh, the high class in the Jeep Al Zamam. Stamina is a worry over this trip, though, because I think his very best efforts have come around a mile. And Preciosa Al Ashai was also in running and meeting 110. Yeah, was ninth in that same contest behind uh, Najib Al Zamam. Had run well, went second to uh, Jessam in a 90 to 105 handicap, a race we've seen already in the VT footage today, uh, but needs to step up a little bit, Preciosa. She is, um, on the other hand, pretty reliable and tends to do her best work late, so um, this trip ought to give her a chance of being competitive. And what about Dira al Khaladia? Uh, really disappointing in meeting 107, having won the time out before that. Yeah, he, he won a not a 75 handicap. That's pretty much his level. Stepped up markedly in class into an open um, next time out and, and found that too much of a shock for him and ran below form as a result. Uh, this is no easier and I think he's going to struggle. Zalaj al Sham uh, rated 93, was sixth in meeting 106. Yeah, was sixth in uh, meeting 106, as you say, and that was behind Preciosa al Ashai, who was second in the same contest. Um, Preciosa obviously beaten since that, and, and she has the, uh, the beating off him in form. Well, let's have a look then at Kassab al -Tan. This is horse number eight. Yeah, this is, um, this is probably a career best effort from Kassab al -Tan. It comes from off the pace, the grey with the blue blinkers. Um, finishes very strongly to win this 2,000 metre handicap. And looking at this, you would say that he's, um, he's crying out for a step up to, uh, to further. You see um, back in the field, I think that's Fakir, uh, let me just check, that's Fakir Dupuy in, in third in the red blinkers. Um, a couple of others in behind him that day, as we said, Gasham Sham um, Al Nu, it wasn't that, it was. Um, um, Uh, it was a uh, game over he was in behind uh, that day um, with Hashem was the other one who was who was further back in the field so those four were behind him that day and he looks like he's liable to confirm the form here is Fakir Dupuy uh, running a good fourth um, on his penultimate start um, he won over course and distance back in meeting 87 here he is finishing fourth in a really strong race this is the Abeya qualifier so you look at this and think well he's beaten quite a long way but the Abeya classic is one of the uh, the two best uh, races of the entire season for purebred Arabians in Saudi Arabia and he's run right up to his best form in finishing fourth typically doing his best work late in the day he's probably the one to beat here on balance because he is a thorough -er. well let's head down to the paddock then to speak to Shamila for the final time tonight well, thank you very much, Rebecca. It is the last race of the season. And because the race is over our longest distance over the dirt, 2,400 metres, I thought it was fitting for me to come down to the stalls one last time just, just to show you how great um, it is down here and how much access we've had the whole season. Every single 2,000 metre race in Taif, I was down at the start and pretty much every single 2,400 metre race, I've been lucky enough to get down to the start here at King Abdulaziz Racecourse. And the um, the atmosphere is even more electric than it was in the parade ring. All the jockeys, all the stall handlers as well, um, they are in good spirits as it is our last race of the season. Now, um, it's not only our last race of the season, it's an Arabian race and a top quality Arabian Open as well. Three horses that I'm really looking forward to seeing go head to head. Horse number four, RB Game Over. Horse number eight, Kassab, are highest rated in the race at 108. And horse number 11, Preciosa Alashai.
Alishai. I really hope that the Philly um, Preciosa Alishai number 11 can get the job done this time. Hopefully we can see her just over my shoulder. Now it is a full field of 20 for these for this last Arabian race of the season and um, every horse gets one to two stall handlers each so it's absolutely fantastic and um, as I've been saying the whole season it is so quiet down here usually but it, the atmosphere is buzzing tonight. Um, everybody is just cannot wait to um, get home after this as it is um, approaching 2 a.m. here as it is Ramadan. We are starting a lot later um, but the horses are coming down here um, past me um, through the stalls um, where they will have their tack adjusted for the last time before heading into the stalls and starting the race and we will be joining them as well so we're just waiting for the last few horses to join us here behind the stalls and here's Preciosa Alishai just coming past me here now and horse number 17 will be the last horse entering behind the back of the stalls um, and of course Faisal Al Shamri we've seen his um, feature a good few times but me and my cameraman will be making our way um, into the um, back of the stalls and um, not to get squashed by any tractors as they push the stalls closer together. Um, now as you can see it is very full down here full field of 20 horses but everyone is being really well behaved no padding negatives or should I say behind the stall negatives for me um, I think I will be sticking with Preciosa Alishai horse number 11 for my final selection of the evening hopefully she can get the job done for her trainer Laurent Lazelle. Thank you, Shamila. Well, Rory, let's just touch on the last of the runners then. Let's go to the ones that uh, you've pointed out have real credentials in this. Number 13, Zala Jalshan. Yeah, um, needs to improve a little bit. Was six to Jess Simon in a mile handicap um, last time I'd beaten 10 lengths and obviously held by Preciosa Ala Shai um, on that running. And Naya Athbar, number 14. Ridded 93 as well, 10th in that handicap behind Jassan last time out. Um, so obviously held by Zalej Al-Sham Al -Sham in that form, but was a dual winner early in the season. So if he can get back to that sort of form, he's got, uh, he's got a chance of running into the placings. But I think there are too many higher rated uh, for him to win this. And Tawak al Khaladia is one of them. Yes, indeed. His best recent effort was when second to Vizier in the final championship of the race course, the uh, purebred Arabian version, over 1,800 metres, um, three starts ago. A little bit underwhelming since, um, but um, should be there about its own form. And let's have a word on Al Harath, rated 103. Uh, Al Harath was just behind um, Tawak Al Khaladia in meeting 98, finishing third there um, in the race won by Vizier. Um, was fourth last time out, it was a fair effort. Closely matched with Tawak Al Khaladia, but his stamina for this trip is very much uh, taken on trust. I'm not sure he will stay uh, the mile and a half with his best form coming at around a mile. Well, this is our final race of the season. So let's head once again to our commentator, Alex Fussy, for the very last time this season as well. Over to you, Alex. Rebecca and Rory, thank you very much indeed. Runners moving forwards at pace for the concluding contest. There is Kassab Aldam coming forwards next, or number eight, Mount of Ayad Al Turisi, who will take the final honours then of the campaign. Game over is in. We've got four to go. Still six. Hashem to be field. The 11. Preciosa Alashai. There's the 17. Al Hareth coming up as well. And Tawak Al Kaladia into stool 16. It's going to be the final runner for the final race. That's it. They're ready. They're off. Runners sent on their way in the concluding contest of the season. The Arabian Open over 2,400. Awkward start for Hashem. Always one has some early encouragement towards the tail end of the field. Al Jab is also reigning back and will be just about the overall fat marker to whack Al Khaladia. Another runner at the rear. Game over. Goes to the lead under the judge with a full circuit of the Riyadh race track ahead of them. Amir Alcham is in second. Spinoza is not far away. Preciosa Alashai is also right up there as well. Ferdors is on the inside. Spot the orange and red combination of colors as they go into the turn. Preciosa Alashai at the moment be about fourth position. Racing just in advance of Fakir Dupuy, who's also improving. 
Next group of runners include Zalez Al Cham. That runner's racing there just in behind Al Hijaz and also Hashem, who's made good progress on the inside. Back down the field at this stage to Takdia, looking towards the back of the field. Torka Al Kaladia is just about last of all. Thea Athbar remains at the rear of the field. Al Jab also after that slow start as they continue down the back straight. It is game over. Out in front in the Arabian Open, leads up by two and a half. Over Fakir Dupuy in second place. Preciosa Alashai is for third. Amir Alcham just in behind. Fedors is still on the inside running rail. One or two deeper now starting to try and get involved. Kasab Aldam and Takdir are very wide and starting to close in. Zalej Alcham is still right there as they go around the turn. Looking between rivals to pick a few off now is Al Hareth. The white jacket green stars. Game over is coming back. They are stacking and packing. Just over 400 meters to go on the turn for home. It is game over by half a length. Over Preciosa Alashai. Takdir is wider of those in third. Then Fakir Dupuy follows. Also trying to pick up in between horses is a Wafnan from the back end of the field as they're about to level to the top of the home straight. Preciosa Alashai has now hit the front from Al Hareth. Down on the inside still is game over. They're followed by Kassab Aldaham. Preciosa Alashai trying to dig in, but it's Al Hareth who's now gone on. Al Hareth has moved past Preciosa Alashai, heading to the final 100. It is Al Hareth who's in the clear and is going to go away by four to win the final race of the season in Saudi. Al Hareth is the winner. Preciosa Alashai in second. Kastab Aldaham was third. And Alash Jab next. Victory for the 17. Al Hareth taking the final race of the card and has got on to win in a time of 2.49.91. Gaining a fourth career success. He's had a pretty good time of it this season, the seven-year-old. He's had quite a few solid efforts, placed runs, and he's finally got his head in front. He beats Preciosa Alashai by three and a half lengths. Kassab Aldam was third. Alashjab in fourth position, meaning our final order of our final race of the campaign is 17, 11, 8, and 18. Over and out. Well, uh, Al Harath takes the last race of the season here in Riyadh. Abdullah Al Saidi rides a treble, and not only that, he wins the first race and he wins the last. So nicely bookending the day for him. A great ride, wasn't it, Rory? Yeah, he's ridden very well tonight. He picked up a spare ride after winning the first. Um, he got a, a ride in uh, race number seven and made it count on Motokem, who I believe was a 40 to 1 uh, winner on the international markets. Um, and he's uh, ended the night with a, another excellent ride um, on, um, on Al Hareth, who was building on that uh, promising third uh, to Vizier in the final championship of the, the race courses on his, uh, well, actually it's uh, three starts back now, but he's run respectively since. Um, but he's won this uh, in, in good style. And Al Hareth before this race was one of the ones uh, that you thought was in with a chance, running off a mark of 103, definitely one of the better horses in this contest. 
Yeah, there were, a few, there were five or six races um, around uh, between 103 and 106 in the contest. And um, you know, most, most of the class I had come to the fore, because Saab Altam uh, was our, our top rater coming into it. He got up on the ratings for that win last time out when winning a 2,000 metre open. Uh, we saw, uh, he didn't get in the frame in the end, but Fakir Dupuy about fifth. Uh, I think he probably would have wanted that to be more of a, an end-to-end -end gallop. Um, he got outpaced before running on. But here's the replay. Um, we saw a number six Hashem in the uh, red and uh, sort of lime green stripes missed the break. He's then made a lot of ground mid-race to get into contention but couldn't continue it. Uh, the early pace came from Game Over, um, who uh, ran so well last time out behind Kassab Aldham and he ran well in the front, just a little bit freely as you can see. Uh, his head's um, uh, up in the air there and he didn't really help his jockey enormously but he stayed in there until, until the straight before weakening about a furlong out. Um, Plenty of them in pursuit and behind. Widest of all from stall 20 was Fakir Dupuy. I thought he was closer than, than the normal, and I thought that gave him a, a big chance, but he probably ended up, um, he prefers to come with a strong run from off the pace, and he's ended up um, running his race a little bit uh, back to front um, in the end. Uh, Spinoza, the outsider, in second at this stage. Preciosa, always handy there. Uh, the grey with the blinkers and those uh, easy to spot. Uh, lime colours. You also have Amir Al Sham uh, in similar silks there. Um, looking for our winner, he's in white colours um, with uh, green stars. I can't pick him up just at this stage. So he's uh, he's done well to come from uh, from a way off the pace. Um, we'll see if we can pick him up. There he is. He's in about 12th place at the moment with the green sleeves, the grey with a white cap. Um, he gradually works his way into contention from here. And I have to say, this is a very confident ride. Um, from um, uh, from the, the winning rider Abdullah Al Saidi, um, who's had the night of his life here. I doubt he's ridden a treble before. Uh, he doesn't often, often get the opportunities with the likes of uh, uh, Moreno and uh, Ospina uh, taking lots of rides, but he's come in for a couple of rides tonight and has uh, shown that he's more than capable of doing it when it comes to it. Uh, our early leader came over, still in front off the home bend, but a lot of horses have chances. I assumed with a mile and a half race there'd be a few of them falling away, but away by now, but they've not gone, they've not gone hell for leather, and plenty of them have chances at this stage. Um, but you see a few of them looking short of pace. But the winner has moved up into about sixth place, um, just off the rail. He gets up on the inside of Fakir Dupuy and sets off in pursuit of the two in front. Preciosa is now has now just taken the lead uh, from Game Over, who's tried hard, but has um, has carried his head high all the way around, and it hasn't made it easy for us his uh, rider to ride him out. The winner comes through between horses to get it. You see Kassab Aldam and the Blue Binkers a little bit wider running a solid race and um, quite an exciting finish for this uh, mile and a half contest. Uh, there were a, a fair number of horses who had a chance on paper and still a fair few with the chances off the bend but um, he saved ground on the winner, um, has Abdullah Al Saidi. He's got the very best out of his mind and this often happens when a jockey is riding with extreme confidence, everything seems to go his way. And that's very much the case here. And uh, my congratulations go out to Abdullah Al Saidi on a tremendous treble on the final day of the Riyadh season. Absolutely. When, what better day to do it as well? He'll leave the season on a complete high and be full of confidence heading to Taif in a few months' time. It's a fantastic race for him, fantastic day for him, in fact, riding that treble on the very last day of the season. What an occasion to do it, Abdullah Al Saidi, showing fantastic maturity uh, for such a young jockey as well. Well, that, that concludes uh, the day's racing in Riyadh, that concludes the week's racing and indeed the season's racing here in the Saudi capital. What few months it's been, Rory? It's been, has, it's been, uh, it's, it's given us everything really, hasn't it? It has, um, it has. It's been some absolutely tremendous racing, some huge occasions, but a really a good opportunity tonight with one or two of the big name jockeys uh, missing for, uh, for the lesser known jockeys, I'm not saying lesser jockeys, to come and show what they can do. And that was uh, done brilliantly um, on the night. Um, we've, had, we've had a few thrilling uh, races in the middle. I loved having four consecutive turf races, which is unusual for us, but that was a really um, good feature of the night. And a lot of really good races from the beginning of the card as well. We've had some really good races, Rory, but I want you to pick just one that's your highlight from today. Uh, I'm going to go for what I thought was a, a race that worked out perfectly. Race number four, um, Abdullah Alofi knew exactly what was going to happen in race number four, and he's ridden um, the perfect race. Uh, he knew that he couldn't get to the front on Rimal Riyadh, who had the best of the draw over 1,200 metres. So he sat on the rail 
Um, he would have expected infrared to make the pace. Infrared has made the pace. He would have expected Rovaniemi to go up handy. Uh, Rovaniemi went up handy and he sat in behind, made sure that he was close enough to those um, coming off the bend, making sure there weren't outsiders in his way, just moving up gradually to make sure he had that clear running on the, on the rail with a view to pulling wide off the leader who was at this stage infrared. Um, and once he's got into top gear behind infrared, who was the race favorite, uh, he's come home very strongly to win on that um, daughter of Otad, who's a, a lovely prospect. She was entitled to win the race um, on the ratings. She wasn't guaranteed to get to the lead, which is often important over six furlongs, but Abdullah Alofi knew what his game plan was and executed it absolutely perfectly. He did, and she's such a likeable filly as well, isn't she, Rory? She's going in the notebook. Yeah, absolutely. She's, she will, I mean, she was entitled to win the race, as I said, but she's, she's a filly who hadn't raced on the turf before, um, but she's just straightforward. Uh, she'll win more races back on the, um, uh, on the dirt. She's normally a late runner over six furlongs. Seven furlongs will see her um, in a good light. She's a stable mate of Sunset Flash, who's been a superstar for the Almond Deals. Suggestion that Sunset Flash um, would be retired after her win um, in that big contest um, last week. And Remal, Remal Reid is just the ideal type of filly to come through and fill the gap left um, by that uh, legendary mare. Well, they are some big shoes to fill indeed, but uh, they certainly have some exciting horses coming through for in these colours, so definitely look out for the green and red colours in Chive next season. Well, it's been a fantastic few days as ever here at the King Abdulaziz racetrack. It was a fantastic season all in. We, have, uh, in. we had international jockeys here last week. We have international horses as well, Rory. I want you just to tell me, I mean, how much it means to Saudi racing to have these kind of big jockeys, international names come across here to race. I, I think it is, it is a big deal. And we heard we had an interview um, with one of our leading trainers here saying, you know, it, it sort of, it makes him proud to see these, um, these horses coming from um, Australia, coming from Japan, coming from Europe, coming from America, all to race in Saudi Arabia. And obviously there's one race at the moment that really attracts those horses. But when people come across for the Saudi Derby, they realize that it's not just a one-off race. It is a marquee event, but the whole weekend built around that is really high quality stuff. And what they'll see is they're not just bringing the quality into Saudi Arabia. When, when trainers bring their horses here, they see that the quality is already there. They see that the infrastructure is there and it promises so much for the future. So the local the trainers, the, the local owners here, really happy for people to come in. They might plunder the prizes now, but they're basically saying, look what we have here, it's something to be proud of. And they're delighted for people across the world to come in and see that, and to see that Saudi Arabian racing is really going somewhere um, and will be a world leader within 10 years. Absolutely, it certainly will be. Well, Rory has uh, been with us uh, throughout the Riyadh season and throughout the Thai season, so I'm gonna ask you a pretty impossible task, Rory. <laughs> he gives his highlight after every race day, but I'm gonna ask you, Rory, for your season's highlight. Oh, my season's highlight, that is, um, that is a nightmare. I'm so bad at this kind of thing. It's the, it's the worst <laughs> no pressure, kind of question. Rory. It's the worst kind of question you could ask me. I'll tell you what I will. Given we just mentioned it already, from an emotional standpoint, um, Sunset Flash um, running um, last week and winning that um, local Group 1 um, on what may well be her final race course appearance. I think it would have been her 21st victory. She looked beaten early in the straight. We saw the VT footage earlier on. She's battled back on the rail to get up um, close to the line showing all her heart and all her class. Um, and if that is the final action we see from, from uh, Sunset Flash, uh, then it's a perfect farewell. Yeah, absolutely. What a way for her to go out. And it was wonderful there to see these stalls handlers and jockeys celebrating the end of the season in Riyadh. We saw Faisal as well there. One of the outriders, they work so hard and do such an incredible job here at the racetrack, keeping all the horses in order and making sure that they all get to the track safe and sound. Well, it's been an absolutely fantastic season of racing here in Riyadh. I was here at the very start of the season and it's only got better from there. I've had a thoroughly incredible time joined here by Rory as well who's offered some fantastic insight and analysis throughout the season and Tyfe as well I'm sure you're looking forward to next season obviously you need a bit of a break Rory because you've uh, <laughs> worked incredibly hard getting through all these Isn't horses it? but uh, there's still so much more to look forward to in Riyadh I hope that you have enjoyed the racing as much as we have we've had some such high quality racing we've had
many highlights as we've heard from Rory. We've had international horses and jockeys and we've had local superstars as well. Rory mentioned their sunset flash and I have to say that of all the horses, of all the incredible performances we've seen, she has to be my favourite as well. And thank you to you for joining us. We'll see you next season. Perfect. Saudi! <laughs> 